him on the crew. Move, move. All right, I'm at the end of the Move, move. dance for the rhythm and the crew. Move, move. Watch them as the bang crew, them a move. So we track it, so we do it. This a rhythm that I lock down the street. So we track it, so we do it. This a when I come feel lock down the street. All right, so we track it, so we do it. Lock down the street, lock down the street. So we track it, so we do it. This a when I come feel lock down the street. All right, folks, welcome aboard the Flight Sim Broadcasting Network. My name is Jason, and if you're just joining us, welcome to Friday. We made it, right? Hopefully you've had a great week. Yes, we're early. We're normally streaming at about 7, but we've got a doubleheader today, so I thought we'd start a little earlier than normal. If you're wondering what we're about on this channel, it's three things. One, do it right, learn something, and have fun, and that's kind of why we're here. And if you could, folks in the chat, Pops, how are you? Hopefully you had a good week. Joshua, hello. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm from Israel. Here from Israel, Costa Rica. Is Active Sky working? You know, we've got Active Sky today. So two things. We have the new Active Sky. I haven't even tested it, so it's going to be a test today. We'll kind of see how that goes. And we have the brand new LaGuardia scenery. So it's going to be super fun. Let's get into the weather right now and see kind of what we've got on the route of flight. We're going from Miami to Orlando, then Orlando to New York. And as you can see here, we got a little high pressure, but it's fleeting, right? This high pressure is kind of getting out of the way of this cold front coming in through uh, West Virginia, and it's going to be pushing on to New York here. By the time we arrive in a couple hours, you could see kind of where that's going. That's zero, zero, zero. That's probably the time we would have taken off. 
and then we're going to advance it, and we might have rain in the forecast by the time we arrive. This is a 12-hour forecast, so the 6-hour forecast is kind of what we're looking at. Um, we've got an occluded front with a low pressure that goes to stationary, and so I don't anticipate too much in terms of turbulence. You can see the isobar is pretty spread out, uh, at least through here. Let's go into our sigmets, and you can see we got some mountain obscur obscuration. That's because of that cold front coming through. It's dropping the visibility, at least on that side. Not going to be a factor for us. We won't have to worry about that. And along the coastal front here, we got some IFR conditions due to that front probably coming in as well. Uh, let's take a look at winds. This is our winds aloft, and we've got um, right now just coming kind of cross going to be crosswind all the way up some convective activity and we'll take a look at that here in a minute but i want to show you some some data that i like to use i haven't seen this one yet nope um let's go to the taf map or you know what i like to do the taf data it's going to be easier for me just to put that in and laguardia is reporting the following uh, you can see where we're going to be arriving is right in this section here and here. We've got, uh, ooh, this is going to be fun. We've got uh, from 20, which is going to be tomorrow, but a few hours, 0300 Zulu. So it's taking off. We're going to take off here at about 6, 615 local. So that's 6, so that's about 8. Right now, uh, Zulu, it's a, it's 23. Zulu is going to go 0, 0, Zulu coming up. So we're looking at three hours from now, essentially. So that's 6. It's about 8. So 8 o'clock-ish, my time. So we're looking at broken at 800, overcast at 18. We are going to need an alternate into this airport. So we're going to have to do a sim brief again. We'll have to get an alternate. Dispatch just gave me a sheet, and there was no alternate. So we're going to have to make one. All right, we're, we're definitely, we're, we're below the you know, one, two, three rule. We are shot. So we're going to need an alternate airport. Now, fortunately, at Coastal Airways, we service a few northeast airports. One is Islip. We can go right over there. We can jump up to uh, New um, uh, Providence. We've got to kind of get in front of this front a little bit. So I'm thinking more of the east area. Maybe go to Providence and see what's Providence doing. So let's take a look at that really quick. Because now I'm going to look for, we got to look for um, an alternate. You can see it's overcast at 800 vicinity showers, which we could use Providence and alternate, but we're going to need two alternates if we do that. Uh, so, you know, we might do Providence and maybe Islip's probably going to be no better. Yeah, you can see it's just ugly. So I don't know if you can read any of this right here, but we're looking at this range. Broken at eight, overcast at twelve. It's not that it's bad. It's just that it, it if, you know, for the United States, the FAA, we're going to need alternate airport into this, uh, this, this place. So, Joe, what's going on, buddy? Welcome aboard. So, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. We're going to have to add some fuel to to the sheet. Um, we could go and see if we keep pushing east. What's Boston doing now? I wouldn't want to land there, but I'm saying, what's Boston looking like right now? Uh, you can see there, that's a little too far advanced, but we're looking, that's a little too much. I think we'll we'll be way past that time, before that time, I mean. 1908, greater than 6, overcast at 4, so 4,000. So it's not exactly in Boston area yet, but so Boston, maybe that's probably a good, a good show. What about Albany? We don't service Albany yet, but uh, yeah, Albany is, cra is crappy. We're right in the middle of that front. Uh, anything on the other side of the front? Uh, what about Buffalo? I wouldn't want to fly that that uh, far from Buffalo, but you can see the front has passed uh, right there. Greater than six, scattered at four, broken at twelve, and there's the front. Well, you can tell the front's passed because the wind's up, but that's tomorrow. So, um, well, we're, let's play it by ear. How's that? Chicago Skyhawk, what's going on? He says, get it. Yes, we'll get it. Let's do it. Um, let's go into our sim brief now. I'm going to show you sim brief. We're going to have to do the whole darn thing over again. It's not going to be too bad, but um, this is why it's nice to have a dispatcher sometimes. And I, I did this like a few hours ago, and I, I was like, yeah, the weather's not going to change that. Well, the weather changed. So 
We'll go to Dispatch System. If you're not familiar with SimBrief, this is a free program by Navigraph, which is really, really awesome. Let's click View Flight Plan. Everything is pretty much dialed in there already. Well, our first flight is okay. It's the second flight I'm worried about. So this flight's fine going into Orlando, so we don't have to make any changes here. Orlando weather right now. It's just the second leg of our trip. We'll have to kind of dial in that. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this just right now, just because the weather in Orlando is fine. So that's good. Let's go ahead and, and not, die, not dwell on that too much. Let's go right into Orlando here. This is what we're looking at. Beautiful. Few clouds of 5,000, few clouds of 15,000, greater than 6, 2,608 on the winds. It's beautiful, folks. Not too shabby. So we're good with this. I'm going to close this out. I've already got my uh, release in my hand, and we are on the jet. We're in a 800. Now, this is a this is a, our one of our newer 800s, and I'm going to show you really quick here. Uh, the route of flight and all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and pull up our Navigraph charts. Our Navigraph charts are right here. Here's route of flight, pretty much uh, departure and arrival. That's pretty much it. So it's really quick on the setup. Let's take a look at the weather forecast in our route of flight for today, just right now. You can see turbulence. Um, if I look at turbulence plots, I'll hide that for you and open it up. We're only going up to about 260, so you can look at the turbulence plots down here. It's you know, maybe on the climb a little bit, light turbulence is forecasted. It's not going to be pretty bad. It, it won't be bad. Uh, so just on the climb out, we might get some bumps through those through those clouds, and that's it. If we come down here and click Miami, or tap Miami, I should say, if I can get there. Uh, it's not one to cooperate here. All right, let's go this way. Let's go airports. We're going to click Miami. You can see the weather in Miami right now on the forecast. Right now, Miami, 120, 10, 10 stats miles of visibility, a few clouds at 35, 26 over 18, altimeter is 3003, and we're looking at 64 degrees with an ATIS, uh, 08 right on the departure. So we'll plan on that. It's it's an easy Flamingo 2 departure, which is an RNAV out of here. We'll take 8 right straight over to Sea Salt, up to Deals, Live, and then over Geth. Alonzo um, Flamingo there, and then Wampum, and we're done. After Wampum, we're going to go to the rides, too. So you can see right up to Wampum right here, and then we'll hook up, and we'll go straight into Orlando. Right now, Orlando Airport is landing the following. If we go here, click Weather, we're going to go look at that. 28086, but take a look at ATIS. They are landing the south runway. So that's kind of what we got. What does FM? Ja, FM means from. That's a good question. From this time to this time. That's what that means. So we are going to be in Utah 1 today. This is uh, one of our our custom liveries or special liveries, if you will. This is, um, you know, normally does a lot of work on the west, but this, uh, this aircraft goes back and forth from the east to the west. So we're going to be flying Utah 1 today into LaGuardia, which is awesome. It's cold and dark, obviously. We're just, just getting on board and start the cold and dark start. So we're going to jump in. First thing we want to do is come upstairs here and take a look at your battery switch. The battery is coming over here. You're going to throw this switch to on out. Before I do that, I do have to... Um, get my panel working so just stand by one so you guys can see and this is by the way a brand new route at coastal airways what we did is um you know we we always look at our how we're doing financially and this flight we, we called it miami 3a it was a three-day trip was losing a ton of money from LaGuardia to miami we just could not make the money um so we were losing quite a bit of money on this route you know maybe 10 ten thousand in the, in the red every time we flew that and um, we couldn't compete with the pricing and the the, the aircraft it was a 700 because it flew to bar harbor so it was a seven from LaGuardia so it was a 700 really small air smaller aircraft but 130 seats it wasn't it wasn't pushing the amount of people we need. So you either need to add volume or you need to up the ticket prices. And you can't up the ticket prices because then your volume will drop. So what you need to do is get a bigger airplane on the route or 
changed the route, and that's what we ended up doing. I ended up scrapping th th the Miami three-day trip. So we're doing a proving flight. This is going to be our first, basically our first proving flight. We're putting a 700 on this route that effectively pulls two, uh, excuse me, an 800 on the route, pulls two 700s off the route, and I'm able to allocate those 700s elsewhere in our route structure. So, which is nice, right? Anyway, long story short, that's what we're doing. Uh, this is so, you know, we could evaluate how we're doing on the money. Shelton, what's up? Says, good evening, Captain. Hope you had a great week. What do you call a group of four singing sheep? A barbershop quartet. I love it. That's fun. All right, let me ask you this. Um, it's not ran. It's not, um, it's not, when you, hold on, let me, let me how do I say this? Okay, you can't run through a campground. You have to ran through a campground. It's past tense. <laughs> Think about that. That's that's funny, right? There. I don't care who you are. That is funny. <laughs> All right, that's good. We're gonna come over here, gear down three in the green. Let's take a look at that. Make sure your brakes are on. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my seat up. Pull the brakes. Brakes are on now. Good. And we're good. Make sure your hydraulics are off. They are. You don't want to energize anything like that when we throw the AC system on. Okay, let's go ahead and pop the AC on. So we're going to come down here to the ground. Ground power light is on blue. And then we just dropped it in there. And this dumb, I'm telling you, I've got to do this every time. We'll throw it to dim so we can see. We're going to go right into alignment past nav. On DC, you should see a line, a line coming in here soon. And um, I'm going to hide that. You see a two alignments right there. Let's drop to the FMC. The only thing we're going to do here is go to the FMC model. We're in an 800 ARAC is uh, the Navigrav ARAC, by the way. It's 2404, uh, April 18th, May to 1624 26,000 pounds on the engines looks good position in it coming in and we're going to go kilo mia and you're going to drop it right there we're in gate gulf eight today and then we're going to just dump it right over the top of the gate and then we're going to click that right there on the gate information and jump, dump it in that's all you do for this one let's go ahead and get our nest set up we're going to get our lights all ready to go it's a 645 departure in the morning so that's what we're simulating right now. If you're wondering why it's not exactly the time, um, that ain't going to be good. So let me let me change that time back. That clock is just a little off here. It should be about, we, we would get here about 5.50 right around there. There we go. I think I had it running for, okay, that's perfect. 5.55 local. Now I'm just going to go ahead and check my oxygen tanks right now. I'm just going to do a couple of, um, and I'm going to slow those down. Um, they're a little fast. I had to adjust those, so let me adjust them. I'm going to minimize that. Let's go to, I believe it is assignments, access. Okay, and we're going to go into throttle one. I'm just going to calibrate. A couple of things. See how fast that thing moved? You see this? Like this throttle just moved really fast. I'm going to set the slope. And we're going to go positive here. Let's go positive four. Let's see how that does. Throttle one. So if I get... Let's just hit, click OK here. Throttle one. Nice. Throttle 2 is still too fast, so I'm going to just change Throttle 2 really quick, and I'm doing this via um, FSUIPC, so I'm just, I just got to get this um, dialed in, because I, I had a mess with it yesterday for some dumb reason. Um, throttle 2, and, oops, basically it's, um, it's a plus 4, I usually do a plus 4 on the sensitivity, just on the FSU IPC. Normally I use, um, you know, when I'm running the Bravo, I'll use the other, let's see if we got throttle. There we go. You guys see it right there. Good. Grayson, how are you? Welcome aboard. How's it going? 
All right, um, so we got that. That's done. That's done. We've got uh, power on the aircraft. Let's go ahead and turn those lights off. And we are going to use uh, a thing called... We are on VATSIM, if you're wondering. we got VATSIM on. We've got the new Active Sky, so we're going to check that out and see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and open up a SLC, or self loaning Cargo. We get that running. We'll get our passengers on. Let's call for the fuel truck. And that's what I got to do. I've got to turn on my ACARS report. Let's get the ACARS reporting. There's a ton of stuff to do. Looks like you did not finish your previous flight. You'd like to restore it. Uh, sure, whatever. Maybe. I don't know what it's going to do. This thing might be dumb. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go into here. Here it is Miami to Orlando. We'll start the flight. Okay, let's go get some. Um... All right, fine with that. Okay, good. All right, folks. So what I'm going to do is call the fuel truck, and we'll get the fuel truck coming. GSX is coming on, and we're going to go and click Request Refueling. All right, we're going to use our ASIG for our ground. There are contracted ground here in Miami. All right, fuel truck's on its way. We're going to put in uh, 12,600 pounds of fuel. While we're waiting for the fuel truck, let's go right into the um, right into the release. So I'm going to show you the release real quick, and then we'll get going with that. Hockey is starting, folks. The playoffs are going to be Sunday for the Rangers. They're playing... Washington, so you'll be seeing a few charter flights on the MD-80 again over to Dulles, and we'll see how we do on the first round. Hopefully they could actually win it. All right, there we are. I'm looking forward. The Islanders made it. There's a few um, a few good teams made it, I guess. Okay, we're departing Miami. We've got Orlando. Time right now is going to be 45 minutes once we're airborne. It's pretty quick. We're going to be departing Miami, and we're going to be put it in into Orlando at 96 feet. Looks like 26,000 uh, 26, feet. That's fine. And our, you know, that's going to be our um, route. I'll have to make this bigger here in a minute. Winds 2, 9 or 7, 44. Deviation, minus 25. No, that's not deviation. That's the temperature at altitude. Fuel, we need to put in minimum takeoff fuel, 11.2, with a minimum plan at 12.6, maximum at 12.6. So we'll do a fuel cross here. Okay, we're going to say minimum takeoff is 11.2, and this just helps you. Uh, we're taking... Uh, minimum fuel 12.6, or maximum, I'm sorry. And then our 7.3 is when we land in Orlando. That's what we should have. Everything else looks good, so you can sign it. Come down here, take a look at your notams. Notices to air missions. We've got um, MCOs basically saying MCO runway 17 left and 35 right markings. Obscure word. <clears throat> Center line markings. Okay, we've got no FDCs. That's good. And I'm just looking for closed. Runway 18 right, 36 left, closed daily from 11 to 1300. That's Zulu. Well, that's, that might be local. I don't know. Um, coming across here, just checking out all this. Why is my watch say, am I working out? I'm not. Although it feels like that sometimes. Good, 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 good. Construction. This is just letting us know there's some construction. I don't see any runway closures right now. No, no, no. Okay, and then Miami. Those are good. Runway 1230 is closed. Eight right localizers unusable. Tack in. You know, it's a lot of sim pilots don't even look at this stuff. They just, just go. And you got to get in a good habit of looking at this stuff, even if a lot of it doesn't pertain to the simulator, because it really doesn't sometimes. Um, it's a good idea to just check it out. 
Okay, here we are on the sheets. And I'm trying to get this thing going full screen on us. I don't know if we can do it. So, there we are. Diamond Mike Boston, what's going on? It says, hi, Cap, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, okay, paperwork's pretty much done. Passengers are actually uh, coming on or on, and I don't know what's going on with the ground crew. We're going to go here, there, intercom. Okay, looks like we're all set, ready to go whenever you're ready. Now, I just loaded in. Um, we've got what? 35 minutes. So I could redo this SLC. If you guys want to do that, I can. We've got, I'll show you. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to shut it down and start a new flight. Because it's just going to be all goofy if I don't do that. So I'd rather just do it. Have you ever seen SLC? I'll show you SLC. SLC is self-loaning cargo. It's a cool, really cool program. Um, if you had it from like P3D days, it's free. So you can't beat that price. Uh, and I really like it. I actually enjoy it a lot now. Uh, so it's a 737-800. We're in a Southwest, which is one class. And we're doing uh, Coastal Airways. We've got some pre-recorded stuff. Click up set up the flight plan. Just a couple things here. Airlines uh, CST, which is Coastal Airways for us. 172 passengers. We're almost full here. Um, one thing that, that to note is when you do this, oops, when you go over here, Make sure it's actual time of Zulu in the sim, not actual time. You could set that setting up, but I have it set for sim time. So we're going to do 1035. That's when we're departing. Um, let me look at my... Nope, I'm sorry, 1045, which is 645 local. All right, so it says, your flight leaves today. Check-in is in process. Uh, boarding is expected in 19 minutes. Well, we're going to go ahead and up the clock a little bit for you, so we're not sitting here for... You know, 40 minutes or whatever kind of defeats the purpose of starting early and uh, I don't want to do that so I'm gonna slide it over here we're gonna click in flight service and I'll slide it back I just couldn't see it with the, the bigger screen all right and then the next screen comes in like this and we're gonna be serving coffee and a movie it it's such a short flight we, we're not gonna use that cabin door is already open I get a verify do we have a door open? So let me go ahead and... Uh, uh, shoot, I need to turn on the lights. I can't see anything down there. Uh, so I'll get the lighting on here in a minute. But let me just go ahead and click return. We're going to go to doors. We're going to go ahead and throw that door open. And both our cargo doors should be open. There we go. And then one last thing we want to do on the ground service, I want to get the air conditioning unit on here. This is Orlando. I mean, this is Miami. It's going to be hot in here. So that door is already open. We're going to click Start Flight. Okay, and what it's going to do is it's going to do its thing. It's going to fire up. And then it's going to call me a bazillion times. And there it starts. Okay, this is the flight attendant calling us. So we're going to click this. Intercom. We can say hello. You can answer it on here. How are you? I'm feeling fine. Great. We're just getting ready for departure, but if you need anything else, just give me a call. Okay. Good. Um, let me get going on this. All right, let's go ahead and set up our um, our lighting. I'm gonna drop this down here. Main panel lighting coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a background. Floodlights coming in. I'm gonna come drop down here. Panel lights coming on. This is kind of getting your nest set up. So we're gonna get our nest set up and get it all done. And ready to go uh, you could flood out the, the bottom but I you know whatever okay we got good lighting on the airplane now let's go into a walk around so we like to do a walk around inspection before we do so let's go ahead and throw this on you want to do this early in the in the flow because if you have a light out or something like that you got to call maintenance and you're you're out of you know you're pretty much out of it by then um, you don't want to take a delay first flight of the day on a point-to-point -point system like we're doing it wouldn't be good. All right, that's good. I'm gonna check number. Good. You're gonna roll the stro the uh, strobe, the um, stabilizer down. Throw it to off. That check that kills that motor. If you had a runaway trim, it's called. That's what you would do. Even on the other side is the uh, autopilot. Let's go ahead and test this. Here we go. We got fault, and then here comes the dime. We got. Three fire lights coming up. One, two, three, four. We got overheat lights on. 
on both sides. Looks good. Go on the other side. These are the squibs or your fire extinguishers. There's three of them, and they're all located in the wheel well. These are your cargo fires. Check those. That looks good. We're going to go down to standby. You could set it to 2,000. I'm going to leave it alone right now. Let's go and throw our lights on the aircraft. We'll do a walk-around inspection, and we will get this thing rocking and rolling as well. And we could start. I'm going to flip this to arm. And on the overhead. Here we go. Lights coming on. All of them. One, two, three. Taxi light. Logo light. Taxi light. This thing. Collision light is on. Strobe and steady are on. Wing lights are on. Maybe. And wheel well coming on. Let's go ahead and uh, say no what problem. would you like. Go ahead. Go ahead, ground crew. What do you got? Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay, Captain. Radio check complete. We'll contact you once the ground vehicles arrive, and we're ready to start loading. Roger. I'm going to start loading the packs right about now. Let's just do the walk around inspection, and we'll start loading them. How's that? All right. So maybe that didn't work. All right. There we go. We're outside the airplane. Let's uh, do a walk around now. We would just come down through the jetway here. Excuse me. And uh, we would start right here on the nose gear. Now, usually, this could be the... It's usually the FO doing this, but the captain could do it as well. Just whatever they deem uh, necessary. Usually, if I be, would I would be doing this as the FO is setting up the uh, FMC. All right, TAP probe looks good. Coming over here. Welcome to Utah 1. Beautiful airplane, by the way. Really, really done well with the new... State flag, it's 805 ETOPS. This is an ETOPS aircraft. It's an ETOPS 800, which means engines turn or people swim. I'm kidding. It doesn't mean that at all, but that would be funny. All right, we have uh, pitot tubes, and you look at your alpha vein. That's looking good. Coming across down here, we've got the pitot, or not the pitot, the static port, and you look at your, under here, you look at your, um, Antenna and then your tires. You want to make sure your tire is good. That's up. The lights are good. As you can see, it's really bright. Woo! That's bright. And you just kind of take a peek at the engine, make sure we're good to go. All the fan blades look good. No damage, no puddle of, of oil on the ground. Um, nothing inside the cowling. Again, this is a very cold engine. It hasn't been run for a few hours now, probably about six hours on the uh, ground here. Six or seven hours. Uh, and maintenance could have had it in the uh, hangar as well. So we have a maintenance base here in Miami. We have one in up in, um, well, one in Salt Lake City and one in Westchester. That looks good. Flap fairings. By the way, the flap fairings, the flaps look good. And you come over here by the tires. Want to make sure you have no flat spots and no cords and your brake pads are good. Those two little pins that you can see here by the tires, That'll actually progressively get smaller and smaller and smaller. That means we're running out of brake. But right now we have tons of meat. It's not simulated. I wish it was. The A300 is. It's pretty cool. Okay, this good. Again, look in here. Everything on this airplane lives in the wheel well. So you have hydraulic tanks are in here. You have fire suppression in here. You have all sorts of torque links and cables and pulleys and everything else you want to make sure that this wheel well is in good shape does anybody know what i'm staring at what is that thing right there anybody know what that is that little nub right here you tell me what that is folks and i'm going to keep going whoever gets that gets 15 points and for the house cup all right that looks good doors closed the logo light is on elevators looking good strobe lights looking good let me kind of take a peek back here Looking good on the lighting. Strobe light on the tail. Good stuff. All right. Same thing over here. Yeah, take a look at your wing. That's looking great. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, the boarding done here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click tab. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to try it. GSX, I want to re, um, request boarding. Good. So let's get them going. 
I don't want to spend too much time out here and we can get the passengers starting to board. Take a peek here. This looks good. Any anybody with the answer? Are you going to Are you going to charts the hot the new hockey team? Are we chartering the hockey team? Yes. We are chartering the new hockey team here in Utah probably with this airplane. <laughs> No, I'm not pulling this airplane off the line. Although it would be cool. No, I think um, we will definitely charter it. Uh, I don't know. You know, binging from Utah, it's pretty much out the west. So it's going to be doing a lot of west coast trips and a lot of east flying. So uh, we'll see what division they go in. But, yeah, we're going to charter them. And um, I don't think it's going to be me flying them either. I I really was happy with the Rangers' schedule this year. Um, I was I'm so less burned out than I was last year. Last year with the Panthers, I was shot. I think you guys remember I was all over it last year. I was so tired of flying. I mean, we put 340 something hours on that dang airframe. All right, we're gonna have to uh, follow this woman through this wall. Excuse me. This is our um, Neptune interior, so you can see how pretty that is. It's really nice with the lighting and everything else like that. All right, I'm getting called. I'm coming. Dang it. Got to let a guy do his uh, pre-flight. Hold on. Hello. Hi, Captain. We've started boarding now, and the passengers are being seated. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so the passengers are boarding, and um, we are getting ready to go. Let's go ahead and get everything else programmed and ready to rock and roll, folks. Uh, time check is 10, 10 13. And let's go and program the FMC first. Take a look if there's any uh, ATC. We are on that sim, so you want to make sure that if your VAT sim controller's on, you get clearance. They are not on, so we're good to go with what we filed. All right, so let's jump down here, click the route. Now we're going to go Miami. We're going to do this old school just because it's just on arrival and departure. And then we're going to go to Kilo MCO, which is Orlando. Beautiful scenery. We have the taxi scenery. We have the taxi to gate scenery here. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It should be cool. Um, arrivals, just click the departures page here. And then you're going to go, we're going to use 8 right with the Flamingo 2 departure with the WAPM transition, and then you're gonna go to arrivals, and then you're gonna go probably the one seven right, I'm, I'm assuming. What was closed? We said there was a runway close. Let's take a look at that real quick. Let's go to flights. Um, you wanna go to, if you're using a Navigraph app, go to airports, tap info, and go to NOTAM, and then you can see. That's the future. Future runway 17 effective on the 22nd of April, so we're not there yet, which is good. Today, runway 1836 left is closed. So 18 left is closed, 36 left is closed. Oh, excuse me, 36 left, 18 right. So 18 right is closed. We're gonna take um, probably gonna land us 17 right, I would assume, or we could even go 17 left and then taxi over. So they're probably going to do that one seven left, I would assume. Um, let's just go ahead and plug that in on the uh, FMC. We're just going to placeholder, right? It could change right now. We're just going to throw it in there. No transition, and we will do the um, rides two. So I'm going to go ahead and click next page till we get to rides two one seven Bravo. We're going to click that and the wampum transition. It is right there. And then we'll click route. We're going to click activate, execute, flight numbers three. Pref in it next. We'll go ahead and throw that in there. And we'll take a look at our zero fuel weight. We've got the fuel on the aircraft, 12.8. We're going to plan with 12,000 by the time we taxi. And valid entry. Fat fingered it. Okay, 12,000. Zero fuel weight. We're just going to plug in right there at 138 now don't just assume that's correct go to your paperwork look at your paperwork 
I'm talking about your release. You want to make sure your release says the same thing. I've got a zero fuel weight on 138 here. And I'm just looking. I'm going to go ahead and give that a good old check mark. It is correct. All right, so our paperwork is good there. Reserves are 5,000. We're not going to go into that. Cost index is 20. The airline doesn't want to go too far over that right now. We have a trip at uh, 21,000. We could climb up to 260. So it just depends. Um, I think we could go 260. We're pretty, we're pretty darn light. We'll just dump that in there. Cruise winds are 297 at 44. Slant 44. You can see that there. We're going to throw that in there. Top of climb is coming in at um, what minus 25. Right there. Execute that, clear that, go to N1 limit and hold. Now you're going to wait on this because we're going to do a VTP, um, a VTP, I have it on my iPad here. So I'm just going to throw it in here. Miami 8 right full, it's dry. Let's get the wind calculated correctly. I'm just going to refresh everything. There we go. Wish I could show you. I probably can show you. It's an SSW with carbon brakes. Now this aircraft was delivered in 20, 2000 actually. To this is an old uh, Caribbean aircraft that we have, Caribbean Airlines. Kilo M I A is the airport. We are runway eight right. We're going to be full. Condition is dry. We'll go ahead and pull all that weather in there. Dry optimum now. I'm gonna set. I'm gonna set at 26,000 flaps. I'm gonna set normally at five. I'm just gonna force it to five. Auto on the AC, off on the anti-ice, no on the improved climb rate, and our takeoff weight roughly 150,000 pounds. We have cargo. By the way, we're flying a lot of cargo now at Coastal. We have how much cargo we have on this airplane? Do we? Just to let you know, there's 6,500 pounds of cargo going to Orlando. So that helps, again, with revenue, right? It's all about revenue. We're not going to fly out empty bins. If we if we, if we we could fill those bins up with cargo, we're going to. So there's our cargo, right? All right, flaps 5. I'll show you on the um, paperwork here. We're going to go flaps 5 here. Oops. Runway is going to be 8 right. Cell temp, we're going to do 53 degrees. And trim is looking like um, 6. I've got 143, 44, 48. So I'm just going to write those numbers down. 143, 144, 148. And it looks good. Excel height, engine out acceleration height is, uh, what, 200, 932 feet with a Torah of 10,000 feet. Okay, there is no uh, engine failure procedures, just standard. Okay, so there's no terrain to worry about or anything like that, so it just says, yeah, you got standard. So we're done on that. Let's go to put that away. And I will write the numbers down here so we can all see up here. All right, and then I'm going to write those numbers down. Where is it? Okay, and then we're just going to come down and drop down here. It looks like a 64 over 64. So 6.4, 6.40, looks like 12.8. We'll take that as well. We are under the minimum amount of 12.6, maximum is 12.6, so... The fueler was kind to us, gave us a little extra fuel, which is good. We'll take it, right? So we're going to drop back down here on the FMC. We're going to put in 53 on the cell temp. And then dump it right over the top. That looks good. Go to the takeoff. Flaps are going to be 5, so we'll set that there. CG's coming in probably about 19. <clears throat> now, that's, these numbers should be about 1 to 2 knots difference. I've got 142, 144, 48. They're right on the money, so we're just going to use pretty much all of those. And we are ready for the flows. SS Aviation says, nice livery as always. Thank you, SS. Appreciate it, bud. It's good to see you. Welcome aboard. All right. By the way, 
you would have gave me an elbow and said, dude, your lights. And I would have been like, ah, shoot. I got to turn everything off here. What the heck are we doing, Cap? <laughs> All right, keep the logo light on. We're going to throw the taxi light off. We're going to come back over here and throw in the steady. And we will throw that to off. What the heck, man? All right, that's off. And a collision light is coming off. Wing is now off. We'll leave that on and the logo light on. So everything else is good to go on this. One thing I need to change, we have an old pressurization, not a new pressurization. So it seems like I have to do this on every flight right now, and it's annoying. So I've had to change it every time, and I don't know why it's screwing up like that, but it, it is. It's pretty annoying. So let's go to options or aircraft. We're going to go to equipment, and I just want to come down here. And it's classic. It's not MMR. It's classic. We got a KU band, old pressurization, and that should do it for us. Click return. We're going to click uh, setup, and we're going to go to menu, anytime, and then we're going to go to actions. Okay. Now let's take a look. Is it right? It is right now. Good. All right, let's go ahead and get, get our, um, this is going to be a, um, uh, it's called a cold and dark, well, not a cold and dark flow, but this is going to be our pre-flight flow. We set nav and nav. This is going to be set to left, where you can throw it to right, and you can throw position. Uh, inner service phone is off. Engine one and two is off. Eeks are on with their capped. When you're coming down here, you're going to go flight recorder, flip it. You're testing that. And then you're going to test your mock over speed. There's two. Two stall warnings. You would say, hey, watch your knees because the stick shaker is going to rattle. That's what you're hearing rattling. Do not check this. This is the passenger uh, This is the passenger oxygen switch. You throw that switch and throw it to on. All the oxygen bottles from the top are going to drop down. And you are stuck. You're not moving, which is really bad. All right. Yard amper is coming on. We're going to come down here. We've got uh, normal, 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 auto end. Normal, cross feeds open, lights off, closed. Fuel pump on. Coming up here, everything is good on this panel. Our electrics. Just checking this, 22. Standby power is 28. And our bat bus is at 24, zero on DC. I'm just going to keep it on Gen 1. These cab utilities on. IFE doesn't matter. It's a dummy switch. Equipment cooling's both on normal. Coming down. Emer, emer lights are on. Seatbelts are coming on. All right. We've got two doors still on. I don't know why. All right. Window heat on. All four lights come on. You're going to drive it to overheat. Now, if you don't see the light on, just do a power test. Flip them off, flip them back on. Pro Pete, you're just testing those. Those are good. Same with your engine anti-ice. You see that? And your wing anti-ice. Those lights should come out. The engines won't because on, pressure's off. I always turn both pumps on, by the way. We're going to go ahead and test the flight cockpit recorder. Hold it for five seconds. You see the green light? You can let go. Coming down here, that should re-zero, that should re-zero. Altitude horn cutout is good up on the overhead here. You can see continuous or control cabin, which is us, the cockpit. I'm going to turn way down. I like it about 60. So I'm going to freeze out the FO. <laughs> now you can see right now we're pushing 40, 50. We're pushing about 60 degrees in the cabin. Eh, cabin's good. It's nice and cool back there right now. So that's great. And then we're going to drop down here. Research fans. Auto, auto, overheat test coming up. Bam. You can see wing, wing body overheat, and that's good. I'm going to throw this to auto. Packs are off. Bleeds are on. Coming down over here. We're going to throw pressurization up to 26,000 with about, um, what did we say it was? 96 feet. So let's go to 100. Stop. Everything is good. This is going to flip on the right side. Great, and we're going to come back down here. Let's check that. I got 3003 on the winds. The weather in Miami is 
or MCO. I'm sorry, Miami. That's where we're taking off out of. Weather coming in. I've got 1209, 10 statue miles of clear skies, 25 over 18. Altimeter 3005. So let's go ahead and dial that in there. 3005 set. Um, I want to make sure that you can see this is active sky. F it says MSFS is connected. So we are good here. So you could see if I plug in Miami, what's Miami doing right now? And you could see kind of where we're at. So this is brand new. And so this is very much the same that we're used to. Same kind of interface. 120, 10 knots, true. We've got that. Good. I'm just going to minimize that. Okay, um, TFC is coming on, and let's take a look at the departure. We're doing the Flamingo 2, which is an r and departure. Kind of briefed it with you already. I'll show you. Going to see salt up to deals, then live. It looks like we're going to come over to a speed of 148. 148 coming in there. Uh, heading is going to be basically 92. Flip it over here. I think they're going to have a top of climb there, about uh, 10. It's at like four, five thousand on the level. Yeah, it's a five thousand level off, so it's pretty close. We'll probably climb up faster than that, but we'll uh, see. Flight director's coming on. Maybe. Flight director's on. I might have to reset the dang panel again. Yep. Ah, you stupid thing. Restart the panel. All right, folks, we're almost there. This is kind of what it takes to get it done and do it right. This is kind of what you got to do. You know, just get in there and fire it all up. It's That's kind of not how we work in this uh, at Coastal. I'm going to take a drink with my uh, salsa. All right. Are you back on? Panel is on. Flight director is on now on this side. So FO's flight director is good. Kind of peek down here the panel. We're going to go RTO. See, the RTO light is on, should come off. That's a good test. We're going to go ahead and reset the fuel flow. There wasn't anything done. We're going to flip system and then flip the engine. I like that. This is kind of how I run. If there was an issue, it would let me know here. This is set. This is good to go. We can throw this on approach, but we don't need to. Although we already tested our lights, let's check our autopilot lights. All that's looking good. Come across here. Oxygen's test already. Let's go to the electronic flight bag. I'll show you. We're going to request from Simbrief. Pulls in that data, and here we are with the departure. Flamingo 2. This way I can pull it up here, and you can see that is the star. We need to sit. Flazzy Flamingo 2 right there. Throw it on the pin, and we will go full... This is going to be an RNAV departure, folks. This is kind of normal stuff. We will enable LNAV, VNAV, and just let it go. We'll fly the HUD straight on up, and then uh, we'll kick it on. Okay, coming back down here. That's all set, ready to go. So is this. Looking about six on the trim. Trim is set. And last thing, we want to make sure we get the proper CTAF frequency in here. So um, there's two tower frequencies. So which one do you do? Um, something I've learned. Oh, crap. Who's calling me? Ground crew? Go ahead. Okay, thanks. How are we doing on the... Uh, I don't know how we're doing on everything. Uh, what do we got? We got 172 seated. We're ready to go, folks, so that's really good. Um, we'll do a PA here. I'll show you that here in a minute, and uh, we'll get going. But what I want to show you is if you don't know the frequency and you're on VATSIM, on the chat, just hit dot um, CTAF and then space kilo, whatever the airport is. And then you're going to enter because there's two that could, that could be. They're going to give us 118.3. So what I want to do is come down here. We're going to dial in 118.3 right here and bring it all the way down. By the way, folks, do me a favor. If you're new to the channel, hopefully we provide you some value here. Do me f and hit the subscribe button right now. And if you're already a subscriber, smash the like button. Hit, hey, you know what? I like this. If you don't like it, then that's fine. 
All right, 118.3 is set. We're good to go on that. And we're going to go ahead and keep that standard there. And then I am going to throw a code in. And the code is 6637. So it's going to blah, plug that in. 6637. I don't like this camera angle. So I'm going to change it with you guys. Because I don't, I don't really like that. I'm trying to get... The whole panel in, yet yeah, I'm not cranked around. I think it's 10. Yeah. It's like I'm looking weird. The only thing is, I keep, you gotta go like way out, which is, you know, um, that's probably gonna work. So I'm gonna go control F10, and then I'll hit it again, and that should give us a good yeah, there we go. So 66, 37. We're almost there. We're getting ready. We're running a checklist and we'll get out of here. Do you have any questions at home? Because your job is to watch me to make sure I don't screw anything up. And if I do, I need you to tell me you're screwing something up. All right, let's get in here. Running the checklist. Normal checklist coming up. Okay, before start checklist, fuel pumps are coming on. Let's go ahead and start the APU. I'll just run the clocks. I think we're ready to go here. Fuel pumps are on. APU coming to start. Okay. Fuel pumps on and amount is good. We have uh, 12,800. Center tanks will be off. Passenger signs are on. Window heat is on. Hydraulic pumps are on. Doors. We got to close those doors. Let's get those doors closed. And uh, call the ground crew. Tell them to get the heck out of here. And um, we'll be ready to rock and roll. You can see outside. We are ready, folks. Airplane's ready and prepped. We're getting the thing. We won't pull the jetway away until we get the APU fired up. So we got to wait for that. Let's close the cockpit door so I can hear myself think. We'll do that now. Cockpit door is coming closed. All right. Cockpit door is coming closed. That's nice. I can hear everything now, at least on my end. Uh, we'll defer the doors. Pressurization set 26,000, and it's on auto. Okay. Auto brake is set on RTO. Stab trim is set at 6, and we've got before start checklist is complete. We're on the gen bus. Go ahead and throw it on. Clock's coming on, too. Does anybody know why we're going to select, select the timer right now once we get the uh, APU started? Take a guess. Did anybody guess what the knob was for on the uh, landing gear? I don't see it in the chat. No? We gotta wait about 90 seconds. A full minute. It's about 90 seconds. While we wait for that, let's. I'm gonna give you a brief. How's that? So let me get in here. I'll get a briefing done for you, and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling. How's that? Good stuff. Hope everybody's ready for this. We've got another whole leg to go. And let's start. I'm writing stuff down so I can give you a good briefing. Oops. Drew all over my uh, sheet. And one last thing. What have we got? There we go. Okay, here we go. I'll give you a briefing get my face out of here folks from the flight deck welcome aboard uh, flight number three brand new service over to Orlando right now Orlando weather is uh, 84 degrees just a few clouds there in Orlando uh, should be a little bit might be a little bit bumpy on the climb really pretty good on uh, the cruise and maybe again bumpy down uh, low uh, I show 42 minutes once we're airborne so a really quick flight probably uh, try to find some smooth air for you maybe we can kick the seatbelt sign off if you um, remain seated, please keep the seatbelts on just in case uh, we had any unexpected rough air. We don't know. We're we're using Active Sky today, so we'll see how it works. Right now, sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. Thanks for watching the Flight Sim Broadcasting Network. All right, folks, let's get this thing going. We'll call for our uh, dispatch here. We'll say prepare for push and departure. So once that's done, we're going to get two minutes on the clock here. We're going to come down and tell them to do a few things. One, we're going to click payload. We've got it done. Two, we're going to come over here. We're going to release the air conditioning cart. And then we're going to pull the ground power 
You want to make sure that you're on the APU bus before you do that. All right, we are ASIG ready to go. We're going to go ahead and remove the chocks. We're going to throw the beacon on. Okay, so beacon's on. Um, you can see it's going to get pretty hot in the cabin. So I want to make sure that we uh, get the door closed. Timer is coming off. And we're getting a call. Hello. Hi, Captain. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. When it comes back, we'll continue boarding. Now we're boarded. There's 172 people on the aircraft. All right, I'll ask for the jetway. Thank you. Okay, it says checked in 172, 120, 172 is seated, 172 is secured. We got everybody on this airplane. Departure checks completed. Bypass pin inserted. Right, what's going on here? That is good. Doors coming closed. So we're going to go and get the door closed. Come back over here. Click return. Doors coming. Is that door closed? Door is closed. All right. We're ready to go, folks. You guys ready? Everybody ready in the chat? Let me get my seatbelts on. We got to we got to get the harness on, folks. Locking gear. Locking gear. Don't sound excited or anything. It's just work. <laughs> I got this thing got work. Shoot's coming on, folks. Hang on. You got to throw a lap belt on. Not necessarily your shoulder harnesses yet, but your lap belts. All right. We're going to go ahead and go um, push. Ow. We're going to do a uh, nose to the left, tail to the right. Release parking brakes, please. Release parking brakes, please. Wow. All right. Um... Just want to make sure we've got ground crew coming in. Parking brakes, please. Hold on. Hold your horses. Okay. Uh, Release parking brakes, please. Roger. Okay. All right, doors are closed. We're ready to go. Release parking brakes, please. Okay, we have... We're going to increase just the time a minute. And the Release reason why I'm doing plane. that is I want to... Um, this is a proving flight, so I want to make sure we get our timings right. So that's why it's important. We're going to go... Uh, Release parking brakes, please. This... She needs to shut up. Okay, hold on. 644 local. It's 1044. Release parking uh, brakes, please. Holy smokes. Hold on. Getting a phone call. Hello. Hello, Captain. Release parking brakes. The jetway detached. When it comes back, we'll continue boarding. W what boarding? No Everybody's problem. on the airplane. All right, whatever. We're out of here. Parking brakes, please. Whatever, dude. I don't know what's going on. Let's go. Holy smokes. <laughs> Miami traffic, riptide three, push, gate uh, Gulf eight, Miami. Anybody with a radio check? 118.3, right? Watch, Miami is on. Of course they're on. Miami approach, 124.850. Let's call them up. 124.850. 124850 now. Don't do anything yet. Don't even start the engines. 124.850. And the reason why I'm not going to start them is because I've got to get Miami approach. Or Miami departure, I should say. And Miami departure, Riptide 3, looking for uh, clearance over to Miami. We're actually pushing on Gulf 8 right now. Do they hear me or not? Looks like they didn't hear me. So what I'm going to do is check my settings and make sure the audio is the audio is correct. We've got the sound. 124.850 is set. 
We are on broadcasting. Let me call him again. At Miami departure, radio check. Please set parking brake. Okay, got it. Squawk 6637, I've got that on board. Altitude 230 now on the altitude. Uh, hold on. We're going to uh, let me set the park break and then we'll. Uh... Okay, park break set. You got it. Um, okay, we've got Miami MCO. Route is what we filed. Altitude 23,000. Squawk after departure. Squawk what? 6637 and marks clear for Mingo departure. Welcome. Maintain 5,000. Squawk 230 and 10. Departure frequency 124.850. Contact with taxi. Unlocking gear. Okay. Contact ATIS with taxi. So. My right, center's online. I cannot hear anything. 135.175. Let's go there. 135.175. I'm going to put that on standby here. 135.175. Disconnected. Bypass pin removed. <laughs> Bypass pin removed. Left is clear. One thirty five, one seven five. I'm going to try center and see if they can hear me. I don't know what's going on. They should be able to hear me. Miami Summer Creator radio check. Nothing. They should, I should hear them. They should hear me. So, what I'm going to do. I don't know why. Clear to start engine. Ha! <laughs> well, snarky, man. <laughs> I mean, how snarky can you get? Let's see. We got it. We got it. We got it. I know. I know what happened. All right, let's start number two. Number two is coming up. I bet you it's really hot in the cabin. Yeah, it's almost 80 degrees. So let's go and get the, get some air going in the in there. Um, down here, we're gonna go through and APU bleed on. And let's go and start number two first. Number two coming to ground. Take a look. What did I miss? Nothing. We just I just couldn't check uh, the sound. And they'll uh, approach. Uh Southwest 2148, is this Orlando or Miami? It's Miami, sir. Uh, this is Miami approach. Okay, 25, uh, here comes the gas. Oh, frequency get up to Orlando. Uh, Southwest 2148, we're at 6,510 left, Fort Lauderdale. There's a light. Uh, that's what we're Southwest 2148, Miami approach, hello. Uh, just invited TT arrival, and uh, are you planning 10 left island? Clear skies now, folks. Uh, ILS 10 left island. Okay, we got a light. Oil pressure Rocky is off. 2148 cross Holland at 5,000. At Holland, cleared straight in ILS 10 left approach. Okay, Holland at 5,000. At Holland, cleared ILS runway 10 left approach. Southwest 2148. All right, we got a good light on that. We got rollback coming in. We're going to do a um, isolate ventilate. So we're going to isolate the cabin or the isolation valve. You're going to throw it to close. We're going to go ahead and throw that to auto. You can see the duct pressure going to come up here in a minute. All right, let's go ahead and fire up number one. Number one coming to ground. Number one starting right now. Here we go. You're going to start both engines in the morning. First flight of the day, you're always going to start both engines. There we go. we got good rotation coming up. The starter is engaged. The starter valve is probably like this big. The starter is huge on these things. And basically, from the APU in the back, it shoves air into an impeller. And the impeller spins really, really, really fast because it's a compressor. 25, here comes the fuel. Fuel's up. And then what happens is that compressor then starts turning. All right, then the impeller starts turning, and then guess what it does? That impeller starts turning a shaft, which then turns a crankshaft inside the engine called a starter shaft. 
and that starter shaft starts rolling through gears, and that starts spinning, okay? And once you get that shaft to start spinning, that shaft is connected to the accessory gear drive box, which then turns the turbine, and the, the N2 starts spinning. we got a light off, by the way, and oil pressure's off. So that starts spinning, which gets your fans spinning. So this thing, jet engines are cool. All right, we got a good, we got rollback. Let's go. So I'm just going to take a peek upstairs here. Got rollback on, on, APU off. Don't need to burn that fuel anymore. And I'm just going to come upstairs here and just check this. Run around the horn with my mouse. One, two, good. Inverters, good. I'm just making sure everything's within range. Propeat's coming on. Propeat is on. Those are off. That's on. Doors closed. Coming up here. Packs coming on. That's on auto. Auto, auto. APU bleed off. Coming down. That looks good. Continuous, continuous. Taxi. Flaps. Here we go. Flaps five. Okay, watch your knees. FO would call that. Boom. Boom. One, two. Rudder. Rudder. Here we go. Checklist. Four taxi generators on. Probity's on. Anti S off. Flight controls are free. Flaps. Uh, five, five, green light. And. Uh, American 3207. The uh, Delta terminal. Ready for the push and start, sir. There we go. Transponders on TARA. We have American the numbers. Let's go. Let me depart trailer ramp with flight control. Push your discretion. All right, let's go. Pop the brakes. We're out of here. Okay, folks, let's rock and roll, man. Uh, departure for uh, American 3207. Uh, we're wondering what runway we can expect for departure. American 3207, expect from my A right. A right, thanks. American 2440, you up? Go ahead, 2440. American 2440, reduce speed to 210 knots, then descend and maintain 3000. Okay, uh, 210 knots and down at 3000 feet, American 2440. Come up. Ma'am, a departure Riptide 3 at Papa, ready to uh, taxi. With the numbers. Riptide 3, squad 6637, runway 8 right, taxi by Papa. 6637. Okay, uh, 6637 and 8 right via Papa, Riptide 3, thanks. JetBlue 1371, reduce speed to 210, then descend, maintain 3000. Okay, squawk is 6637. I had to just change that squawk code. We had the wrong digit. I think we uh, we went a little, we're a little too aggressive on that. What a beautiful looking wing, isn't it? That's pretty. I don't care who you are. That's beautiful. Nice looking wing. We're going. 48, maintain 170 Howdy, howdy. What's going on? NV Silence. Welcome aboard. Good to see you. Hopefully you're doing well. Had a great week. We're uh, just, you didn't miss much. We just pushed back and uh, headed over to a takeoff out of our hub here in Miami, over to uh, Orlando. Then we're going to fly up to LaGuardia. We have the new active sky weather. We'll see how that works today, how the updates go. I haven't flown with it yet, so this is brand new to me. Um, and all that good stuff. We'll do our flows here in just a minute. Once we get through, this is Papa. So we're going to take Papa all the way up to 8 right. And one thing I want to do, folks, this is an RNAV departure. Just go to the legs page really quick. Now, I'm breaking my company policy, so I don't want to do that. Uh, company policy states you taxi with your head up, not your head down. <laughs> so it's hard to do when you're single pilot like this. So you're trying to make sure that you're, American you know, you're, you're good to go. And I'm just going to arm that. Uh, 360 for American 24-40. All right, we're doing about 17 knots over the ground, which is fine. We should go about 30-ish. Should be 30 knots. By the way, if you're new to the channel, 
pop in, say hi. Those folks are watching. It's always good to interact with folks. Utah one, nice. Good looking bird. Give you some outside views. Beautiful sunrise here in Miami. You folks are gonna get a good, uh, a good beautiful departure here. Southwest 2148, wind 14010, runway 10 right. left, clear to land. 10 left, clear to land for Southwest 2148. All right, folks, here we go. On the overhead, we're gonna hit attendant notification. American 2440, three miles from Grant, turn right heading 060, maintain 3000, still established on the localizer. Cleared ILS from my niner approach. No problem. Right, uh, zero six zero to intercept the localizer uh, and maintain three thousand until established, and we're cleared. ILS uh, nine, American twenty four forty six. Okay, auto on, off. We're ready to go. Thirteen seventy one, flatting one nine zero. I've been watching the vids for a while and now. Cool. Thought about actually applying to be a coastal pilot. I'd love to have you, man. Um, we really would. I'd love to have you. Uh, a coastal, it's, you know, it's not for everybody. We're not a sign and fly kind of virtual airline. But but if you're really, like, dedicated and you want to do it the right way and you want to learn and you, you're willing to go through training, come on in. We're, we're hiring CRJ pilots, too, so you can always upgrade into a 737 later. Uh, the CRJ training is much less threshold in terms of the the set you know what what you have to go through the crj has three videos the 737 has close to 20 so there's your difference um and there's some really cool crj routes i'm, I'm building so which is awesome take off config check pack set bleed set altimeters recall let's call the flight attendants the let them know cleared ils from my one zero left approach 130 on the heading, maintain 3000 till established. Clear to land, 10 left for Jablo 1371. All right, folks, we're going to slow down here. I'm going to go ahead and throw Flamingo 2 up here. Three, you win to 120 at Niner, or I have sea salt on light right, cleared for takeoff. Okay, 8 right, clear for takeoff, over to sea salt, uh, Riptide 3. Okay, we got it all in there, that's ready to go. All right, folks, in the chat right now, if you're a member, I saw shoots, shoots on. Here we go. Okay, we got a one runway niner clear to land. Ah, uh, looks good. Uh, clear to land, uh, American 2440, that's... Okay, lights, camera, action here. Lights, camera, action here. Uh, JetBlue 1371, no speed restriction. You are uh, south of the localizer. Turn left heading 070 to rejoin. Tap the brakes. Good. Looking good. Zero All right, here we go. To rejoin. Flight attendants, please be seated for takeoff, you idiots. <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't mean that. It's not working. I don't know why it's not working. All right, we're going to roll up on uh, 8 right here. Eight right on the money. Auto throttles armed. Here we go. Okay, flaps. So we're gonna bring him up to forty. Southwest twenty one forty eight. We're off of one zero left for the gate. Stabilized and toga. Here we go. Roger. Thanks for parking via Bravo. Have a good night. Hi, Bravo. Thanks for being there. We'll see you later. Southwest twenty one forty eight. Okay, takeoff thrust yeah, is set. What a no beautiful major. sunrise, you guys. Right. 80 knots, check. Cleared ILS, one zero left approach. 10, 10 degrees to the right, maintain 1800 until established. Cleared to land, one way 10 left. Okay, yeah, hand on the oak. And it's uh, cleared for the ILS and approach one zero left. We're gonna rotate right now. It's gonna pop it up just a little bit. Hold it right there. Wait, wait, wait. A little bit of rudder and rotate. Pull it. Gear coming up. Miami approach. Avianca said follow two zero zero vice two with echo. Twenty degrees. Hold. Avianca zero zero. Okay. Miami approach. Hello, descend by the vice arrival. I expect ILS from my niner. We're trim it nose down, nose down, nose down. 
Okay, there we go. Hold that right there. You can see it's absolutely gorgeous out here. Let me tell him. Remember departure, Riptide, 3 out of 12, uh, 2,000 for 5. Riptide, Flaps 3, one. departure, radar contact, climb maintain 1, 6,000. 16,000. All right, 16,000 right there. I'm going to manually hand fly the aircraft. 71, the wind 120 at Niner. Air correction, 14010, runway 10 oh, left. Gorgeous, clear to land. folks. 10 left, clear to land for JetBlue 1371. All right, let's fly the airplane. Let's get below uh, the flap one. You see that one right there? Once we get above the one, we can go ahead and retract it. The flap's up now. Here we go. Flaps are up. I'm going to go ahead and throw this two off. We're going to clear it up to 16,000. We're going to go sea salt. Nice climb right there. Now I'm going to go control wheel steering. And what that does, it basically puts us in an Airbus mode. And we're accelerating. We're going to start our turn. So I can... I can literally take my hand off the yoke, and it's still going to maintain this turn. I'm going to increase pitch, increase the bank, let go. There we go. Let's go with 30 degrees, let go. You see how nice that is? Number nine, our golf whiskey. What's your direction of flight? Okay, I want to start rolling out to deals here. I got an FMC message. All right, once we level out here, here I'm going to go ahead and keep on the turn. Line. Which direction will you be departing to? Okay, I'm going to go Command A. Command is on. All right, we've got N1 LNAV VNAV speed. That's coming off. American 2440 is clear the act of the Tango 7. We could take the gates at Golf. To keep your seatbelts fastened low and tight across your lap whenever you are seated, even if the seatbelt sign is. Roger, American 2240, taxi to parking via Sierra. Hold I got the heading. One, two. I got the heading. There we go. Taxi via Sierra, hold short, runway 12, American Okay, this is off. As we continue our ascent, you will soon be able to. November. 829 or golf whiskey maintain VFR at or below 2500 departure this frequency. All right, packs are on auto, bleeds are on. And I'm going to go ahead and throw off a couple things here. These are coming off, off. Taxi light is off. 10,000 with the flight attendants know. So we're just going to throw the chime here. Whiskey read back is correct. Advise ready for taxi. Expect from my one zero left. Approach, uh, JetBlue 1371, clear of 10 left at Bravo 7. All right, uh, there's some parking. Park All right, oh, there, please. Parking. It's got to be in New York. New York. Welcome to Lauderdale. Parking straight ahead. Have a good night. Okay, here we go. 16,000. We're oh, increasing JetBlue our speed. But I want to hold about 280 on the speed. Riptide, 3 contact Miami Center, 135.17. Have a good night. 35.17, we'll see you. Riptide, 3. Okay, 135.175. I'm going to flip that One, over. 24.85. Oh. We're through 12,000. Good night. Shoots off. Good night, Delta 1227. Miami approach, 124.85. 2485, Delta 1227. Have a good night. Let me call him up. Miami Center, Riptide 3, 12,000, Flamingo 2. Riptide 3, Miami Center, climb and maintain flight level 2, tree 0. 2, three, zero, Riptide 3. All right, there we go, folks, right there. 2, three, zero on the speed, on the altitude. Do we go 280 on the speed? I'm going to kick it back. Miami that wasn't Center, a pretty, yeah, pretty good departure, go ahead, maybe? Let's go check the outside, huh? What a beautiful, yeah, absolutely have beautiful. Goofy seven, better transition for the arrival to 
Uh, we're through 10,000. I got to go ahead and throw the retractables off. Avianca 28, Roger. Climb check coming up. Tree, tree zero, and Packs and bleeds as Baron required. We checked it already. Right. Pressurization is checked. It's coming up. Start switches are off. APU off. Thanks Flaps back. are up. No Oopsie lights. Climb check. All right, let's get the weather for my uh, for Orlando because it's going to happen that quick. It goes like that. Logo lights, I'm going to throw them off. I can throw those off too. Let's go ahead and get the weather. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, whatever, dude. We're way behind. Miami Center, Squawk 6712, and I did. Huh. Yeah. You're a little bit behind. Got to catch up. SLC is going bananas right now. It's way behind. I don't need pushback. Not required. TWA We're in the air. Squawk six seven one two and I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I already did that. All right, eighteen thousand coming up, folks. What a beautiful uh, morning out of here in Miami. It's gorgeous. You couldn't get a better time. All right, we're gonna go uh, standard. So STD standard, and then you're gonna come up. You're gonna throw the rest of our lights off. Those two lights on. All right, that's it, folks. We just hang out and relax. Let's get the weather. We can't really relax because we got the weather. So Orlando weather right now is... Miami Center, Frontier Flight 2371 with you, flight level 300. Frontier Flight 2371, Miami Center, pilot to discretion to send a maintain flight level 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and increase their speed now. Oh, there's a nice little bump. Southwest 1982, They're giving me a bad flight. Why? Why am I getting dinged for your stupidity? Avianca 28, say heading. Dumb. All right, Orlando weather, folks. And we're actually, we're going to wait because we've got a five-minute. It's turning over in five minutes, so I'll just wait on the weather. Okay, we're at 20,000. We're going to 23,000. We're going to go to cruise. I'll show you. We're going to go cruise here, and we're going to go 230. TWA 400, radar contacts. 68 miles southeast of the Nassau VR, maintain level tree zero, zero. MCO straight to LaGuardia, yes. Alex, the pilot, what's up? He says, hello, guys, won't disrupt you too much. Got a critical stage flight. No, we're good, man. Just had a quick inquiry. That's all right. Yeah, go for it. Ask. Now's the time. Go for it, buddy. We're, we're, we're kind of relaxing. Yep, we're waiting for a weather change that, anyway. Aware of traffic, uh, 22 to 23. That I'm not talking to because it's not my airspace. Approximately 6 o'clock and 4 or 5 miles, same altitude. Jack Center, 135, 925. I'm just getting that queued up, ready to go. Okay. We are level. Ask away. Right turn the ramp tonight. Okay, we're at cruise level, 23,000 feet. Here comes the throttles coming back. Good. Um, I think 28. My heading is 336 now. Woo! 65 miles top of descent. That's how quick this is. <laughs> yep. Yep, just baby. a little too late for that. Avianca, 28, turn left, heading 320. 21. We're going to be, um... Condor 163. Uh, your intended cruise now is 350, or you want 37? Uh, 
Uh, Alex says, just had a quick inquiry. Yeah, go for it. So when trying to apply, it said I need to have extensive knowledge of three. How extensive are we talking? You just got to know how to fly the airplane. <laughs> you got to you got to know how to fly the airplane, right? You're going to learn a lot through training. So don't don't freak out too much about that. Um, you will have to do just kind of a. Um, it's not a disqualifier. Just just put it that way. Alex says, yeah. So I myself, a real world pilot, a couple of years ago, heard about your new upcoming airliner. Uh, since then, I was in the middle of transferring to now operator. I have much time on my hands coming back. I was intrigued for a job as a pilot. In your virtual airline. Yeah, let's do it. Go for it. Yeah. Good. No application. No, we're we're open. We're, we're taking pilots, so please come on, come on board. We'd love to have you. Just get on board and go through the training. That'd be great. Everybody's got to go through the training. There's nothing I can do about that. That's just kind of how it goes, you know. I think that's what makes us unique is that we. You know, we do the training. So don't don't let the, the knowledge thing, you know, when I say, when we, when we say you have, a, have to have extensive knowledge, it's not like we're going to grill you on systems or you're going to learn that stuff through ground school. But if you go on the 737, if you do like the CRJ, it's quick. Three, three, I mean, literally three videos and a couple of flow videos. That's pretty much it. But the 737, you're going to go through ground school training. There's 12, 12 to 15 videos on that. Uh, so you'll learn systems. And it's a grind. I'm not going to lie. It's a grind, man. Um, and it's self-paced, so you could do it as fast. You can't go as slow as you want because you only have a certain amount of, what, like, a window to get it done. Uh, and that's about six months, though. So just, just to be, give you an idea, we, we've had pilots do it in two and, two and a half weeks. We've had pilots take all the way up to six months. So it's just up to you and your schedule and how it allows. I will tell you that. 90% of the pilots that do apply don't go through and don't get through the training because they just flame out, right? They just burn out. They flame out. Um, and it's not it's not hard training. It just isn't. It's just time-consuming. But if you have time and you want to dedicate, then do it. it You'll be great at it. It's just really up to you is what I'm saying. It's, it's up to the pilot. It's what you yourself want. If you want that, that authentic feel, you're going to get it here for sure. Um, yeah no applications are open so if you go to flycoastalairways.com click careers drop down we're always hiring pilots uh, I gotta kind of make that clear on our website we are hiring um, so please get in there give me your VAT sim ID I know uh, we, we said about 200 hours for VAT sim if you're a pilot though that's that's going to be cut in half. You know you know exactly what's going on, but you need to know that sim kind of how it works and that kind of stuff. Now we're getting to the top of the scent soon. Uh, so Alex says that's if I do I like you guys. If I see if I can get some other Condor seven three seven captain for you. Three connect to yeah. center one three five point nine or two. Was that me? Riptide three, yeah. copy. Go for it. I've got it. Over to Jacksonville, uh, 135.92. No, no, sir. Not for you. I was just wondering how you copy me. I'm having trouble raising these other guys. Envoy 714, how copy? Sorry. Envoy <laughs> uh, 714, connect Jacksonville Center, 135.9 or 2. thought he was talking to me. I'm like, all right, I'm going over to Jax. See ya. <laughs> Condor 163, Miami Center. Alex, you're a C3 controller? Yeah, you're good. Come on in, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, those hour requirements are wiped for you. A C3 controller, you know what you're doing. Southwest 1982, just send via the CUDA 3 arrival. Fort Lauderdale Lands East, Fort Lauderdale Altimeter Tree 004. CUDA 3 is not us. We're the rides too. All right, we're going to have a weather update changeover. It's eight minutes. Here we go. And like, and that's another thing. Like this RVA at Coastal here, we're not making money on a certain route. You think I'm going to keep that route? We kept this route open for for two years, and then I said I'm done. And we actually wiped the whole trip. So, 
this this airplane is going to make money. It's an 800. It's going to LaGuardia. It's just super competitive. So you're not going to make money at. Look at Spirit, right? Spirit's charging like 98 bucks. You're not making money in LaGuardia just to touch down at that airport. It costs like four thousand dollars just to land. That's not fuel costs, air, you know, airport fees, fist fees, departure fees, gate fees, baggage fees. It's a crap ton of money operating out of LaGuardia, plus the delays. Holy smokes. So we're putting an 800 on the route, uh, MCO to or uh, to LaGuardia. We're going to pack it, right? It's going, almost going to be a full flight, just like this flight is going to be it's pretty much full now. We're a few passengers short, but um, we're like 94% full here. All right, weather. I gotta get the weather. Three one zero seven. No, oh, shoot. Are they landing northbound? Three to send me the rides to arrival. Orlando land south. Yeah, Orlando right. altimeter trees are there one. Okay, to send the rides to. Understand landing south. Riptide three. Um, what we'll do is ten statute miles visibility. It's the seven knot tailwind right now. They're still they're landing now northbound. They might change. Give us a runway change. We'll see what happens. How's that? A few clouds at 65. Miami, Sarah, maintain. Fly level 220 on fire shortly. Fly level 220 over 17. Altimeter is 3003. All right. Sorry, folks. This is Things are happening quick. So I'm just going to go to the rides, too. Um, it's got wampum. We're going to go ahead and descend down to 8,000. I'm going to go ahead and check this down to 8,000 feet here. Ink careers can't find it, can't see the pilot app. Just um, if you go to, it's not a pilot app. Just say contact us. See, that's what I'm gonna have to clarify. It's our webmaster did it, and I've gotta I've gotta redo it. So just like um, just go to contact us, and then it'll be like a contact form. Just put your stuff in there, uh, and then say, hey, this is Alex the pilot, and then I'll send you, I'll send you um, our letter. So I will, you know what, while we're waiting for the descent, hang on, let me uh, call him up here. Miami Center, Riptide 3. Go ahead, sir. Q confirm we got winds out of the north seven knots now. Yeah, I can confirm that's what the uh, local controller in Orlando told me, so I have to kind of go by what they tell me. All right, we're still, they're still landing south. That's what they say. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. I'm expecting a, no oh, I'm expecting a north arrival. Visual approach runway 10 left. Roger, visual for 10 left, uh, Delta 2145. I don't know what runway we're going to get. No idea. I'd rather land north just because it'll save us a crap ton of time. American 618, stay airspeed. Um, right now I'm using one, Active one, Sky, one. so let's see how it works. American 618. I don't know. Right now, it's great. I mean, it's clear. Little tree five, I'm expecting a few clouds at 6,500. So we'll see how that goes. Let me um, pull up the website really quick here. FlyCoastalAirways.com. I'm going to show it up here on the channel for you. Okay, so this is our website. If you go to, you know, you got careers, just click contact. And then... Just fill it out right there. Your name, email address, and message. I mean, that's the issue. It's not very clear, is it? So I've got to redo this. Um, I've got to put pilot opportunities and then contact us. So I'll make one for, like, pilot ops, and then I'll keep it open. How's that? So that's all you got to do is just the contact, and then your name, email address, and then a message, and you're done. You just got to say, you know, this is Alex, the pilot. Fly Leo, this is Fly Leo, 190, Omega 2-8. Dan the man, what's up man? He says, what are your thoughts? Okay, Active Sky. Dan, it's, I don't know. I mean, let's see how we do. Uh, I'm testing it out just like you are today. So, we'll see. I expect to see some few clouds coming up. And um, I expect to see that. Um, we're expecting few clouds, 6,500. 
All right, we're on top of the scent, folks. So I'll let the flight attendants know. Ladies and gentlemen, we have started our descent, and we are in the area. American 618 traffic. Probably on the ground here in about 20 minutes. One, one mile, same direction, descending through flight. Alex says, there you go, so sir. Just put mine in. Thank you. Sweet. Okay. All right, just put in the application for you. How's MCC? Is that a requirement? American 618, you can resume flight, or is that for something like FCOM factor. or CRM? As in training. What's the uh, MCC? We've got uh, a light. Oh, shoot. This is going to be an off sked descent. Hang on. I didn't adjust it. I didn't do it. So, when you have this, it's no big deal. You know, you just leave it, clear it. Got it. I got to listen. Hang on. Maybe I got 28 quarter right Baron. Okay, seatbelt's coming on. I also put mine in. Good. All right, just put in the application. So help me out on MCC. I don't know what MCC is. Help me out. <laughs> so Avianca's direct bearing. We're on the way down right now. We're going to 6,000 feet. Ah, shoot, i got to change that to 6,000. Multi-crew. Oh, it's... It's not a requirement. Um, it's not a requirement. No audio, so the uh, multi-crew is just something fun if you wanted to do. We do have a multi-crew set up in our, with you, three, seven, in our um, op specs. So, so you could fly it if you wanted to. It's buggy though. So that's kind of why we, it's just a mess sometimes. Auto break two, okay, I'm gonna go throw in the uh, weather. VTP no coming up. From Avianca 28 Done. break, Spirit Wings 972, Miami Center, hello. Orlando is reporting. Okay, let me get the weather here from Orlando. Yeah, it's not a requirement, buddy. So hopefully that helps you. 1 7 right, maybe. I don't know what they're going to give us. They might give Good us 1 7 left. Orlando approach 124.8. 124 8, we'll see you. 124 decimal. Eight. Avianca 28, any audio from you now? Confirm direct Baron, type it if you have to, please. 124.8 coming up. Nothing like the first flight of the day where you're going. Let me call them up. 124.8, I've got that in there. We are looking at uh, who? Orlando Approach. Orlando Approach, Riptide 3 on the rides to arrival, 18,000. Riptide 3, Orlando approach, the Orlando altimeter 3003. Expect the ILS approach, runway 35 right, information delta is current. Hey, expect the ILS 35 right now. Thank you for Riptide 3. All right, 35 right, perfect. That's going to pull us right into the dang airport. So that puts a smile on this guy's face. You know why? Because it's less fuel. Less fuel. 35 right, he said, right? 35 right? You verify. Can you say 35 right? Riptide 3, a firm. we just switched operations about five minutes ago. We're now north yeah. low. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Uh, Rip 3, 5 right, we'll expect it. Okay, 3, 5 right is way out in BFE, Idaho. Um, <laughs> it's way out in the sticks, and that's and that's fine. <laughs> um, we could request a 3, 6 right, but because it's close to our air side. We're going to be air side 1 today, so if we could get 3, 6 right, it's better operationally. But sometimes... Or three six right. What do you guys want to do? You tell me. Do you want to do that? I'm going to change a, a few things. I'm going to come over here, click arrival. We're going to go ahead and three five right right now. Um, three five right. I know the, uh, it's not available for the runway. I get it. So I understand airplane. It doesn't like that. So. Um, oh, shut up. What do you want? Now they're calling me. Okay, on the descent, folks. Altimeter's a bug. Set cross-checked. V-ref and V-target. I'm going to go ahead and set that up right now. Um, landing weight coming in right here. Now you can see there's just a there's a lot going on right now. So let's go ahead and flip this over there. We're going to go over there to performance. Landing in route. 
You can see Orlando. We're going to go 3-5 right. I'm going to try to get 3-6 if I can get it, which would be awesome. I don't know if I can. Um, import the details. 146 is good. We're going to go reversers, all operative, auto break on two. Do you guys want to go and taxi along? This will be a long taxi. You could see this right here. Landing distance required 7,800. We're landing at 89.99. It's 9,000 feet. So uh, landing weight was what, 146,000? Give or take. Calculate. Coming back in. What are you doing, airplane? Okay. Uh, let me go back to the rides, too, and see what we got. I expect um, Hannah. Yeah, Hannah's at 6,000. Dang it. I need to get down. I need to get down quick. So hang on just a minute. Hands? Is it hands? No, it's Hannah. H A. Hannah. H A N N. H A N. It's H A H. Sorry. H A H N A. Mm. I'm going to blow this thing out. Three at Hannah. Cleared ILS approach. Runway 35 right. Okay, Aunt Hana cleared for the ILS 35. Oh, excuse me, 36. Hold on, let me look. Uh, Riptide 35 right. Uh, ILS 35 right. Roger, 35 right for uh, Riptide 3. Okay, Hana 6000. Shut up, thing. Okay, what I'm going to do is take over. Just going to go vertical speed. We're going to drop this thing down. We're going to get going quick, okay? About 3,400 feet a minute until I can get this programmed. I'm going to go direct to HANA right now, okay? I'm going to throw it 6,000. We're going to do some old school aviating. Now, you can see at 34, we're still not going to make it. I'm going to still drop it, come down to 3.6, 3.5 right. It's kind of caught me. I knew I said they could have a change for us, and sure enough, we got that curveball thrown. It's okay, we've got uh, Hannah, and then we're going to go cruise. So, brakes up. We'll slow the aircraft down. And I'm looking for 3-6. What are we doing? 3-5 right. 3-5 right ILS coming in. Hughes. Hughes. After Hana Hughes, throw it in there. I gotta slow it down. All right, I gotta slow it down. I gotta slow it down. I'm going way too fast. Let's go ahead and slow that down. Brakes are out. We gotta slow the aircraft down. There we go. Hughes need to be at 1,600 feet. We are not gonna make that. I know. I blew the speed. <laughs> I'm blowing the speed, so I gotta slow down to uh, 250. That's what we're doing. So we'll capture two, 250, and we'll go from there. Well, we're just high because we're expecting south, the south runway. Okay. Shoots on. We're going to need them, folks. we got a lot of altitude, and we got to lose it. A couple things we could do. I could blow the gear here in a minute, which I might. we got to get slow. And now we're going to come down. I'm going to throw the gear out. I know what you're saying. Right now? Yes, right now. I'll show you why. I don't think we're going to make... We don't have enough... Got to lose a lot of altitude and not a lot of time to lose it. So you can see we're high and we're fast. Here comes the gear. Speed's coming down. Uh, flight level 3, 138, descending to 110. Gear down. Checklist. Altimeter's bug set, cross check, VREF, V target. I'm going to go flaps 30 in this one. Set Copy checked. Approach, I see the airport. Uh, I got Orlando a visual. Altimeter 3003. Expect the ILS approach to runway 35 right. Information Delta is current. OK, 
Okay, on the idle. Three, five, right, formation delta, Aviaca right? 2-8. United 713, uh, turn left heading 100, immediately rejoin the arrival. Uh, we are on the arrival, United 713. 4,000. United 713, uh, you were Come on, on baby. which arrival, sir? Uh, we were given to get out. Uh, yes, so I show you flying about a heading 270 right now. Might have to do a 360. Previously, I'm not sure what... Come on, airplane. What waypoint are you headed to? Well, we just passed the uh, final uh, final fix for that approach, and then uh, we're supposed to get right erected from here. Yeah, United 713, yes, uh, but you're on the get out with the south transition. Right, so you went off on radar vectors. You're on the right arrival, but you used the wrong transition. So now you're just flying off into nowhere. You should have been flying for a longer time on the arrival and then receive radar vectors later. So I need you to turn right, heading 090, to rejoin the arrival. Ah, uh, no way. All right, I do it's unstable. Only for the, uh, one seven and the it's one unstable. So I don't like it. The three five. I don't like it. If we could uh, get it. I disagree Flat. with that, Five. but either way, I need you to turn Let's see if we can get it down. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're turning right, 090, not 713. Let me call him up. Orlando Approach, Riptide 3. Is there any way we can go uh, right 360? Riptide 3, uh, let's just execute a missed approach here. I'll spin you around. Uh, turn right heading 090, climb maintain 3000. 090, 3000. All right, zero nine or zero three thousand. I turned way too fast on that. Gear up. Just too much altitude to lose, and not enough time. So I'm gonna get everything ready to go again. Speed's coming up, and we could do a visual, by the way. Three Roger, expect a visual approach one way three five right. Okay, we expect a visual three five right. Okay, coming up on the speed. Once I get the speed up, we'll get the flaps in. Okay, I'm gonna restore the autopilot here just a minute. Let me get the airplane ready to go. Spirit wing sixty seventy nine, fly heading one Toga. nine zero, descending main eight thousand. Riptide 3, turn right heading 180. Right turn 180, Riptide 3. United 713, traffic 12 o'clock, 10 miles. It's a Spirit Wings A320 southbound. Oh, yeah, we have traffic at 713. Okay, here we go. 3,180 on the speed. Roger, uh, I'm going to seek with GN behind him. Looks like he's having the same problem with the flow switch off the get out. Yeah, um, it was so tough. for now, just maintain heading zero nine zero, and then I'll one eight zero on the heading. Roger, we'll maintain zero nine zero. Okay, that's heading that's select one eight zero. Altitude command on. Altitude hold at three thousand. There we go. Speed check, and auto throttle is on. Just gonna get it all. We got flaps one. That's fine. One eight zero on the heading. 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 All right. What are you doing, airplane? There we go. All right. It's descending. Don't want to descend. So I'm going to go vertical speed, and we'll climb. There we go. Give me a little bit of altitude. There we go. All right, good. We're stable. Good to go. Riptide 3. Coming back on speed. Uh, turn right heading 270. Right turn 270. Riptide 3. 270 Riptide on the head. Riptide 3 is going to maintain 2,000. Down to 2,000. Riptide 3. Down 2,000. Here we go. 2,000 coming up. Speed's 189. Got to slow it down now. Looks like we're off. That's fine. We'll keep it off. Three, the field is uh, roughly at your 3 o'clock in one zero miles reported site. And we got the field in sight. Riptide 3. Riptide 3, clear the visual approach one way 35 right. Clear the visual 35 right. Riptide 3. United 713, fly heading 200, descend and maintain 6000. All right, right, 200, 6000, United 713. Spirit Wing 1679, descend and maintain 4000. Descend and maintain 4000, Spirit Wing 1679. All right, down to 16.
Okay, gear down, here we go. Flap five. Riptide three, contact tower, 118.45. Son of a... 118.45. 118.45, shoot. Oh, 118.45. I gotta fly a freaking airplane. I don't have time for. Remember that frequency? 11845 speeds. Good. 11845. Shoot. <laughs> Alright, I'm off. Here we go. Gear down. Coming down. There we go. Alright, speed's coming in. Orlando Tower, Riptide 3 on final, 3-5 uh, right. Riptide 3, Orlando Tower, good evening. Wind 31017 on a 3-5 right, clear to land. Cover the winds, 3-5 light, clear to land, Riptide 3, flat 15. 7776 Alpha, contact Orlando, departure, 124.8, have complaint. Contact <sighs> Orlando, departure, 124.8, November 776 Alpha. Okay, flap 30. Traffic. Traffic. Off scale. No factor. A okay, flap 40. Landing check coming in. Speed brake is armed. Okay, speed brake armed. Looking good on speed. And now it's just a normal landing. Okay, auto brake 2. Gear down 3. Green flap set 30. Flaps 30, that's fine, and we've got armed. Landing check is complete. That was exciting. <laughs> Waste of 10 minutes. All that time I was going to save landing north. myself from that one. How bad was that? It's like a hundred. United 321 heavy R nav go home. Okay, we're getting it off Juliet. Welcome to Orlando folks. That was fun. You know, like, um, three, welcome to Orlando. Say parking. Air side one. Riptide three, right. Taxi air side one, via Juliet. A whole short runway three, five left. Okay, uh, air side one via Juliet will hold short one seven, oh, excuse me, one seven right. All right, folks. <laughs> Woo! Now I'm going to show you this long taxiway. Let's see this. I guess technically it's Juliet Lima Kilo. Juliet uh, for the three. Wow. Okay, we got Juliet Lima Kilo. And we'll hold short uh, on uh, 17 right. Okay, flaps, spoilers, flaps coming up. Okay, I gotta shut stuff off. Okay, we're gonna make a left turn on a kilo. Uh, taxi light is on, wing lights off. A lot going on, folks. This was, that was, um, the reason we got in a pickle, first of all, the arrival, I'm gonna slow down a little bit here before they take that turn. The arrival, um, was not for that runway. And, um, it was just a, it was just ugly, just a dorked up approach and dorked up. I wasn't ahead. <laughs> I was behind. It's all right. Sometimes that happens, right? So, Lewis, how are you, buddy? He says it seems that the altimeter is not correct. Is it not? No, it's not. 
Three zero zero three. I set that. I don't know what happened. What do you got for the altimeter? I just want to make sure it's not active sky. Is I hit the B key and it might have just thrown it to uh, two nine nine two. I don't know. Very well, could have done that, or could have been me and my stupidity as well. I don't know. Okay, we got to go down Kilo. This is a long taxi, folks, so hang in there. All right, here we go. We've got uh, Kilo. We got to hold short of right here. This is a one seven right, and I wanted it. Um, you know, I wanted a four twenty one R nav. I did. I did want to fly here because I wanted to see how the scenery is. I haven't flown on the all the way out there yet on that runway. Okay, strobes should be off. Go. I'm gonna hold short right here. One seven right. We'll stop. We're holding short one seven right. Oh. Okay, while they do that, I can wait. I'm just going to turn the stuff off. Taxi's on. That is off. That is off. We're good. And and Orlando ground. Rip, riptide 3. We'll hold it short. 1-7, right? Riptide 3, Roger. Traffic departing runway 3 Thank you. Oh, shoot. All right. There's a traffic right there. <laughs> it doesn't look like he's departing. He's landing. Wow, that's pretty. Get a shot of that right there. Sean, what's up, buddy? 340 feet a minute. Nice. Alex, unstable approach going around or dive and drop. Yeah, I tried. Just didn't work. I think at the end of the day, I made the right decision. You know, you just got to, whatever, eat crow. <laughs> That's fine. I'll take my licks. It's better than dorking up a landing and really screwing it up. It's unstable. You just got to. I followed proper coastal protocol. I went around. It's not stable by 1,000 feet. Get out. Time three, okay. cross runway. Three, five, left. Aim taxi. Golf, Juliet, air one. All right, we'll cross uh, one seven right, three five left, and we'll go via Gulf Juliet to Airside One. Thanks. I wish I had a dispatcher because the dispatcher right now would be getting my next briefing ready to go. Somebody want to get look at Laguardia weather while I taxi in? That would be helpful. Boy, this scenery is awesome. This this scenery is uh, taxi to gate. It's phenomenal. I know it was kind of one of those guys where I was, I was talking to Sean. I was like, why would we ever get, a, you know, a Sobo did it. Why would we get another one? And this is so much better than a Sobo. Hey, guys, you're on the tower. It just is. Yeah, you know... It's just it's just better to go around, and it's okay. I mean, you know, again, we're doing a proving flight, so it's one hour. We're still on time, folks, which is good. Now, we can make some time up on the ground. I could taxi like I stole it, which I'm going to do. I'm going to use, I'm going to obviously keep both engines running, and the gate we're going to be in is... Um, Normally, our gate's kind of tucked in here. I don't think it could... We'll see if we can't get a 737-800 in there, but... We're going to find out. <laughs> going to climb this hill. All right, Sean, what do we got? Me, Tars, at 180 at 810 miles, overcast at 1300. That 1300 overcast is going to burn us. That's the one that's going to bother me. Okay, folks, airside one. We're looking at gate 11. It might be gate 13 with this 800. We'll see. 
And by the way, there's a uh, CRJ that's taking off from Miami that's going to fly here in 15 minutes. So they're taking off at 8. 30. Well, it's about a, it's about a little longer than that. All right, APU's coming on. Okay, I gotta slow down here. This is where it gets bumpy. I don't want to do a wheelie up here. <laughs> That's all I need. I'll be on to the Orlando State Parking. Whoa, where's a car? Twenty eight, a runway twenty five, right clear. Probably on two eight. Where are you parking this evening? Are you parking at the south terminal? Where are we gonna go? Wait, say again. For Orlando, twenty eight. Where's an alternate? Somebody give me an alternate in uh, Orlando here. All right, here's air side one. We're gonna go um, gate. Ah, shoot. We might have to go gate 13, folks. We'll see. Orlando Tower, Skyway 1629, looking for high front clearance. Gate, uh, what did I say? 13? Skyway 1629, Orlando Tower, clearance on request. Standby number one. Ah, crap. Okay, APU is on the line. That's on the bus. I'm going to go ahead and throw down number two here shortly. Clear wing, 355, contact land or departure, 128, correction, 124.8. Got an aircraft on that gate right now. Let's shut down number two. That helps the ground staff. I'm going to kick that airplane off that gate. I got 28. Because our CRJ is on gate 11. I don't know if we can uh, take that gate. It might be a little bit tight. It's tight for a CRJ. Um... Yeah, we got a pretty big wingspan coming eight, in here. Taxi Air Fat 2 via November, Juliet, Lima, Kilo. Hold short, runway 35 left. Alright, I'm going to give you an idea please, here. Please say the gate again, please. Gate is at your discretion. Taxi by November, Juliet, yeah, Lima, it's, Kilo. It's going to be gate 13. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I can't. I can't put it in there. So it's gonna be gate 13. See, this is gonna be. There's our gate. Like the CRJ has to come in and just kind of jam it in there. So this is gate 13. Where are you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, gate uh, discretion via November Lima Juliet Kilo. I gotta wait for a flipping gate. Hang on. I think that's 28. I'm going to kick him off. Gate 13. Roger. So and looks like this. Yes, I do. Line. Goodbye. This one, no. Who is it? It's going to be at Lance. 79, Orlando Tower. Good evening. 131017. Here we go. Ah, shoot. I got on one engine. United 713. Welcome to Orlando. Taxi. Alex says, what's my experience in real world aviation? Well, I got my license, my pilot's license, since 98. Um, went to Embry-Riddle, graduated at Embry-Riddle, got my ratings, and then um, went to the aviation safety side of the house. So NTSB, I started my career with them. I was a, you know, did that my first year of uh, experience with the NTSB as a and then sky was 16, 29, you know, grip procedure I have in your brakes on flight plan. and then I went to uh, the safety and side of the house brakes procedure. coming on Do you have an outdated, uh, and I've been in safety for a long time outdated. okay that's on um, that's off in the gate 751 folks yeah it might be outdated I was having issues the other day with it too Got to get that puppy updated, man. All right, I'm going to keep your, um, I'm going to modify your departure procedure slightly. I'm okay, we're going to go upstairs. Of, uh, we're going to do a few things, right, okay? Fine. We're going to come up, seatbelt signs uh, coming on. off. Right, Sky with 16, One, two, clear. three. We're going to get on the um, ground power. 
for an idle section. And then I was uh, I was angle of attack. I worked as their uh, a seven three instructor. So I did that for a bit. Max off. Uh, and collision lane is off. So if you guys know, like, um, I gotta shut this off for a minute. If you guys know, um, if you know flight chops, I don't know if you ever follow flight chops, Steve. If you look up 737 flight chops, I was I was his instructor on that, where he flew a, we flew a level D 200. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was really fun. That was a fun airplane. Okay, in the gate. Here we go. Shutting that down. Let's get the the um, gate in there and we will get her going here we're going to request deboarding let's go outside you can see it is a beautiful morning here in Orlando folks we're going to do a turn and we're going right to LaGuardia yeah so it's the safety side bud so you know my real experience is, is in that kind of stuff. Crash investigation, my minors and human factors. Um, big on that, obviously. That's a big deal for me. Is um, is be safe at everything you do. Mitigate. Obviously, it was way behind today. So it wasn't a really good demonstration of of that. I was just behind with that, the you know, different um, request ground power. Yes, I want the ground power. Dang it. I want to save gas. So ground power is coming on the airplane. It is 7:53. So we're about um, we're about three minutes over, but that's okay. We'll be on time on the push. We'll gain it on the ground here, and I am going to call our ground crew. Go ahead. Hi, Captain. Ship, You're a five by five. Let's get him off the airplane Microphone for me. Five out of five. Roger. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Chocks are set. Ground power's on. We're going to go ahead and connect the ground power now. Thank you. Ground power's on. APU's coming off. That's going to help us eliminate fuel so we don't need to burn all that gas. I'm going to request air conditioning cart because we're going to be sitting here for about 35 minutes and then we're going to do a turn head to LaGuardia, which I'm excited for. I want to see LaGuardia. It should be a better flight. Hopefully, I'm a little more ahead of the game than I was coming in it's just a fast flight i was not thinking of i was kind of distracted right not thinking of um i got to lose a lot of altitude <laughs> it happens i guess you get you get those junkers um no i flew the level d with at at delta um Delta Museum, look look up that video. Go Flight Shop 737, and I was I was Steve's instructor in the 73. So they have a 200 there, and he booked it for eight hours. I flew, I was his instructor for what we did about three four hours of that in that shoot, and then I went to Delta side of the house right after that, and I worked with Delta and corporate doing training. So it was fun, just doing some like multimedia stuff. For their for their training protocols, it was pretty cool. Um, it was they were just kind of getting into like, hey, how are we going to train pilots in between, you know, their CQ? How are we going to get pilots like refreshed and and um, reviewed? And that's what we that's what they said. We were like, well, we can do it in video, and that's kind of how that happened. It's pretty cool. They went with a um, we didn't get the contract at the end of the day. We went with a different company, but still, that that kind of set the ball rolling for their for their program, which was nice. It's nice. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and book. I gotta get paid for the flight, so what I'm gonna do is come up here and click file flight, and I'm gonna go ahead and say file the flight. I want to be paid. So we got a bad flight rating on this one, folks. It's gonna be ugly. All right, get off my airplane. Clear to the board. Leave. All right. Um, that's gone. And now what I'll do is... What's up, Scott? Happy Friday, everyone. Hope life is treating you well. It is. Oh, so respect Tim's and risk. Yep. Threat error management is a big deal. Do you guys use ACARS? Nice. We Yes, we do use ACARS. We have that. Um, let's talk about our next flight. So I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time yapping i want to get going on this really quick so let me 
pull this up. We'll get this going. Let's take a look at our flights. I'll, I'll show you the internal that we're going to do, and then we'll kind of roll in and be our own dispatcher right now. So let me pull it up here. All right, this is our internal. We call this the intranet at Coastal Airways. Uh, I'm going to go flights, and we'll take a look at my bids. And this is what I've got bidded. Well, actually, i got to go flight three. i got to bid this thing. So flight three, we're going MCO to LaGuardia. That's our next flight. I will do that here. We're going to go ahead and bid that. We are going to book the 800. I don't think I set the 800 up. Shouldn't give you all these options. We're going to do Utah 1, book the aircraft, and okay. And then what we'll do is come to my bids, and you can see what I've got loaded in here. We've got PSP to Salt Lake. That is, that's a uh, shark bait 5221. That's our CRJ proving flight I'm doing. So this one is this one right here. We'll click create a Simbri flight plan. And I got to write these numbers down while we pull this up to see how many passengers we got. A little less than I anticipated. 167 so I mean not too bad I guess it's pretty good we'll still I think we'll make a little bit of money on this I hope all right flight three we're going from MCO to LaGuardia departure time is 835 local what time is it right now it's 751 so yeah I think we'll be have enough time Two hours and 30 minutes, it's booked. We'll see how that goes. We got 167. I'm writing all this down, by the way. Bag weight coming in, 53.44. Now, the cargo weight is definitely optional. I, they're saying 7,455. I don't think that's going to happen with the with the amount of bags we got to put on and we got to get an alternate. I don't I don't think. I think I'm going to have to kick some cargo off of the aircraft. So we'll just keep it on there now. I just leave this blank and click Create Sim Brief. And then we're going to go in here and edit and as we do that, let's go ahead and pull in aviation weather and let's take a look at what we've got. So here in the forecast, we're looking at products. Let's go into prog charts. And we've got this low pressure kind of camped off of uh, Pennsylvania area. And that's going to kind of cause havoc. It stalled, it looked like. So that might dump some, uh, some stuff onto New York. Let me look on the weather app in terms of Navigraph. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the weather radar. And we're going to get that going. Looks, It doesn't look too bad. I don't see any weather in terms of rain. You know, all that stuff's up in um, Cleveland. And it's, it's just it's isolated, if anything. Scattered showers. So just low stuff we're going to have to deal with, I'm sure. And uh, let's take a look at the TAF report. Just really quick while we're here, because that's going to dictate what we do. All right, we're looking at what? It's 0145. I anticipate 02, 15, 3, 4. We're land about 0400, give or take. 0430. So here and here. Broken at 8, overcast at 18. 800 feet is where I'm concerned. I get, I'm not, we'll get in, but overcast at 7. How are we doing on there overcast at 15 100 it's good just low stuff not, no, nothing we can't handle um we will need an alternate so we'll plan on an alternate we'll probably see what we can do at jfk jfk has got a lot of runways so jfk is reporting three miles overcast at six i'm sure this whole area is going to be like that um take a look at providence what does Providence have to say at that time frame right there? Overcast at 4,000. Now, Providence would be a good option. 050-1006. We would only have to do one, and then it drops at 0,900. Fine, right? We're good. So let's do Providence. It's overcast. At, we service Providence. That's why. We don't service JFK. So the only problem with going to Providence is we got to get them over to, to New York somehow. Um we could try Islip, get them close, but I have a feeling that Islip's going to be in the same boat. Broken at 8. Yeah, it's kind of the same crap we've got going on, right? So we've got light showers, broken at 6. Providence is the way. That is going to be our alternate into the airport. Now, what happened? i got to go to edit. So we're going to go edit. 
And then, Scott, I hope you're well, bud. So we've got uh, LaGuardia. We are going to go to Providence as an alternate. We can get away with that. That's going to help us with a little bit of fuel. I'm going to come in here, and we're going to set Utah 1. We're going to dump up the cost index. It's at 20 right now. We could push 30. Um, kind of help us. I think we're going to be on time. I don't want to really go to 20 if I don't have to. Um, you know what? Let's go 20 because we're going to add a lot of gas on this one. All right. Uh, let's see. 160 passengers, 2 hours and 50 minutes on the blocks. Freight is 7,500. I don't think that's going to be such a good idea. So I'm going to drop the freight down about 4,500. So I'd have to call dispatch, obviously. Um, we've got a two. What are we doing? Anything over two hours, we're going to add contingency. We're going to go 35 minutes. If it goes to four hours, it goes to 45 minutes. So we've got 35 minutes contingency plus the 45 minutes plus um, a little bit of weather fuel. So this is going to be a little bit of pad that I want. And I'm going to do a minutes and I'm going to give myself about 20 minutes of extra pad just in case. Um, all right, all that's good to go. I like the route. Let's take a look at the routing here. We can use our Navigraph features, which is really nice. You can see the weather radar threw up the whole entire routing. It's kind of a small screen here because I have it kind of, everything is condensed so you guys can see this. Um, doesn't look too bad. Turbulence might be a, bit, a little bit bumpy. I'm looking at the turbulent plots right now on my Navigraph app um, up to three four zero shouldn't be too bad just in the Carolinas we might get a little bit but that's about it so that's pretty good um, let's see if we could cut the it's way out um, this might be a little quicker for us we'll see I don't think it will be so what's so cool about this feature is you could go c c calculate and compare. So I'm going to calculate and compare. And you can see, look at the payload. Error. Payload's too high. That's what it's telling me. So we're going to close that down. We're going to come on up and we're going to kill some freight. Okay. So let's take some freight off. Maybe we could go 800 pounds. Let's see how that does. And then let's calculate and compare it. Okay, so that's better with that freight. Okay, so calculate and compare. Then we're going to close and go to what they originally had, which is the Fate 3 Viap uh, Q87 Hertz and Proud, pretty much straight up. Um, and then we're going to calculate and compare. We're going to see which one's better. Okay, so you could see this trip fuel on this one, the current one, it's better for us, all right? It's Fate 3. Viap Q87, it is better. 26,000 versus 26,8. So, what did I say? 26,000 versus 20, 20, 26,000. We're going to save money on this route. So, that's the one I want. So, the one we have in is the one we're going to fly, okay? So, we're going to file that. We're going to kick in um, 800 pounds of freight. So, I know that. Take a freight. Where am I? I need to throw in our freight. And there it is. Cargo is 800. Remember, I said when we were go when we were calculating before. I'm like, that might change. And this is why you do this is because we can't take that much freight with that much people, that much fuel. It's just not going to work. All right, I'm good with this. This looks good. We'll click generate the flight. Thank you very much. Goodbye. It's going to populate, and I'm going to look at PDF. And we're going to write some numbers down. How's that? I'm just going to... We will do this here in a minute. I just want to get this going so I can get all this done. Payload is 37.9. Zero fuel weight coming in at uh, 131.1. 1, 1, okay. We have a takeoff weight at 156.6. Trim, I don't know yet. We're looking at landing weight estimating 143.8. That's perfect. Even if we're over even a thousand pounds, we're still in, within range of maximum landing. And we're in MCO. Aircraft is 805. Charlie Sierra. Date is what? What's the date? 19? 419? 24? 
And minimum fuel, we need to take uh, 25.6. Maximum fuel, we're taking 26.1. And we're going to take 26.1. Jet A, we're in gate uh, 13. And then we're going to do the rest. I'm going to download this, save that, and then I'm going to go ahead and dump it into my um, drive. And then I'll put it in my iPad. And that's kind of how I do it. But you can see this stuff takes a while. <laughs> to get everything done and do it right and it just takes a while folks before we go again i am going to take uh, just a, a a quick lav break i'll run a lav hit the restroom come back and we'll get a quick turn out of here and we'll go um where are you coastal airways that's done we've got um releases New airports, we are Miami 1 Bravo, or 1 Charlie, Miami 1 Charlie, I believe, yeah, AM shift, upload the file, gotta go to the downloads, documents, Where did I put it? Oh, crap. I gotta see where it put where it put the um, file. So when I hit downloads, where does it put it? I think it's puts it in e storage coastal releases. I got it. We're doing what? Where are we? We're going to LaGuardia. <laughs> And we are MCO to LaGuardia 419. That's the one I want. Okay. Paperworks is loaded and ready to go. One thing we got to do is I got to click download the new OFP and close. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click file the flight plan on VATSIM. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to disconnect from VATSIM right now because I got to reconnect. So we'll get that done, folks. What graphics card do you use, Cap Diamond, Diamond Mike? I have a 4090 on board. I just I upgraded about, um, what, folks? What do you think? Two months ago, maybe? Probably coastalairways.com. Ugh. Okay. And file the flight plan. Okay, folks, here we go. We're good. We got our paperwork. We're ready to go. Everything is good. I'm going to go ahead and connect, and then we're going to turn this thing. I'm going to give myself a few minutes on the clock, okay, just because I think that's fair because I was just sitting there with, dis, you know, dispatch would li literally hand me a package, you know, a packet, and say, here you go. So I'm going to play that game. We came in at 55, so I'm going to give us some time because I need to hit the restroom, run to the, run to, uh, the bathroom and stuff like that. All right. On the overhead, one thing I am going to do quick is a quick align. So I'm going to come over here, align, throw it to nav, go right on back down. Come over here to the reference. We're going to go kilo MCO. Dump it over the top there, and we're at gate uh, 13. Lucky 13. Not in the database. Of course you're not. That's fine. We're to the last position, or you can go to the next page, and you can pick one of these. IRS left and right, very close to each other. Now, if you didn't know what to do, you're saying... What do I do? You go to your Navigraph app. Yeah, shoot. I'm like, ah, go to the app, do this. I'll show you. <laughs> click this, go over to here. We're going to go ahead and click uh, that. And we're going to go to Arrival. As you can see, it says MCO. Go to the airport here. And you can see this parking gate coordinates, 1 and 3 airside. That's the one we want. And I'm just going to go like this, and we're looking at gate 13. So you can see gate 13 right there. Bring it on down here. And now we're on airside 1, gate 13. We should have north 2826.1 close through west 81, 18.9. That's the one I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and flip that to IRS right, and I'm going to bring it down here. Okay. And then we're going to go in it, ref, coming in, drop it in there, and that we're done. It's a quick alignment. It's pretty much done already. And now the aircraft's aligned. While I hit the restroom, we're going to go ahead and call for catering. Catering services on its way. Uh, who do I want? 
I want catering, whatever. And then I've got to do some paperwork, obviously. It's paperwork time. Um, we're in at um, a fuel slip. If you look, this is kind of the paperwork we give our pilots. So uh, I'm just going to dial this in here. 37, shoot, 3710. And then tank two is 3870. Nothing in the center. There we go. Plan fuel, we're going to 8.6, 8.6. And then that's it. We'll get the center tank pumped up as well. And I think we got everything done. Got a 4060. It's a nice card. 4090 is nice too. I mean, any, the four, even the 3090 is really nice. It's really nice. So <laughs> no problem. 8.62. We got that. What's that? 17.2. What are we putting in? 26.1. We should have about 8.9 in the center. Which gives us 26.1. All right, folks. I'm going to go ahead and log on to VATSIM again. And um, it is 7.59. I'm going to go ahead and clear the clock. And we need to be pushing back out of here at 8.35. So we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to get SLC started. And hopefully it doesn't screw up anymore. Because it screwed us up. At least I could start getting them boarded and getting the fuel on. So, how's that? Looks like you did not finish. Would you like to restore it? No, I don't want to restore it. Don't do that. Okay, another thing we can do is Active Sky. And let's go over to Briefing. We can go Flight Plan, and I'm going to go ahead and click. I want to refresh this Flight Plan. So, um, what I'm going to do is come up here and click this and this we are going to do this is really a nice feature if you don't know uh where the heck are you pmdg pmdg wind up link and i'm just going to select all of those and just dump them in there all right and that that mm -hmm. did that um sim brief loading there we go that was awesome it just dumped it in there so now um, Active Sky knows. Good to go. All right. One more thing. I'm just trying to get this ready to go, folks, so I can get SLC started and I can run out. There's a lot to do. And the problem is there's not a lot of time to do it in, right? So this is 8. So what time was this? 10.44. That's 11 o'clock. So 11. We need to be pushing at 11.35. So I'm just setting my my timings and all that good stuff all right we're done we've got that your flight leaves tomorrow no it doesn't what are you talking about it's 1201 i'm sorry so we need to leave at 1235 there you go in flight services coming in come on you rat okay got that got that got that door is already open start the flight dang it she, they're going to call me like 100 times. So um, once catering's done, we're going to get the aircraft going. And yep. you can see we got catering on the aircraft. We'll call the fuel truck, get the fuel truck over here, and we'll be running. Here's the dang intercom. Hello. Good morning, Captain. How are you? Great. Great. I'm really rushing right now. just getting ready for departure, but if you need anything else, just give me a call. Okay, thanks. No Ground problem. crew, go ahead. I gotta get some water. <laughs> I can't make the ship, please. I hear you, man. Sound good. Clear enough. Four out of five. <sighs> Radio check is complete. We'll contact you when we're ready to start loading. We're ready to start loading now, are you kidding me? We gotta get him on board. Okay, um, I'm expecting time-wise boarding right now. <laughs> so I'm going to call, ask for boarding. I got to get fuel. So we got to do a whole bunch of stuff first. Let's get the fueler on the aircraft first. Uh, request refueling, refueling truck coming up. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more time again. Stupid GSA. I'm going to give myself time, folks. This is ridiculous. What the heck happened? All right. 
Don't you think that's fair? I think it's fair. I'm gonna give myself a few minutes of, uh... When do we, when do we clock in, though? We clocked in a 51. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show outside here. Okay, that's off. The fueler should be coming. The fueler gets here, and I'm gonna start boarding. So I'm gonna stand up, stretch my legs, go to the restroom, come back, and, um... We should be ready to go here. Just want to make sure the fuel truck is on the way, because if not, then we're going to have a problem. Fuel truck is on its way. Good. So, when they come, I'm going to click prepare for... Uh, nope, sorry. I'm going to click... Uh, I'm going to click uh, request boarding. So, boarding's coming up. Get the passengers starting to come in. And I'm going to run out and run back. My clock is set. I got the timer on here. I got to grab some food, too. This is why I want two people. Okay, I'll be back. Get out of here. Hang on. Hold on. There we go.
Alright, why is nobody moving here? This is not good. And why are we getting fuel on? We still don't have enough gas. What is going on here? Alright, hold on. Maybe I know what's wrong, folks. We've got to do this. Let's click Reload Sim Brief. And then you got LaGuardia. You see this? CS3 T3 to LaGuardia. We'll do it again. It should go okay. Sim Brief is okay. Now I want it to come in and hit the fuel. Let's go. Okay, we got passengers on board, but I need to get gas on the aircraft. Fuel truck is in position. Great. So I will do it myself. You guys are stupid. I'm going to go to... Um, okay, they're going to do it. Setting plan fuel. Good. All right, now we're going to get some uh, action going here. All right, I was I was gone four minutes. About five minutes. So we got we lost five minutes. GSX. Mike says, GSX, you got to love it. Yeah, I was expecting some, I don't know, help. No, I got nothing. All right, let's go get clearance. We got our clearance, clearance. Um, maybe. Okay, we'll kill that. We'll kill that. Miami. Oh, all right, so we're in progress. Who else is calling me? I know we're going to have negative. Okay, good. We're boarding. Are we getting passengers on the airplane? I do not know. I cannot see. Okay, what I'm going to do is over here, we're going to click this. This is our eight cars. You can see this right here. And I'm gonna, just going to come over here and click Start Flight. And it's going to load it. There we go. The flight is now... ACARS is now running, setting the fuel. Well, set the fuel. You know what? I'll set it for you. How's that? I'm going to go to um, FS Actions. We're going to go to Fuel, and we're going to put in, what did we say, folks? 26.1 on the gas. 26.1. Shoot, that won't let me do that. 26,100 pounds. And I don't like doing it this fast, but I'm going to do it that fast. Go ahead. I think you got gas on the airplane, right? And then we'll set. Hi there. Just to let you know that we started fueling the aircraft. We'll let you know after we completed. You think? Thanks. All right, we've got um, 167. So I'm gonna set all this because you got boarding right now. So we're gonna go. I think they're a little off here. 167. We'll throw that in there. And our forward and aft. This is what we're gonna have to play this game of. We got 53, 44, and 800 pounds. Um, so I might want to split that. If I could split it. What do we got? 53, 44. I kind of like to, to split it a little bit. That's 61, 44 total. Divide that in half. It's about 3,000 each. Maybe put a little more in the front than in the aft. Um, you know, I think we could go 53... 44. You know, we could probably put 53, 44 in the front, 800 in the back, and that'll be good enough. 53, 44, that's all the bags, and then 800 and all the cargo, eight, all the cargo will be in the back here. So there you go. Zero fuel weight, 131.1. That is exactly what I have on my numbers. So we're set there. And um, I got to get my clearance. So let's go ahead and get clearance and. Roger, ground crew. I got gotcha, you, man. What does it say? Emperor waiting for GSX passengers. What are you talking about? It, they're coming. I'm going to have to reset this. Go ahead. Hi, Captain. Just a quick update to let you know that we started loading. We'll send the final load sheet up once we're ready. Thanks. All right, let's go. I don't see you loading. What is going on? Oh my word. Is it is it waiting on this dumb fuel truck? 
Is this fuel? We've got the fuel on the on the airplane. No, it's still fueling up. <laughs> it's probably they're waiting for that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do our walk around, and we'll go. Stand by. Jeez. All right, coming back here. It's just going to be a nice little walk around. Tap probe's looking good. On the other side, we've got the Alpha Vane and the Pedo. Nose gear's looking good. Again, no flat spots or anything like that. We didn't grind it into the ground. Okay, we got Alpha Vane, two Pedos. Good to go. Static, static, looks good. Antennas look good. All right. Engine is looking good. It's got a lot of gas on the aircraft, folks. A lot of fuel. We had to pay for it, too, by the way. This is a lot of money. All right. Static is good. Fairings are on. Flaps look good. Engine, nothing on the ground. No oil. You'll probably see a little bit of oil, but you shouldn't see a ton. Does anybody know what this knob is? Nobody answer me. What's that knob? Does anybody know? Guess. Just guess. What could it be? All right, here we go. Okay, tail's looking good. Beautiful day here in Orlando, folks. Not so nice in LaGuardia. Looking good here. They won't fuel and bags at the same time. And that's stupid. That's another thing I don't like. That they should because that's not how it is in real life. In real life, everybody's on this aircraft. I mean, everybody. They're, everybody all ground is just full bore. It's, it's flat out, get the airplane out on time. So they're throwing bags right now. They're fueling the aircraft. They're doing all those things. Like this. This is our gate, by the way. See that gate 11? You can see how tight that is. That's our CRJ gate. And that that aircraft, I'm changing the times as well. That airplane's going to be here in about an hour. But it goes from here to Myrtle Beach, and then up to Raleigh, and then over to Islip, and then it overnights in Islip. So it goes to New York, but it takes all day to get there. These guys are walking on air here. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's go back up. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. I gotta get in there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump, jump like Mike. Here we go. So far, the active sky is pretty good. I mean, I'll, uh, I can't complain. I don't see. Um, there we go. And there's our uh, cabin, and we are done. Let's jump in the flight deck and let's get this show on the road. All right, ground crew's calling me again. Go ahead. I'm Thank you. Just to let you know, we started loading. <laughs> Thank you. Load the airplane. All right. We're going to go to route. We are going to go MCO to Kilo LGA. Got it. Co route's in there. That has dumped the... Let's get the weather out of Orlando. Weather right now in Orlando is... I'll write it down to... We've got 3107. Visibility is 10 miles in clear skies. By the way, folks, we're, we're on time. I've got the clock running, but we're on time here. 26 over 17. And... 3006. Runway of choice. They're departing 35 left, 36 right, 35 left, 36 left, 36 right. We're probably going to do 35 left if I had it my way. Let's see. 35 left, 36. I want to go 36 right if I can get it. I'm going to request 36 right. It's not a big taxi if I can get that. They might send me all the way around. I don't think they're taking off on. Th they are taking off on 35. So it's either 35 left or 36 right. I don't know which one it's going to be. 
Okay, but we got that done. Runway, I don't know. Let's go ahead and get... They won't even tell me. I'm going to assume it's going to be 3-5 left. I'm just assuming. So, let's go arrivals, departures. We're going to go departures. We're going to throw in 3-5 left. Just if they might, they might surprise us and do the other way. But we'll see. Let's go flights, unload, import, import sim brief. I'm importing, I have an iPad up here that I'm importing, by the way, if you want to know what the heck I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. So, you're like, what are you up to? I'll do the paperwork here in a minute. We've got the Faith 3. So, the Faith 3 departure, Viap transition, I do have to call and get a, I don't know why I have to call, because it should be a PDC at this point. Miami approaches on Tampa, Miami Tower. Miami ATIS. I already got the ATIS, folks. So 118.450. I'm going to kind of throw that there and we'll get it. Let me call them up. Uh, get my dang paperwork ready to go. Uh, Miami Tower, Riptide 3. Looking for a clearance over to LaGuardia. I shouldn't say end Miami Tower. <laughs> I mean, Orlando Tower. Riptide 3, Orlando Tower, good evening. You, not, you should have received a PDC. Did you not receive one? Negative, sir. I didn't see it. Alright. Uh, Riptide 3, clear to the LaGuardia Airport by the A3 departure via transition then in file. Maintain for rapid correction. Climb by the SID. Departure frequency 124.8. Squawk. One six three five. Okay, uh, climbing the SID via one twenty four point eight one six three four in the box. Riptide three. That was very clear. One six three five. Sixteen thirty five. Okay, sixteen thirty five. Riptide three, read that correct. Uh, run uh, land runway three five left for departure. For land altimeter three zero zero six. Okay, 3-5 left uh, for departure. We'll call you on taxi. Spirit Wings, 195, contact departure, 124.8, have your flight. 1249. All right, got it. Climb via the SID, 3-5 left. We're good to go. Got it. All right, so we've got VIAP, and then we're going to go up to uh, departures, proud 2 on the arrivals. So click, oh, shoot, click... Um, Arrivals, we're going to go Proud 2. Yeah, Proud 2 with the Hertz transition right there. That's all set, ready to go. Don't know the runways, it's too dang far away, so we'll go runway 3. Activate, execute, good pref coming in there. Zero fuel weight set already. 131, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my paperwork and make sure we're good to go on that. All right, folks, hang in. We got a uh, whole bunch of stuff going on right now. I'm going to write down my numbers. I've got uh, 8630. 8630 in the middle is 8910. Lots of gas. Lots of gas. You know how much money this is going to cost me? Six, seven. It costs the airline a lot of money here. <laughs> That's a lot of gas that we had to uplift. So I'll give you a number on how much. How much do you think this fuel costs? Anybody know? Is that 16, 18? So we got 8630, 89, 10, right? So it's 26.1. Okay. What is this fuel costing us per? Per, pound, per we do it per the we do it per the pound not the gallon I'll give you an idea after I get my numbers done that is zero that is 10 that is 16 that is six that's seven so we landed with 7600 pounds go ahead I'm still not done with the FMC so I'm holding it Thank you. Roger. Hello. Hi, Captain. 
Okay, here's the load sheet from ground. I've written the passenger count here, the crew count here, and a total number of souls, not including yourselves, here. Thank you. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, looks like we're all set to go whenever you're ready. Okay, soon. Just give me a second. I'm running here. <laughs> All right, we got take off MCO, select on the ID. We're going to go 3-5 left, like I said we were going to do. We're going to actually taxi with two engines today, just we're pretty heavy, so I'm not going to taxi with one engine. That's stupid. Let's not do that. Optimum on the flap. Rating is good. anti is off. Wait, wait, good. Import the weather here. Calculate there. And I'm going to calculate with VTP as well, just so we have double numbers and we can make sure we're in the ballpark. We're close to it. Okay, so I got VTP. We're going to do takeoff, my, not Miami, MCO Orlando. We're going to go runway 35 left. <clears throat> and I'm putting this in here. So if you can see what I'm doing here. Full condition. I'm just going to actually throw this in here. We'll get that done. Plug those numbers in there. Optimum, maximum, auto. Flaps, I'm going to force to flap 5, and the RTG, I'm going to force to 26,000 a side. Uh, we're not going to do an auto. We're not going to do an improved climb at all. Uh, we are taking off with approximately takeoff weight 156. What did it say? This says 157,000. So let's plan that 157. Enter that. 19% on the give or take, I think, on the trim. And we're going to click Calculate. And you see this is going to calculate up. You can't really see it, but I'm just showing you. So we're going to come down here and just check it out. I've got trim 6.25, cell temp 52. This says 49. It's a little more, um, let's see here. Acceleration, height, 896. Tour is 10. Takeoff is good. Okay, we're good for flaps five. So we're going to go flaps five. I'm going to be a little less conservative, a little more conservative. We're going to go 49 on the cell temp instead of that 50, what was it, 52. So 6.6, this is 6.2. And then our numbers are going to be 146, 47. I'm going to use the lower number, 145. Excuse me, 145 VR is going to be 147 with a V1 at 151. Okay, so very close here on these numbers on over here on this one. And uh, that's it, folks. I'm going to go ahead and put that away. And we're rocking and rolling here. All right. Mike says, you have a nice setup. Well, I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you, man. Okay, folks, back to the FMC. Let's get it going. I've got plan fuel at 26,000. We're going to be a little less than that. So, you know, with the taxi, I'd say 25.8 you know, or so. And then reserves are at... Uh, now, here's the interesting part with the reserves. Reserves are going to be our... Planned arrival fuel is 12.8. We're going to go a little less than that, so we're going to do about 11,000, which means I do not want to go under this. Cost index, we said 20, which sucks. And we're going to climb up to 3, it says 330. Let's see how we do at 330. We'll probably do a step climb back up. So I'm going to go 330 up there. I'll throw that in there. Cruise wind is looking at 311 at 31. Top of climb is approximately negative 45 when we get to cruise. Execute and one limit. We're going to sell it at 49 degrees. Tricking those engines. Bring us down. Still on climb one. Take off. Flaps are going to be five. CG's coming in. 12.9. That's a not even close, so about seven. So we're pretty forward for the CG. I've got 45, 147, 151, and that is set, ready to go. What I'm going to do is go to our route page here. We're going to click 
take off. We've got that done. Let's go to legs, route data, request the winds. So I'm going to do this automatically. In the MD-80, you can't do this, right? It won't, it won't allow you to dump in that data. you got to do it by hand. It's kind of terrible that way. I'm getting a call from the intercom system. Hang on. I'll uh, remove the jetway when I'm ready. Thanks. No problem. Cruise, it says cruise wind ump lake ready. Click load. And what that's going to do is data dump it into the FMC. And then we'll just execute it. And now you've got our legs. If we go next page, you can see we'll clear that there. And then you can see all of the numbers and the, and the altitudes. We're good. All right. 1224. We're good on time. I'm going to go ahead and set this to 3006 is set. Let's do our flows. This is a turn flow, folks. This is much quicker than your your first flow that we went out. So you don't want to do anything upstairs, which is really nice. Not a lot, at least. We're going to come down here. We are going to turn on our fuel pumps. One, two, all of them are coming on. So we do want to burn out of the center first. Okay, so the fuel pumps are on. We're going to come upstairs. I'm going to actually turn this off we don't need them we don't need the lighting we got good lighting now you can throw this to ground power coming around the horn just doing a check that's all window heat is coming on hydraulics are coming on now when i turn this on watch the low the low pressure one two two low pressures two low pressures we're good to go on that coming down here uh oops okay apu is coming to start that's fine Seatbelt's on. We'll do our uh, PA here soon, and we'll get going. This doesn't matter because we're, we're hooked up to the side as the as the APU starts. Packs are off. That's good. And then the last thing we're going to do, altitude is 33,000 with a altitude over at LaGuardia, 21 feet. So we'll go ahead and basically set that to zero. There you go. <laughs> And then last thing we want to do is left side and let's go and do a briefing. Okay. On, on, altitude via the SID. We're doing the Faith 3 departure. Let's do a briefing right now with you. So I'm going to do it with uh, on here. It's just a little easier on this, I think, to do a briefing than doing it the other way. My iPad is just a pain in the neck sometimes, so I'm just going to do it on this. We'll do the SID. We're going to do the Faith 3 right there. I'll go ahead and pin that for you. And here we not go. Faith 3. Departure. All right. So we're going to be taking off to the north. So basically on this runway, 005, 37 degrees over to j 2600, then up to 3000. And we're going to step it. Up to Buffy. They cleared us to, they said, climb via the SID. Top of the uh, SID on this runway, 16,000 feet. So we will set this to 16,000 on our altitude. I'm just going to do that now. That's our top, top range. So I'm just going to plug that into 16 here. 15,000. There's 16 set. All right, so 16 set, pretty much straight out taxi. Let's talk about the taxi route, wh how we're going to go. Um, we are on airside one. If I can figure it out, that would be awesome. All right, let's go to airport info. We'll go ahead and throw that there. Get that pin in there. Okay, so we're coming down. You can see... Airside 1, we're going to go ahead and taxi probably Juliet 2 to Juliet all the way around. Gulf, all the way down to Hotel 10, and then we'll take off on 35 left. Pretty simple. Long taxi, but that's kind of how we got to do it here at that, uh, Orlando. Do you have any questions? Um, takeoff alternates not required. We have no special airport information. No MEL items. Notums, let's just um, go over those. We went over the notums before. A little bit out of uh, LaGuardia, but go ahead and do the paperwork. I'll pull up the paperwork with you, and we'll get the notums going. Patrick M., let's go. Islanders, no. 
Let's go, Rangers. The Rangers are playing on Sunday, and we'll be uh, flying them again to um, probably Dulles shortly. A couple days, I think. If Sean, you're watching. We're probably going to take that on Wednesday, aren't we? To Dulles. Okay, let's do this. You guys ready? Paperwork time. All right, let's do this with me really quick. We've got uh, Orlando, LaGuardia. Two hours and 22 minutes. That's not too bad. And we're looking at, uh, we are in the correct aircraft. We've got MCO, LaGuardia. We do have an alternate at Providence. Good to know. Going here, do our fuel cross. 12.8. Uh, Actually, 25.6. Yeah, 25.6 here. We're going to take off at 26.1. And we're looking at 12.8. And then we will do a bingo. And our bingo fuel... Eight point nine is our bingo fuel, which means if we're in a hold or something and we hit eight point nine, we're going to Providence or wherever. Okay, that's that's what that means. Okay, maximum plan twenty one twenty six point one and we have that on board. We have zero fuel weights checked, takeoff weight one fifty six, landing weight is good. I'll put my John Hancock on here. Done. Let's go ahead and check the uh, notams while we're at it. Okay, we, we already checked LaGuardia. We know the weather there. LaGuardia is crappy. Philly? What in the fetch is Philly? Did they give us two alternates? No. Providence. Why would they give me Philly? I did see Philly. Yeah, right here. I don't understand. There's Providence. Okay, good, good. <laughs> so weird. All right, LaGuardia, 422, close. Good. That's closed. Good, 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 good. Runway 4, ALS is unusable. Okay. I'm just looking for runway closers, folks. Just going through the... All of this stuff is just, you know, miscellaneous things. Got that, got that. Got that. We'll look for FICON if it's raining. It's just low ceilings right now, so there's no rain yet. Good. Good, good. Good. And we've checked uh, Orlando already. Okay. Paperwork's good to go. You folks good? Ready to go? I hope so. Speak now. Okay. One thing I need to check... Ah, uh, there we go. Get it up there. Here we go. Mike, where did I get the wear and tear mod for the cockpit? Um, that was a these textures that we have is, um, it's done by a our repainter. I gotta go, folks. So, it's done by a repainter. Hold that thought. Quantity oil is 94.94. Got to always check that before we leave. Hydraulic is pushing 100 over 100. Good, 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 good. Let's rock and roll. Folks from the flight deck, welcome aboard uh, flight number three, nonstop service to LaGuardia. I show two hours and 20 minutes once we're airborne. And a temperature there in LaGuardia. It's pretty cold. It's in the 60s uh, with overcast clouds. It looks like a smooth ride pretty much all the way up there. Might be a little bumpy in the uh, Virginia area on the descent. We'll uh, keep you posted as we get further. Right now, sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. Thanks for watching the FSBN channel. All right, let's go. Overhead. I'm good to go. That's on, that's on, that's on. Those are on. Let's go and shut this thing down. One on the bus, on the bus. Call GSX, tell them to pull it. And we're going to come down here. They're going to yank everything off the aircraft as they should. 
Release ground power. Yes, get the ground power off the aircraft. Release the air conditioning cart. Remove the shocks. That is on. Doors come and closed, folks. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Doors come and closed. Okay, we're done. Doors come and closed. We're on. We're just going to remove the uh, the air off the airplane, and we are on a push. Let's go ahead and call. Okay, we got 118.4. Go ahead. Copa 243, contact Orlando departure 124.8. Patrick, what's up, buddy? He said, uh, it's good to see you. He said, Patrick, how do you deal with an in-flight runway closure, like if it's closed for an emergency? Yeah, it's good. You would probably want to land before, so I would probably go to, like, Norfolk or something like that. Um... I mean, if you were there, you would have to bug out and, and land, Runway like, either Newark or something like that. All right, I'm going to do a quick edit push just because I don't know what's going on over here in Orlando. It's pretty tight around this these necks of, neck of the woods. See, they're going to push us all the way to BFE. And um, <laughs> I don't think that's going to be kosher somehow. You know, we could go right here and then we're done. That's where I want to go. Nice and easy. Keep it simple. Release parking brakes. All right. Uh, 36. We're an hour. We're a minute behind. We gotta go. Time check. 12:36. Uh, I gotta write this down. Hang on. 12:36. She is so relentless. Fuel pumps set, checked. Passenger signs are on. Window heat is on. Hydraulic pumps are on. Doors closed. Pressurization is set. Auto brakes on RTO. Stab trim is set. Parking brake is coming on RTO. Sorry. Release and then one brake. last thing on the trim. We'll get the trim set. Okay, we're good. Release Let's go. Brake. And off. Brakes off. Denali, what's up, buddy? The good news is, Patrick, is that, oh, shoot, is that, um, is that in the northeast where we're going, there is so much, there is, there is so many, um, airports in the northeast, boy, you could put it anywhere, I mean, anywhere, <laughs> JFK, Newark, Islip, uh, are we? All right, folks, we're on our way to the new LaGuardia scenery. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start number two, two to ground, coming in. APU is on. Bleeds are on. Okay, you want to make sure we have duct pressure. We do. You only need 30. I think that was a classic restriction, if I'm Delta not mistaken. Tower. All right, guys, we got to get the... Um, Radio is ready to go. You're going the other direction than what I anticipated. What 24.8? Uh, All right, we're going to start here at 25. All right, here we go. Fuel's in. And right, we got a light off. Denali, what's going on, buddy? How are you doing? Welcome aboard. You guys, uh, you guys should be excited for these new routes we're doing. 
I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, man. We were losing our shirt on that one that route. Turn right for you. It's crazy. Yeah, Good light, oil down pressure. Turn left on a Bravo 5. Continue on Bravo 2. Park brake set. And then you can pick up your starts from there. Turn left on Bravo 5. Continue on Bravo 2. Okay, got a rollback. Good to go. Let's go ahead and isolate, ventilate. Isolate straight here, ventilate there. Oops, and we're going to go to fire number one. Like I said, I'm going to start both engines because we're pretty heavy. Park brake is set, buddy. All right, I'm going to do a, a real startup for you. Okay, there's 25. Here comes the fuel. Fuel in. Watch the EGT. Timer on. So I'm going to do a timer check right now. There it is. Light off. You're watching the EGT. And then I'm looking at the N1. Oil pressure's off. So if the EGT starts spiking on you, it's a hot start. You want to shut it off? If it's not, if the N1's not rotating and it's just sitting there, that's a honk start. You want to shut it off? There is no FADEC on this aircraft. There's no engine control. I mean, you know, um, electronic. There's an electronic engine control, but it's not a FADEC. FADEC is like a computer that's monitoring all the systems on the engine. You don't have it on this airplane, at least with EGT. Two good starts on the rollback. Here we go. Hands are on this. We're going to go throw one, throw two, AP off. I don't want to burn fuel. Coming up on the overhead. Again, I'll just do this way. Looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Inverter's good. Coming across. Propeed on. Coming down. That looks good. Trim air is good. Isolation. Auto. Off. Coming down. Continuous. Continuous. Taxi. Flaps five. Okay, clear your knees. Watch your knees. Here we go. Left. Right. That was right, left. Up and down. Rudder. Rudder. Taxi checks. All right, we go. Generators are on. Proby is on. anti is off. Flight controls are free. Flaps are set. Green light. Transponders coming on. TARA. Son of a gun. Can't see it. Woo. All right, here we go. 1637 on squawk. Shoot. All right, folks. Let's go for it. Orlando ground. <clears throat> Is it ground? It's tower. Sorry, Orlando Tower, Riptide 3, taxi with the numbers. Riptide 3 on a tower, good evening. Verify right, transponder 1635. Negative. Okay, should be now, 1635. Riptide 3, runway 35 plus. Taxi via Juliet 2, yeah. Juliet, Golf, Hotel Town. Golf and what? Hotel 10. Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, 3 5 left via Juliet 2, Juliet Golf, and then Hotel 2, did you say? Hotel 10, Hotel 1. Okay, that's Hotel 10 for Riptide 3. Okay, taxi's good. We're going to go uh, 3 5 left, Juliet 2. There we go. So we're going to be basically swinging around there. Taxi lights on. Brakes coming off. Easy B says, enjoy your streams. Well, I appreciate it, man. Appreciate the uh, support. All you folks are are here and supporting me. Watching these streams on a Friday. Hopefully you get some value out of it. That's my, my hope. Now, what a beautiful airplane. I'm sorry. This is a gorgeous bird.
Eat your heart out, Southwest. I think we did it better. Ha! <laughs> we did it better. How do you retrain for an Airbus side stick? <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know what? Like, I gotta tell you, when I flew, I flew. I got about six, seven hours in the in the Airbus A320, um, in a full motion level D at Delta, and it's not that hard. It's really not that difficult um, flying a side stick. It was, it was actually pretty, pretty good. It's it's so um, it's really solid. The stick is really really solid. So it's not it's it's really solid. Like it's you've got to really uh, put some force in into it. And I wouldn't say crazy amount of force, but it's not like a finger. You know, you gotta you gotta really move that thing. All right, we're on our way. We're on Juliet. See you later, Orlando. Till we come back, whatever that is. Uh, speaking on that, would you ever consider adding? No, I won't. <laughs> I'm gonna say it right now. I just, it, it doesn't. Um, like the Airbus, adding the Airbus to this fleet with two coastal airways wouldn't be. It just again, we're a low cost carrier. Well, we're not ultra low, but we're a low cost, and we want to keep the cost low. And I know we got three MD80s. I get it, and we're getting four seven five seven. So, I I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't say it's out of the question. It just depends, right? Like I wouldn't. Um, I mean, think about it right now. There's like the, uh, the A321. There's no middle of market, really, aircraft. There is on the 757, but, you know, that's coming out, which I'm super excited for. The only reason why I say that is because you want type commonality with it. I'm trying to operate this like a, like a real, you know, like a real LLC, what a low-cost carrier, LCC. Hang on. Go ahead. Hi, Captain. The cabin is secured for takeoff. All right. I'll call you when we're ready. No How's problem. That? Okay. Good stuff. And and I'm not. And I'm just saying, like, I know what you say with the MD-80. Well. Delta 360 RNAV J Wolf, wind 310 at seven, runway 35 left for takeoff. The Hello, the thing and I and I do realize I do realize like a virtual airline is for pilots it's for you right and um, we're going down golf <laughs> so you're saying that there is a chance I'm not saying that I I'm saying that anything could happen is what I'm saying and what I what I mean by that is let's say Boeing let's say something happens with Boeing right there's no aircraft on the market I can't get a hold of a 737 yet we need to expand or, or I don't know you know anything could happen so that's what I'm saying like I can't say no never um, I'm just saying it adds a huge amount of cost that it does that I know right so that I am saying that that's a downside to having a Airbus on a Boeing fleet the MD-80s do you have three of them and they're just for charter operations right so they don't fly the line or anything they're they're specialty flights that we do we do a lot of them with the hockey teams and stuff like that let me get a picture of this I'm just going too dang fast um, so I, I can't I can never say never right I, I just can't that's stupid but right now I don't have a middle of the market aircraft I don't have one like that beautiful beast that's a Air Airbus um, I would say if we did get an A320 I wouldn't fly it because I I don't want to learn that airplane that's just me 
<laughs> so you're saying there is a chance? <laughs> they're saying never. They're saying, <laughs> you know, what what would you do? An A320? No, that doesn't make any sense because you got seven threes. An A319? No, because you got seven hundreds. When you have eight hundreds, what I would say is a 321, maybe. And the reason for that is. It's a middle-of-market aircraft, right? So if I can't get enough 7.5s, I need a middle-of-market airplane. That might be the trick. That might be it. It's not a 900, that's for sure. It's too dang... I don't know. Don't get me wrong. I think the Airbuses are cool, but... Um, it's pretty wild what they, what, what they could do. So I'm hearing a 787-900. Yeah, if I have the money... Um, and that's another thing, folks. Like, it's funny because you know how much this airplane costs? And, and by the way, all of the, all of this stuff, um, all of this, hang on, I'm going to have to do some flows here in a minute. All of these, um, stand by. Flight attendants, please take your seats for takeoff. Thank you. Um, okay, up on the upstairs, we did a tenant, no a tenant notification. I'm going to bring number two up and then back down. Just if you want to listen for any uh, takeoff config warning horns, we're good. And then we're going to go ahead and reset that. Good to go. Okay, good jet. Let's go. Um, just going to take a glance on the overhead and check my uh, packs and bleeds. Okay, packs auto. Bleeds are on. Continuous and continuous. All right, members in the chat right now. By the way, if you're a member, if you're a member, um, you get extra perks. So, like, you know that video I did? Where I did a video with an MD-80 flying into LaGuardia. It was 20 minutes. Well, the real video is two hours long. So, and it's all instructional stuff. So that's kind of the, the perks you get from being a member. Plus, you get... Every seasonal flight we ever did in the MD-80 with the hockey charters the entire season, you see. Those aren't available to the general public. Um, and it's for the price of a, less of a price of coffee, a cup of coffee. And that's pretty cool. Plus, you help me out. So, consider that. Yeah. And you get this. Yeah, ever go long haul? Yes. So eventually we would go long haul, right? Shoot, hold on, just a minute. I gotta set something. One fifty-one. All right, so I'm gonna go one fifty-one on this set. Okay, we got one fifty-one set. Course is gonna be set northbound. Phase three departure in there. First leg is going to J Wolf. We've got that. Any questions before we go? Takeoff config check. Pack set. Bleeds are set. Altimeter set. Recall complete. Takeoff checklist is complete. Coming down on the... Uh, Sean, Korean Air has five bail... Five what? Yeah, it's just... it's. Think about the price of an air, aircraft... Well, we Rip pay those three, prices. Runway three five left, line up and wait. Three five left, line up and wait, riptide three. Okay, we got a clearance to line up and wait. We're gonna go ahead and throw the lights on. The only light we do not throw on are the strobes. Landing lights coming on right now. Hold off on the strobe lights. Wing lights on. Whoa baby. Hold on guys. I was a little late on that turn. There we go. Okay, you clear your side, so I'd ask you right now, clear on the right. You'd say yes. Looks good. Flaps five, looking good. Yeah, so I'm saying if we wanted to go long haul, I'd have to look at a long haul option. Okay, RNF J Wolf, clear for takeoff, runway 35 left, Riptide 3. Here we go. Auto throttle armed. RNAV to J Wolf. LNAV coming up. And VNAV up. Set. 
And here we go. I uh, shut it off like an idiot. On Toga. Here we go, folks. Toga's up. And we are on the roll. Take off thrust set. Now I'm just pushing the yoke down just a little bit. Once we hit that uh, 80 knots, I can start backing off just a touch. All right. We're heavy, right? We've we got a heavy aircraft. Uh, yeah, we'll be parking at uh, Terminal C, JetBlue 923. We'll go. Just a little up right there. Hold. Hold right there. Lots of right rudder. There we go. All right, pause right to climb. Terminal C via Europe. Julia Kilo Lima, uh, Julia Lima Kilo, and then Hotel Foxtrot, uh, JetBlue 923. JetBlue 923, you can cross from going three miles left. Roger, we could cross runway 35. Actually, can we turn left on November and take Foxtrot to uh, Terminal C? That works as well. Uh, November, Foxtrot, Echo 1. Okay, November, Foxtrot, Echo 1, JetBlue 923, thanks. And cross runway 35 left. Cross runway 35 left, JetBlue 923, thanks. And JetBlue 923, uh, Atlanta Tower is closing. Flaps 1. Sounds good, thanks for the ATC, Jeplin 923, we'll see ya. See ya. Orlando Tower, uh, Riptide 3 out of 25 for 16. Riptide 3, contact. Wraps up. 124.8, sorry about that. 124.8, we'll see ya. Orlando Departure, Riptide 3 on the uh, climb via the Faith 3. Command A on. 124.1. What? 124.8. I've got that. 124.8 on board. He flaps her up. Good to go. Riptide 3, Orlando departure, radar contact south to. Leaving 37 for 16. Riptide 3, climb via SID. Climb via the SID, Riptide 3. Okay, folks, autopilot's on. I'm going to go ahead and engage that. That's coming off. Go outside here, take a look. Oh, shoot. Knock those down. You know what I forgot? That. Dang it. I got dinged. They're going to ding me on that. ACARS is going to yell at me and say, you screwed up. All right, folks, we're heading out there. You didn't set your course. That's right, I'm on an Ornav. Uh, what is it, 359. I'll set it right now for you. I'll start plugging in some BORs here soon. Okay, through 7,000. Probably the 767 would be a good option. It would be. Um, Alex said, or get 737 ETOPS rating. Yeah, we got it. That is a thing. So, Alex, um, we do have a seven. We do have an ETOPS course. And we fly to Hawaii. So our pilots have to go, if they want to fly ETOPS flights, they've got to go through the ETOPS training, and then they'll get certified to fly ETOPS. And um, that's really fun, too. And this is an ETOPS aircraft. You can see right here, 805 ETOPS. It's on the nose as well. Might look familiar. <laughs> All right, here's 10,000 feet. It's beautiful, so I don't see a lot of the turbulence. Contact Jacksonville Center, 135.92. 135.92, we'll see you. 135.92. Folks, 135. Okay, the aircraft is accelerating. 135.92. I'm going to turn the retractables off. And I'll call the flight attendants after I talk to this guy. 135.92, whoever the... 
air traffic controller is 135.925. And we could accelerate to 300 because American it's pretty darn smooth. American I mean, there's. I mean, they say we're supposed to get turbulence, but not for a while. Let me call them up. Jack Center, Riptide 3, uh, checking in, 11,000. Riptide 3, Jack Center, climbing team, flight level 330. Up to 330, Riptide 3. All right, 330 on the altitude. Set right there. Yeah, anyway, I was going like I was saying. Um, all right, seatbelts coming off. Like I was saying, the... Um, the... Um, the price... To descend via the Sandfield 3 arrival by the previous controller. Just letting you know we started a descent now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and be smart about this. 112.6. And what I'm doing is I'm plugging in Ormond Beach. 2893, descend via the Grinch 5 arrival, Orlando landing north, Orlando off the 3006. Send me the Grinch 3006. Okay, climb check coming up. Let's go upstairs here. We'll do our flows first, and then we'll do the checklist. Okay, auto on, off, off. And call the flight attendants. Tell them they could start their duties. Flight attendants, uh, you're clear to resume your duties. Um, Mike, you said climb via the SID. Does that mean just follow the, what the charge says? Exactly. That's exactly right. Follow what the SID, SID says. So the Faith 3 departure, we are now, until he says you're clear to climb. So when he said you're clear to climb 330, that cancels all of the climb via the SID stuff. Whatever air traffic controllers say at that point voids the chart, if that makes sense. At least altitude restrictions. Um, like take a look at the SID. So we're doing the phase three here. So you could see we had a restriction just above 14,000, 16,000, and the top altitude was 16,000. And that's why you said you're clear to 23, which means that this is now void. We could go up to 230. If that makes sense. Got a 589, runway 18, clear to land. Runway 18, clear to land. Okay, we're at 318,000 feet. Climb, pack speed, pressurization, start switches. Okay, I'm looking at pressurization. It's good. Start switches are off. APU is off. Flaps are up. No lights. Lights are coming off. American A-10 contact Miami Center, 135.17. G'day. All right, folks. 35.17. That's A10. it. Have a good night, man. Down 360, expect visual approach on May 26. Anyway, we're good to go. We got it all dialed in, folks. Okay. Shoot. There we go. Where do you want to sit? <laughs> Up here. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna take a drink of water. Yeah, Much needed Delta drink. Delta 1257. Oh my gosh. Did I miss anybody else? Yeah. What do you think about Active Sky? Yeah, after good these evening. Flights? You know, so far, it's great. Like I haven't seen an issue. You know, I. Um. LaGuardia is going to be interesting because LaGuardia is going to... We have some weather there in LaGuardia. So that's going to be a really interesting look to see, you know, what the weather is going to be. We'll, we'll see. But so far, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, um, if we know Active Sky, 
you know, they worked for years and years on it, right? So, um, my the thing I the thing I hated about or I, I disliked about flight sim and weather is that they wouldn't force thunderstorms, right? So they say thunderstorms. Well, there's no vertical builds. You know, it's just big old. I mean, it's nothing. You're just it's just flat, right? And that's not how it is in real life. Real life, you're towering cumulus. You've got, you could see thunderstorms yeah, or anvils. I mean, the whole nine yards. So I'm really interested to see if, if Active Sky forces mm-hmm. that or not. So we'll Pull see. Back. But so far, so good. Sean, yeah, 76 7 would probably be a good option for us because we're getting the 7 5s and then. Um, We'll get some type ratings through that. We'll do training again on those. And um, the seven fives are going to help us with the middle of market kind of aircraft. Stretch our legs a little longer. Probably go Salt Lake to Hawaii. Um, Did you ask to continue our defend after Kenny or hold that 21? Uh, by the way, MCO LaGuardia. <laughs> Good 757 route. I could fill more people into it into the aircraft, but. I don't know, folks. I don't know Washington what the operational, what was the frequency? how much one fuel three, I'm going to burn seven, with it. Does that make sense? So, one, one, three, point if we seven, get, eight. let's, you could, we could tune Saint Augustine. Let's go tune Jackson. One one four point five. Check visual runway three five left, and we have information India Delta twenty four fifteen. Roger, so that's twenty nine eighty. So we got Ormond Beach and we have Jacksonville hooked up as well on the uh, BOR. Air Force 141 heavy flight level 327, climbing flight level 350. Yes, Air Force 141 Jackson. Alex, Jason, have you ever thought about expanding CRM, FTM, FCOM? Please walk me through about your cadet program training. Yeah. So, American thirty-one forty. I would love to do. One three three point seven two. Yeah. One three three point seven two. American thirty-one forty. Yeah. Um, so we have an FCOM already. Um, <sighs> crew resource management we have in terms of written form, it's in our 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 F our F F O M. And by the way, our FOM is over 300 pages long. Just FYI, it's not. You're gonna look at it and go, "Holy crap! <laughs> this is just this is just like the airlines because that's what it's developed from." I took it off. I developed the FOM off of three airlines' best practices, right? And I said, "Who's got this best practice in terms of?" Procedure. Jackson, who's, who's this one? So, step away for a couple minutes? I would love to do uh, FTM. Um, CRM, I would love to do. Crew resource management would be great. Um, and maybe that's more of it's hard. We, so we have CRM, right? We have CRM in terms of in the FOM. It's it, but it's in written format. Okay, you're gonna do this. You're gonna say this. You're gonna, you know, the callouts are there. Everything. Um, and it's super fun. But American 457 Jack Center. I would love to do a course on um, threat error management, TEM, right? So for me, threat error management's a big deal. But yeah, um, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Captain Airbus, you hear about the United pilot who got suspended for letting somebody in the cockpit? Yeah, it was a charter flight. Come on. It was a charter flight, and it was a hockey team or something, wasn't it? Baseball team. Like, we fly the Rangers, right? We have an exclusive contract with the Rangers. And I own the airline. Yeah, you're coming in the flight deck. For sure. Sit down in the jump seat. Come on, dude. And uh, I have an arrival for you. Advisor, to copy. Yeah, threat error management's a big one. deal. Um, I would love to. I have. After Amilu, join the Amilu I have arrival. some TEM stuff. After Amilu, but if you wanted me to send, if you wanted me to take a look, send what you have, because 
I would love to develop a course on threat error management, but it's hard because I don't think it's hard. It's, it has to be tailored to a single pilot, which, again, in proper TEM, you're working as a team, as you know. You're, you're doing so team stuff. So, but you could May. still... We could still do it because, you know, think about think about um, threat error management in LaGuardia, folks. So what what Alex, the pilot, is talking about. So we're talking about threat error management. Give me three threats going into LaGuardia. What are our threats? How do we mitigate those threats? Okay, and what are the errors that we can have? So if I would have done that into Orlando. And I, and I said it kind of in passing. You, I don't know if you caught it. When I took off out of Orlando, I said, I bet you I get a runway change. But I never took it further. Okay, so I'm going to critique my own threat error management issue. Had I sat there and said, okay, what's a threat? Data 541, contact Miami Center 135.17. Threat is going to be... Delta It's going to be a runway change. What's the error? Like, what are, what are our errors? What are we going to miss? One, we're going to be high and fast. How do we mitigate it? Okay, so we got a runway change, high and fast, mitigations. And I would have said, I would have maybe would have called earlier and said, hey, are we landing north? You, you kind of heard me say that. Are we landing north or south? And he said south. And we were in the descent already. And then he said, no, we're landing north. So I should have prepared that way before it even happened okay so that's what we're talking about threat error so i i feel like had i said that had i been like okay if there's a runway change we are going to drop or we're going to do a 360 to dissipate altitude depending on where we are in terms of the, where the change happens so that's what we're talking about so three threats in laguardia what are the three threats let's get on to it center american 429 is back Hey, Marco, what's going on, man? Hopefully you're doing well. We've got the Airbus, I mean, not Airbus. We've got the MD-80 coming up here, I think, next week. Um, as a member, you're going to see it. I think we're flying to Indy shortly. Uh, I believe Wednesday. So I'll, I'll film it, and I'll put it up there on our member channel for you. But it'll be fun again. <laughs> Check the DMs. All right, I will, bud. Uh, Alex, he says, yeah, I understand that as a part of, yeah. We'll send you a message and have some stuff. Day. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Patrick M. says, I remember going when I was a kid, going up to visit the cockpit at the Red It was a Red Passage. It was. As a kid, we do it now, right? <laughs> Airbus says 767400 is the biggest plane a lot of land on the That's cool. I think the issue, was, issue with United was that the coach was sitting in the FOC while in cruise. Okay, that could be a problem. Who are they calling me? Is he calling me? Getting some bumps here. I can't. Let's see how we're doing here, folks. Seatbelts coming off or what? Three three zero. Yeah, now that's a problem. I wouldn't have let him in the in the FO seat. I would have put him in the jump seat, but not the FO seat. There's no way. All right, looks good, folks. We're gonna go ahead and kick the seatbelts off. Yeah, um, you could Discord. So, Alex, call, contact me on Discord. So you could see, if you scroll up in the comments, you'll see our Discord link. I don't know if you're a member of Discord, but um, go ahead and jump on that. And then we'll chat. It'll be good. Because yeah, I'd love to do it. Air Force. Thank you, Sean. Sean's on the... Dude. Good, Sean's like Johnny on the spot here. <laughs> Okay, folks, hang on. So I'm going to give our passengers a good PA. We're going to do so. We're going to do a few things. 
time check. You always want to get the time first. Because passengers care about time. And then they care about temperature. <laughs> so time, temperature, big deal, and weather. They're kind of probably concerned about weather. And by the way, we did get an extra alternate. We got two alternates on this one. You guys, weather's overcast. Air Force 141, heavy stack on. Air Force 141, Jason, right Okay. I'm going to be right back with the uh, PA for you. How's that? I'll give you a nice wing view here. Contact Washington Center 133.72 CM. Okay, folks, from the flight deck, we've reached cruising altitude 33,000 feet. Seatbelt signs coming off. However, you remain seated. Keep the seatbelts fastened just in case we hit any unexpected rough air. Right now, LaGuardia is reporting 48 degrees. Overcast clouds should have you on the ground here in about an hour and 15 minutes on actually to descent. Probably be about an hour and 40 minutes until we're there. Um, right now, sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. It should be a smooth ride up to uh, LaGuardia. Thanks again for watching the uh, Flight Center Broadcasting Network. Thank you. All right, Marco. Okay, cool. I'll send you a message. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Um, Marco said, is this the new route part of an expansion? So... I'll tell you what happened, Marco. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. We had, um, so I'm going to write this down and I'll show you on my computer what the heck happened. And, um, airlines tend to evaluate, you should be evaluating your routes and your, your, and we do, we evaluate our routes, our pricing, um, are we making money on routes? Are we losing money on routes? All those things really matter. So now we had two 700s on this route, and we called it. It was a three-day trip. Okay. So we called it Miami Three Alpha, and we started. We went Miami, LaGuardia, Bar Harbor, LaGuardia, back to Bar Harbor. So that was day one. So you went Miami, LaGuardia, Bar Harbor, LaGuardia, Bar Harbor. In a 700, okay? We were losing money on this route, always in the red. So this route here in the red all the time and the reason why we're in the red is you had ticket prices $79 one way no way we're going to make any money going to LaGuardia at $79 but LaGuardia to Bar Harbor was good money. You know, that pushed us around 400. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You know, each, you know, a ticket would be about $400 because, again, the demand is so small, but we weren't filling the airplanes. It's a 700. Okay, you're not going to fill 136 going to Bar Harbor. Maybe you could do 50, but that's about it. So it's day two. I'll show you what day two looked like. That's day one. Day two was Bar Harbor, LaGuardia, Miami, St. Thomas. And then we overnighted in St. Thomas. Again, good money here. Um, bad money there. We lost money on this route, and we made money on that route. 
And then day three, I believe, was St. Thomas. This is a PM shift. St. Thomas, we go to Miami. Good, good money there. We make money on that one. Then we go to Miami to, I want to say, BHM, which is um, Birmingham, Alabama, and then back over to Miami, and then you're done. We land at like 1 o'clock a.m. or 12.30 a.m. or something like that. The issue was that we're running that with two 737-700s. But we're losing money on two of the routes. Okay? And we're losing money on three of the routes because Bar Harbor, again, was one of those things where we had... Um, you're not going to fill a 737-700 on that route. Barely can get 50 people. You know, summertime, you might be lucky and get 50 to 70. So, you just sent me some stuff on Temp Suite. So, what we've done is we got completely rid of this. So, it's over, right? So, 3A is gone. That doesn't mean we're not going to... That doesn't mean we're not going to service Bar Harbor and we're not going to service St. Thomas. We will, but Bar Harbor is going to be served with the CRJ. <laughs> not a 737. So it'll be a CRJ only flight. It won't be a 737. Now, what this did. Okay, I'll show you what we're doing now with this. This route right here, okay? So now we got two 700s I can use. Right, that are pulled off of routes that I can use elsewhere. So this route an 800. So yeah, we had to spend money to get an 800 on there. What we're doing here is Miami, MCO, we make money on this. November 9th, oh, um, American Airlines Airport. operates the same route Bow. using uh, Max. <laughs> they use a Max 8 on this route. And it's good money. I looked and I'm like, okay, we could get that capacity and we could beat them. We could beat them on pricing. So we, we come lower than American on pricing. So we go Miami to MCO. MCO we're doing right now to LaGuardia. Okay, again, ticket prices are low. Ticket prices are around $178. In a 700, I couldn't make money. In a 800, we probably will make money. Probably not a lot, but we'll make money. Right? It'll be it'll be in the black and not the red. But we'll when we land, we'll we'll figure it out. Then we go from LaGuardia back to MCO. MCO back to Miami. You got, you got that. Then that's this is the AM shift. Now I think that's what I got going on. Hang on. Where's my Where's my stuff? Oh, uh, where's my paperwork? Dang it. I have it written down, folks. Um, what where it is way back. So, there it is. Okay. We got Miami MCO, MCO LaGuardia, LaGuardia back to MCO, MCO to Miami. That is, that's a Monday. And here's another thing. That's going to be Monday. Wednesday, Friday. Three days a week. This flight's going to run three days a week. Now, we, we service more than that because we have a Tuesday, Thursday route with the CRJ, same route, Miami to MCO. Then we go my MCO to Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach, Raleigh, Raleigh, Iceland. That's day one. But in this particular case, we go back to Miami on the AM shift. Then we have a PM shift. Same aircraft. So PM shift gets in. We'll get in Miami at like, I don't know, right around 3-ish. Give or take. That's why I'm flying this flight. i got to figure it out. Then... Um, we're going Miami, Tampa, 
We got Miami to Tampa. Tampa. CRW. CRW Miami. That's the PM shift. Now, make money on here. We may make money on here. It won't be a full jet, but we'll still make money. And then this one. And the reason why we'll make money on this Tampa to CRW, because there's no nonstop, and they're upwards of $500. Because, remember, high it's, it's low demand. They could charge a lot of pricing. So high demand, you figure... Um, not a lot of competition, so they can throw $500 on you. We won't charge that much. We're going to charge 300 And fill the 737, you know, at least 80% capacity and make money, right? So that's the, that's day one on this aircraft, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I get to go on Tuesday, Thursday, and do a whole nother route. So I'm really maximizing the crap out of this air, airplane, Check, and you could see we're doing another Thursday, that, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then Sunday we're going to Columbia, folks. So Sunday will be a uh, car, what is it, car, it's not cartigen or something like that. What do you, how do you call it? Cartigen? Cartigen? We will be um, flying to there on a Sunday. So that's going to be a non-stop Miami and back in this 800. So really cool stuff going on. And that's what we're doing with all of our flights. I'm looking at them and I'm going, all right. And then obviously we're going to get down to St. Thomas too. So that's not, that's not out of the, you know, that's not out of the deal. Bar Harbor will be serviced with our CRJ. I just don't know where that's going to go. From. Um, what else? Yeah, so Bermuda's on the radar. We got some international stuff coming up. I'm trying to hit a lot more Florida destinations, but it's so competitive. Orlando is so competitive, folks. And we're talking about 150 78 dollars one way. It's insane. It's really hard to make money that way. <laughs> Uh, would an A220 be a better platform for these routes? Well, yeah, an A220 would, would it sips gas, so um, you can't again, you can't pack them on like an 800. You can like you get 174 on this airplane. Um, what is what is one of those what are those A220s? Is it 120 ish? So I could uh, I going to LaGuardia I wouldn't send an A220 on because you're not going to fill the, your capacity is low look Orlando to New York you almost will have 100% load all the time you'll fill the aircraft almost all the time look at Spirit guys have you seen what Spirit Airlines has done I keep saying this I've said this for 2 years Spirit Airlines cannot sustain these prices. They cannot sustain these prices with the airports that they fly to. Okay, now they fly to smaller airports, I get it. But they're in LaGuardia and they're $78 a, a one way. They're not gonna they're not gonna do it. And look what's look what they've done. They dumped all of their A320 uh, Neos. They've stopped all the deliveries. They furloughed 260-something pilots. Why are they doing that? They're trying to get their cost under control. That's why. So it's really hard to control your cost by shrinking. And you can't do it. So you have to do it by... You have to do it by the right aircraft, aircraft, the right pricing. Um, LaGuardia is one of those. LaGuardia is one of those airports that are just—it's really hard to make money because it's so much money to land there, and there's controlled slots. I only have one slot in LaGuardia, so this is it. We're looking at it. Um, or we have two. We have two slots. So that's all we have. Two. Nigh impossible to, to get a slot in the morning. 
five, six, check, seven, F, squad, and not one, to one, mention two, one, six, contact, to do five, so. Five, so, um, we have DCs on too. Shoot, what are we doing? 133.725. Yeah, that's good. So, do you see how that works? Like, like, okay, so you could say, well, Jason, West Virginia on an 800, you're not going to fill it. And you're right, I won't fill that airplane. I'm not. But even if I could get 80% load factor on this airplane, I'll make money. Right? Even, even at 75, if we can get 75% load, we're still going to make money on it. All right? I mean, we have a 700 flying through there now, and we're stimulating, basically we're stimulating a new nonstop destination from a colder destination. So Virginia, and think about where we're going. We're going to... Miami, that's big. Cruise ships going out of Miami all the time. So, yeah, why not? I, I'd love to see how that goes. Uh, I'm a Boeing fan, but they don't have anything compared to the A220. Yeah, the A220 is... The thing about the A220 is it sips gas, right? I mean, the thing is so cost-efficient. And I want to see what is... The passenger. The PAX capacity of an A220. Okay. By the way, if you didn't know, I love the airline business. <laughs> I'm all over it, right? So A220. So I'm trying to see the seating. Now that. That is an airplane I would buy, an A220, no problem. Okay, so max seating is 160 of an A220, so that is a good... Typical seating is about 120 to 150. That airplane is competing against a, five, a 700. It can't compete against the 800, but it can compete against a 700. How much... What is the, the sticker price? What is the price of an A220? Let's look. Washington's closing, so I don't have to worry about Washington. All right, you ready? For the Rolls Royce engines. <clears throat> no. Give me an A220. Dang it. Shepard 2401, terminal setting 150, descending 18, 3000, vectors final. Left 150, terminal setting 3000, 341. All right, write this down. Washington's closing, radar service terminated, frequency center. A 737 700 series aircraft is going for $89 million. This one, sticker price. This one we're flying right now is $106 million. So if we say, what is the price of an Airbus A220? Okay, you ready? <laughs> no, we didn't. that's not right. Okay, an A220 costs $81 million, but that's a 100 series. The 300 series is $91 million. So you're spending you're spending $2 million more for an aircraft that probably holds the same amount of passengers, has newer engines, and could sip fuel. I would go with the 220s. If it was me, that's that's my 737 replacement. Is the A220s, because the Maxes are are a dumpster fire. We all know that, and they're and they're powerful and great airplanes, but they're just a dumpster fire. Yeah, good evening, Maxie 6479, 29.62. Yeah, Jayfoot is right. It's the delivery and the engine problems. We're forgetting they've got engine problems. 
those 220s burn those engines pretty quick. Um, they've had some issues with them. So it's deliveries. You're not going to get them in time. And and uh, the engine issues. So you're looking at reliability problems. And um, it's, it's a catch-22 because, you know, like an like aircraft this like this, time. it's old. This airplane's old. You know, it was delivered in 2000 for, like from, uh, one one but, uh, but like I said, folks, I'm operating, so I'm operating uh, this, um, to, uh, I'm operating coastal airways like a real airline. So I, I don't have the money just to dump in and just to buy whatever I want. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, and even because we don't have um i don't have the money we, we got to have pilots that fly to get money <laughs> what <laughs> um, the qf picked up 60 of them not too long ago yeah which is really a Bombardier in an Airbus. Yes. Um, I would, you know, I would, I got to tell you, that's very compelling for me, right? To pick up a 220 and that's probably the first Airbus I would get. Is a 220 because it sips gas. Um, I'd have to look at reliability, but you're not going to get her. You're not going to get them. See, like, right now, think about where we are as, as coastal airways, right? We're in infancy. We're, we're, we're in operation two and a half years now. We don't have the money. I mean, in cash reserves, we have about $114 million right now. But we our debt to cash ratio, we have a lot of debt, right? Probably got to, we've got, um, what are we looking at debt? We've probably got... Um, we probably got about 40 million in debt. Now that's not a lot in terms of an airline, um, but we're we're probably 40 million in debt because we had to leverage that capital to get started, right? So we bought a crap ton of airplanes, got good rates, but we got we got older equipment. Why? <laughs> For that reason, I can't afford a new airplane. I can't afford. Uh, a wide body triple C. There's no way unless now MD-80s. We're talking 1.2 million to 2 million. I got three MD-80s for maybe one was 4 million, which was a lower time than the others. That was 4 million. The others were high timers, but I'm not utilizing those a lot, right? They're, that's why I bought them. I'm like, we need something just to, just so I know the cost. And when we do our, um, when we do our, like, hold on, when we do our, Florence, I'm going to see one more, 1.5.2. Guys, we're going to be out of his airspace shortly. I'll show you where we are, but it looks, it looks like I'm tuning in Florence right now. Maybe I'm not. Okay, 115.2, Florence is in there on the uh, nav, um, nav one. So, so I, I can't, I can't drop all that money on a new piece of equipment. So, so like the MD-80s, you can say, well, why'd you buy MD-80s? They were cheap to get. There's a ton of them, which means spare parts, right? I get it. Maintenance costs are going to be higher. I understand that, but the airplanes are not flying as much as a line flight does. So I know the cost. Because I, I can control the cost with a charter flight. Why? Because I know how much it, oper it costs to operate per hour, and we charge the customer right over that. We charge $21,000 an hour. By the way, everybody's like, holy crap, that's the going rate of a charter flight. Right now, you could charter an airplane for $21,000 an hour. <laughs> okay? Um, that's what we charge on an MD-80s. Now, yes... Our margins, because we're flying an MD-80, is much lower than a 737 margin would be. But I'd have to pull a 737 off of the line and put it on a charter flight. Uh, my margins would be better, but then I'm losing 
I can't do that because I'm losing, I'm losing line flying, right? So you can't. So that's why I went the MD80. I control the cost, and I know exactly how much money it costs to operate one of those airplanes. That had broken. I broke one. John broke one. I mean, we had a CSD pop on us. We had almost an in-flight shutdown because of the, burn, the oil burn. Um, but that's fun. So, but again, the, like, where's our MD-80 right now in our charter MD-80 in New York? It's sitting on the on the ground in in um, Westchester. Now you could say, well, Jason, it's not making you money. And you're right, it's not making money. But I'm not losing money either because I don't have to finance that, right? I'm not paying a leasing charge. Our 29, our, we got 1900, and I'm paying a lease every month. I'm dumping that airplane. I can't afford $140,000 a month. That airplane has to do more than that on its ROI. I have to have a better ROI. So. My return on investment is crappy because we don't have pilots flying it. So if there's not a pilot flying it, I'm going to dump it. I, I'm going to bring right back to the lesser the next month. It's over because I cannot operate that aircraft to make money when it's sitting. That airplane would need to fly all the time. To make, does that make sense? To make money unless you buy it outright. So um, unless it's flying all the time on the line, then it makes money. Anyway. I'm probably boring everybody with this whole business thing, but that's that's what goes on behind the scenes here. It's not just, oh, this is a fun route, let's fly it. It doesn't work that way. Um, it does, uh, some of it. Obviously, that's a big part of what we do. I want to make sure the scenery that you fly to, we have good scenery for it. That um, I can make money on the route. Because, by the way, folks, we pay our pilots, too. Our pilots get... Man, shoot, you guys, you got to tell me. Uh, I'm sorry. I totally forgot, guys. I'm sorry. Look on your uh, on the overhead here. We're going MCO to LaGuardia. Now, take a look. It should have changed. We got MCO to LaGuardia. All right, good. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the upper portion of the ticker. You guys got to remind me of that to change it. It's changed mid-flight, but it's changed. Um, Patrick, is there a benefit between a wet lease versus a dry lease? Well, yeah. There's. It's a good, great question. A wet lease. It's just management. A wet lease. All you have to do is worry about. You know, are you getting sales? Are you getting ticket sales? A wet lease, because a wet lease means that, folks, what he's saying is a wet lease is the crew is not yours. We're talking flight attendants and pilots do not work for you. You're you're subcontracting out to an airline is what you're doing on a wet lease. All you're doing is just filling the airplane, right? All you're doing is trying to sell tickets. We got an area, area of turbulence here at 30,000 feet right about now, so I'm just going to keep my eye on it. Uh, I'm in a, a known area of it, so I'll give him a ride report if we get through it. So that's a wet lease. A dry lease is you just, that's what we did with the 900. We dry leased it, which means we lease the aircraft. It's our crew. It's our maintenance personnel. All of that. A wet lease is you don't have to worry about any of that. But they're not your brand either, right? So... That's a catch-22. So you got to... Would you rather your own crew operating or somebody you don't know? But that's a really good question. So that's what I'm saying about the 900. I gotta, I'm gonna, We're going to have to pull the 900s out, the 900 out, and then yank it um, and give it back to the leaser because... Or the lesser... Because we can't make money on that airplane. Not right now. Not when I'm spending $140,000 a, a month. I'm not going to never make that back. And if I did make a profit, it'd be gone in the lease. And I can't afford it because it's a bazillion dollars and I can't get a used one on the market. See what I mean? 
So we got to find a used aircraft that's available on the market. All of our 600s, we have four. They were all SAS. SAS retired and we took them. Now they're really actually chopped up, but we took them. Our 800s were uh, Norwegians. We got a group of Norwegian, ex-Norwegian 800s. This 800 is a, we got about three 800s coming in from um, Caribbean Airlines that they retired. We've got. Um, we have our 700s, mostly Southwest, old Southwest 700s. We got. So you, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we get like 70, 80 pilots and we're making good money, yeah. Watch, you know, sure. <laughs> Uh, more 87 says example of a wet leased airline is I think it's wow Atlantic I can't see what I got a little hard there but yeah that's that's exactly right um, so guys look at the look at the weather below us this is active sky weather right now um, Active sky weather. It's looking pretty good. I mean, I really, I really, um, I really like it. Look at, look at that. All right, guys, we got 1,300 in the uh, center tank. What we're going to do, we're going to open the cross feed. Valve's open. Now it's open. We're going to have a shut. I'll give you a status update. We are just approaching Virginia, North Carolina, actually. Sorry. Stand by. So you can see where we are right here. Gosh, I thought we were much closer than that. Um, you can see we're just a beam, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Sorry. Oh, I think we're just north of that, aren't we? No, we're right. We're in South Carolina right now. So we had a problem. Myrtle Beach is the air airport. If we can make it there. Williamton, Fayetteville's coming up. Fayetteville, 114.85. 114.85. One one four eight five. So hopefully this, hopefully the um the conversation here. Hopefully you like you kind of see what goes on behind the scenes of, of what what we do. We have a financial report every quarter. We we made money this quarter, with not a lot of pilots flying the line, um, which is a bummer. Which means that. Really, our charter department's keeping us alive. <laughs> you can believe that. Uh, Duck Dog, what's going on, buddy? He says, hey, man, great stream as always. Just asking, what do you use for flight control? So it's a good question. Um, my peripherals I use, let me see if I could show you the throttle. Um, this right here, so this is old school. This is from GoFlight. And go flight here. This is my setup, my 737 setup. Go flight is out of business. Got to recruit more. I think Alex. I think it would help me if I change. I'm gonna change the front page. Sean, you gotta help me on this. <laughs> it's a WordPress thing, and I don't want to screw it up. So I asked the webmaster to help me out, and he's like, "I'm busy right now." So, Sean, if you can help me, I, I think I want to do text like now hiring pilots. And then you guys can see. I'm going to move this and show you. So the yoke here is going to be from Go Flight as well. This is a 737 yoke. Um, same with my rudder pedals. But I also have the Bravo. And I have the Alpha. But the Bravo, I use the Bravo for like everything else. So the Bravo. Um, I use went for like MD-80 flights, seven CRJs. I use GA flying. I use the Bravos. Them is a 737. I have my panel here. Um, when this thing craps out on me, I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
I'll have to go get some. DC Center is offline. Let's talk about some threats, folks. We're looking at 306 miles top of descent. So let's discuss weather and everything else. What are we expecting here in the morning? Weather right now is marginal VFR. We have a change here in about five minutes. Yeah, we got to recruit more. And the, here's the problem, Alex. The, the problem with, with, I wouldn't say the problem with us, but the problem with coastal is, is um, we have, I we probably have 150 applicants. So we have a crap ton of applicants that come through. Okay. You follow me? We, I went, I'm over exaggerating. We probably had 70, since our existence, about 70 pilots, 70 to 100 pilots apply. Out of those 70 pilots, 12 have graduated. Okay. And the reason for it, like I've said before, it's like, make wait, sure was that three, five left or three, six left you want me to work? You mean I have to apply myself three, five to get something? And the answer is yes. And, and not always like that. But I think most of our pilots, most of our applicants run into time issues. They just don't have the time. Um, I think more than anything, it's that. But, but I'll give you an idea. It's not always the case. Like, we have a pilot that gets in, right? It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do the training. They get through the interview. Hey, thanks for staying on. Thanks for the services. We'll see you. Rip tight three. Um, 122 Okay, I can hear myself think. All right, here we go. So, not all pilots are like that, by the way. Not all applicants are like that. But what I think is when they get in, if they get in, they fly it, they apply themselves, they do their initial flight, which is when you when you get when you apply to Coastal, I we look at your hours in VATSIM. And then we send you a letter that says you have to fly the LaGuardia 3-1 visual, no autopilot, all out the window. No park visual, nothing like that. I want you out the window the entire flight. you got to fly it from dials or the twin tanks all the way in. And the pilots that do that and they land well, and I'm not talking about perfect, you know, on the runway, they don't. They don't. They're not all over the sky. Then you know, you know, they 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 can control the airplane well. That you get in. You you get an interview. We interview you. We go through the interview. Nobody has really failed an interview. It's not like that. Yes, we ask you questions about the 737. We ask you questions about charts, all that crap. But that's not disqualifiers because we could teach that. The problem is when they get in, it's flame out because it it it's a grind. They get into the grind and they're like, oh, crap, this is a lot of work. <laughs> and I think that's what happens. Now, the pilots who never even submit videos, they're the ones that are like, I, I don't want to do that. I just want to sign and fly. And that's perfect because then that's not coastal is not for you. If you're a sign and fly person, what I mean by that is you want to just fly a schedule. There's a bazillion VAs out there. Go knock yourself out. That's not what we're about. And Alex, I don't know how you're going to be, man, because I've had real airline pilots in here, and they're like, Jason, this is just like work. There's no different, you know, and that's the AQP program that we have. It's just like work for them. So you got to be a diehard, you know what I mean? Because most airline pilots don't want to, you know, you don't want to come home and, oh, I got to go through yearly training again. All of our pilots have to do CQ training, which is continuing qualification, every year. Now, airlines usually every six to eight months or something like that. 
uh, we do every 12 months. So every year, our pilots have to go through the program. You want to go to Dominica? Guess what? You got to go through training. Dominica is a special airport. It's really hard to land at. It's, it's a downsloping terrain. You're doing this huge, like, Shondell turn almost. And you're following this terrain all the way down a, a short runway. On the end is a beach. So we go to some challenging stuff. All fun, though, right? It just work. It, it's work. So I'll give you an idea. One of, us, one of the modules that we have, you're in Buffalo. You've got overcast conditions, 200 light rain. Okay, you take off, you get engulfed in the soup, Boop. right? You're in the soup, boom, you lose a candle. The engine's out. Number two's failed. You're an IMC and it's solid and you're getting your crap, the crap kicked out of you in turbulence. Now you got to secure an engine. All, you don't have visual conditions. You have to secure the engine. You got to climb. You got to hold. You got to come back to the airport. That's one that's one little series of, like, we have five modules. That's, I think, 300. So we have the 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 of it. If you could get through the 400 series, everything else is cake. The 500 is cake because it's just check rides. And there's four of them. But it's over. The, it's usually over the shoulder stuff. Um, if you're type rated on the 737 and you apply, you don't have to do ground school. That's over. Ground school is done. you got a type rating. You don't need ground school. Um, it's just the flying scenarios. So it kind of builds, just like a real AQP does. We build you up, and then we start failing systems and saying, put basically pushing you and the equipment to its limits. That's what we do. And a lot of people just hit that grind, and they're just like, oh, I don't want to do that. And, my gosh, we have be, be, and that's why we're hiring CRJ pilots. CRJ pilots, if you want to fly for us, you can. You can go the CRJ route. It's 50 hours on VATSIM plus um, three, only three training videos, plus like 12, but they're 12-minute video, essentially. So you're looking at four videos under maybe three, four hours of training. So your training is much, much less in terms of rigor, rigorous training than the 7-3 guys, or the 7-3 folks. Seven fives are going to be the same. Going to be pretty, pretty intense with the seven fives. Anyway, that's kind of what we're about. It's definitely unique. It's definitely different, and that's why we don't have two, three hundred, four hundred pilots flying. We have a very tight knit community, and everybody is like a family. Honestly, we're all on there. We're all on uh, Discord, and we're rousing, rousing each other all the time. Um, we know each what, what each other is doing with it, what our hobbies are. Um, we chat on Discord a lot, and that's we're very like-minded, and that's good, right? We're like-minded individuals who have the same drive and goal. It's just hard to keep going. All right. Right, but do you follow the CRM and the QRH? Yes, we do. We have our QRH. We follow QRH. We give you the QRH to run through the procedures. This stuff is not hard, Um it's just you have to apply yourself, if that makes sense. you got to apply. Anybody can do it. you just got to apply yourself and say, you know, I really want to do this. This seems like a lot of fun. Um, you got to want to be able to fail an engine. you got to want to fly a single-engine ILS approach. you want to, you got to want to do a V1 cut. you got to want to do uh, a divert, holding, um, fires all sorts of crap and then you got to want to max out the like we have crj cr um crw charlie west which is fun airport but got it we service that airport we fly into jaeger in a, in a 700 and one of the modules is you have a 90 degree crosswind at 35 knots in a very short runway with, with terrain everywhere and it is a flipping blast you are getting out of that C when you're done with that scenario, you're like, holy crap. Like, you're sitting there huffing and puffing because it is a nail biter, and it's fun, though. Yeah, Alex, I mean, uh, you're right. But that's what, so I built, excuse me, I built the AQP, which is 
the airline qual program. We got 170 pounds in the center. We'll be kicking that off here shortly. Just want you to know. That's my reminder to shut off the, the center tank pumps. But like, I want you to know, like you're, you know, um, what happens when you graduate, right? What happens? What do you get? What it's what's in it for you? We give you, you get your own ID badge. This thing right here. We send you this. If you wanted the lanyard and the other badge, you can. I think it's like 12 bucks for for every you know for everything. Plus, we send you a bag tag. You get an actual metal bag tag that says trained. You know your crew base is on at Miami. We only have one crew base right now. Um, so we give our folks a lot, and we only we only expect one flight every 30 days. <laughs> And some of our pilots are having tough times doing that. And I get it. Time gets in the way. I totally understand. Because um, time is, you know, if you don't have time, it's really hard. I think that's the biggest hurdle to everybody, man. It's time. Because I got one pilot that did the whole entire AQP or training. Now, we have, when I say an AQP, I mean an airline qual program. That is this this training program is based off of a real world airline training program. Now, having said that, it's definitely paired way down. Because if you were re really if we would have done a real airline training program, you're talking eight hours a day every day, four hours of briefing, four hours of flight every day for like three weeks. That's a real air AQP. It is it's grueling. It's a grind, and you're just you're just getting the snot kicked out of you all the time. And ours is nothing like that. And by the way, we do air work. So we might have rejected takeoffs. One of them is stalls, steep turns. Okay, how does the airplane turn with spoilers? When you have spoilers out, how does the airplane react? Does it turn quicker? Yes. In the 737, your, your, roll, weight, your roll rate is much faster. Can the airplane turn just the rudder on the 737? Yes, we show you how to do that. Can you get an upset on a 737 just using the rudder? Yes, and we show you that. That's what I'm talking about. All the air work you're going to have to do. You're going to have to stall the airplane. You're going to have to learn to recognize the stall. Um, you know, um, upset training. I'm big on upset training. So our year last, our, our AQP, not our AQP, our CQT training, which is called continuing quali qualification training <clears throat> in December. We all went through it. We had to go through U UPRTs, upset training. Okay, it's upset recovery training. All of us had to do it, and and not just that. There was that one. There was a couple ILS approaches and some curveballs that were thrown at you. Nothing like you get initial training. It's nothing. It's not that intense, but <clears throat> it's it's fun. You know, it's those things that you never do in the simulator. Because right now, we just fly A to B. Nothing happens. Well, you hope nothing happens. That's how it is on the line. You hope. But when you get... You know, folks, think about it. When you're sitting there and we're flying, let's say it's let's say it's gusting 25, 30 knots in LaGuardia. I don't want you going, oh, boy, I don't know if I could do that. When you get through our training, you're going to be like, got it. Why? Because you've demonstrated you've done it already. And not only have you done it already, you've done it at a 35-knot crosswind. I mean, a 35-knot... Shoot, there's the gas. <laughs> I said... I got distracted again. I said I was going to turn that off. And, dang it. Oh, well. Anyway, that's the deal. Captain Shakia, what's going on, man? He says, that's, that's, my, that's my thing. I'd love to join, but being full-time 141. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly right, dude. I think that's most of our, most of our pilots have that time constraint where they're like man i can't dedicate you know but it's self-paced which is good right i have one pilot knock it through in two and a half weeks it was done with the entire thing and i went wow that was good and some pilots that just got in after six months and we give you a limit of six months but you have a syllabus to follow um alex i don't know man it'd be interesting to see i've had a couple of um airline pilots interview and they were like I don't know if I want to do this this is just like work <laughs> this reminds me of work and I'm like yeah uh, yeah that's kind of what it is <laughs> anyway 
Get a tag for a suitcase? Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you my bag tag. And it comes it comes free with um, your graduation. You won't get a livery either. You'll get a livery upon graduation. Your matter of fact, your last your last check ride, you get a livery. you 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 get to download and you get access to the intranet and you can download our liveries and you can download dude we have you sign an NDA, a non disclosure agreement, when you join. Because we don't want you to give away 300 and something pages of our FOM. Um, and each FOM is tied to a pilot in terms of metadata. So you have an ID on your FOM. Now, don't freak out. But it's, it's, it's basically an agreement that you're not going to share these documents. Because I went and it took me six and a half months to write 375 pages. And I took... Again, it took best practices for three airlines. I'm not going to tell you which they are. We had a cut. We had one European and two U.S. I jammed them all together. And I'm like, what, what procedures do I like the best? What, what, what don't I like? Um, so, it's very unique. But again, I think at the end of the day, and I'm going to show you this. But at the end of the day, you got to want to do it, right? You got to say, and then not only that. You gotta have the time, like, like Shaquille. You, you're smart, man. That's a smart move. Where you're like, I don't have time for this, and that's good. That's what I want to hear, because what you don't want to do is apply, and then you don't get through the training and you flame out, and then I gotta send you a, res- a resignation, a, a termination, letter and say you didn't meet your time constraints. Um, and I get it. It happens. I totally understand. It's life. Life happens. All right, you get this. You guys see that? You get a bag tag right here. This is metal. We got Coastal Airways flight crew out of Miami. And then on the back side, it says, it says, hashtag fly the shark. That's who we are. And then we've got flycoastalairways.com. Trained beach bum. That's what kind of what you are when you graduate this program. It's a big, big deal. And I want you to get something from it. I want you to get something out of it. Um, and, and then another thing is, are you really going to quit after you get through the training? <laughs> I hope not, right? I want you to be a lifer, man. And that's and that's not all the time. Again, Traffic. Traffic. what do you got here? We got somebody at 100 feet low. I'm looking out the window. He's no factor. Let's see. See an interceptor? Whoa! Look at this guy. <laughs> right over the top. Yeah, that freaked him out, didn't it? Descend. Descend. Yeah, we're good. He's climbing. Where are you, dude? See ya. He's on the climb. Delta airplane. We're good. Clear of conflict. As the airplane rolls into him. Yeah, he's, he was climbing. We were good. That was fun. <laughs> now, very important. I'm looking forward to it. Perhaps I get into your program. Alex, I'm sure you will, buddy. And you have real-world experience, you said? We got 165 top of descent. Guys, let's get the weather here. We got to get going. Saves people time and resources of CRM. Yes. Now, very important. I don't wear this in real world. In the real world. What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> Are you talking about the bag tag? <laughs> Rather than mess mass recruit, but yet most don't have time. Yeah, it's that's the problem. You gave him some light chop. <laughs> oh, that was funny, Scott. <laughs> Alright, Alex, I'll take a look, buddy. <laughs> Delta, Delta, we can report my chop. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> and guys, I don't want to. We're gonna get into the top of descent because I like to do it early, and I got to do it right now. So stand by. It's not. It's not a VFR day. All right, I'm gonna look at Discord right now. Alex, that's hilarious. Let me see. All right, we got eight messages. Cool.
Yeah, cool. Yep. Good stuff, man. That's that's what we're about, dude. I'm just looking at your uh, your. Yeah, good stuff. All good stuff. I, I really want to do a course on threat and error management. I think maybe we do that on CQ next year. I don't know. Um, but that's that's important. By the way, um, the lanyard. Yes. Oh, you mean to wear the lanyard? <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, I love it. I had a we had a pilot that actually put. I think he wore one of these ones. It was hilarious. He didn't do it at work, but he put it on like we was walking around the airport with it. <laughs> it's funny. And we have wings, by the way. You guys see these? This is real world wings, and our pilots can purchase these. So we have real world wings and we have that. <laughs> what airline do you know? What virtual airline has real badges? That's a hat cap badge. I, I'm a traditionalist. All my pilots would wear this and this uniform. They would be wearing a coat the whole nine yards. I want everybody in a hat because I'm a tradition. I like tradition. There's something about nostalgia. I love it. <laughs> That's funny cool all right let's get on this let's get some weather right let's go we got weather coming up here in um got about 142 miles i'll let the passengers know that we're going to be uh, descending shortly in about 20 minutes or so the arrival weather is iffy we should have a delay though thank you all right, let's go ahead and do the weather into the garbage. Let's go weather right now in the garbage. One six zero at seven knots. Great visibility down below those clouds. It's ten miles visibility. Below the clouds, it's perfect. Ten miles. One six zero at seven. So what runway? Probably going to have us land on. Arriving 2-2. Two, two. It's a nice runway to, to arrive on. So we'll, we'll, we'll take 2-2. Two, two. We'll have to vector ourselves around a little bit. Looks like Jax is on. Montreal is on. But that's it. So we'll probably vector ourselves in. No. That's the other question. When you, when you fly for you... Wait. When you fly for you... <laughs> Are you required to wear the uniform? No, you're not. <laughs> you're not required to wear the uniform. I, re I wear the uniform because it's kind of my brand, but you don't have to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I know I don't have the time to do the full program, but I so thoroughly enjoy these because it's learning some skills. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that, folks. That's at the end of the day, this amps up your 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 realism, right? I'm all, I think we're all about, especially at the Flight Sim Broadcasting Network, we're all about pushing the, that realism. We want you to get the most out of your sims. Now, is that for everybody? No. Some people like just to just to fly around and, and have fun, and that's totally cool. Um, that's why you're never going to see me fly a gazillion aircraft types. I can't do that. Because for me... Like, and that's why I don't want to learn the the, the Airbus, because it's going to take me to reprogram this, and I don't want to do that. It was hard enough to learn the MD-80. And I'm not, when, I, when I learn an airplane, folks, I'm in the manuals. It's not just, I think I know how to start it. No, I'm in the manuals studying everything. And that's why I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that, right? The 757, I'm full in, man. I'm all in that aircraft. Okay, I've got a full mock-up already in, in terms of a flow trainer. I got the flows going. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm all in. You're going to see a lot of 7.5 action on this on this channel when it comes out. Let's get to the weather. We've got uh, 160. we got to start preparing for our descent here. I don't want to get stuck. But I want you guys in the chat right now, give me three threats that you see in LaGuardia that we could run into. Three threats. While I do this, 10 statute miles of ability, sky conditions overcast at 1100 feet, temperatures 9, 2.6 altimeter, coming in 30 decimal 06. 
ILS runway 22, approach in use, landing runway 22, departing 113. Okay, let's go into the Faith, excuse me, the uh, Proud 2 arrival. And I'm going to show you, folks, we're going to do a quick briefing. We got some time to do a briefing. I'm going to just do it really quick. Let's go to arrive. Shoot. Let's go to arrival. LaGuardia. We're going to do the Proud 2. And let's take a look. This is what we got. I'm going to zoom in for you. Okay. I'm going to look at my app as my app. My, um, this. So you can see what I'm doing down here. I'm looking at my FMC, which is on my iPad here. So I've got legs page coming in. We got gears. We go Hertz. Grok. Okay, Hertz and Grok. Hytra. Prince. Ridgey at 27,000. That is set in my FMC. I see it. So I'm going to give you a thumbs up on that. ENO. By the way, I didn't do a burn check. Dang it. I should have done one of those. I was just yapping too much. 220. If we were flying the MD-80, I'd be doing a burn check. Like every 30 minutes. 17,000 and above. We're good on that. Then we got 17,000 um, at Edgar. Or Edger. 7, 13 and 7. That's set. Davies at 13. Brand at 11. Holly Brand. Corey at 10. Hard altitude set. Then we're going to go to Revenue and Apple. Let's take a look at the arrivals into this airport and let's see i'm just going to go ahead and click that button and let's look at the uh, approaches while you guys come up with some threats i want to hear three threats three of them and then we're going to talk about mitigations on those threats so ils runway 22 by the way i am flying so <laughs> that's a threat okay after you saw my last flight you're probably like oh yeah that's a threat <laughs> it's like cliff again all right, we could fly an SA approach. There's no point. It's it's just low ceilings. We're looking at, and even 1100 is not low. So just to give you an idea, we could bring it all the way down to RVR 1800 or a half mile visibility. That's awesome. So we're looking at an ILS 200 feet. I don't even. It's a visual approach, folks. We're gonna pop under the cloud. It's all visual in. So no problems there. Okay. So we're gonna brief that, but we're gonna do this yeoman. Do a nice stabilized approach into the area um that's kind of the vectors they'll probably give us is they'll probably send us over the huts in here and then we'll flip around this way and then we'll come in that's kind of how they usually do it they don't like this to go around jfk so they'll send us up here it's a really fun um, we'll probably be in the soup but nevertheless it would be a really fun approach so that's kind of what we're going to do 224, 110.5 on the frequency. Looking at MSA at 2900 on this, on the west side. 21, excuse me, 2900 on the west side, 2100 on the east side. And if we do need to go missed, we're going to climb 3,000 feet direct to Proud and probably hold there. Do you have any questions? Good. So let's go ahead and set this up. Come in here, we're going to go click. Arrivals, departures. We're going to go to arrivals. We're going to select ILS 22. No transition. Enter. And we're going to go to the legs. So from Proud, we are going to vector us. We should have vectors to Yeoman. And we'll. And I'm not going to do Yeoman because Yeoman takes us. Wait, hold on. I want to make sure before I say something stupid that that's true. Where is Yeoman? No. We're going to go vectors to Yeoman. And yes, technically we don't have to go that far. We're going to do runway 22. Now we're going to do a full procedure. This is going to be a full ILS approach. Okay. Um, I really technically don't have to do this because it's marginal VFR just because of the ceilings are low. But let's go ahead and do a programmed full approach. And what I'm going to do by that is I'll show you. So instead of doing runway 22 in the scratch pad, which we generally normally would do, and then we would set our rings from there, we're going to do um, coastal company procedure, which means we're going to set that up at Greco. And Greco, by the way, Greco is the IAF. You can see right here. It's the initial. Boom. It's the glide slope intercept angle. Okay, it's at Greco. 
So Greco, we're going to go ahead and take the intercept from Greco. Now, we're going to come down here and we're going to put Greco in the scratch pad. And then we're going to go to fix page and we'll dump Greco here. Then we're going to go slash 15. And by the way, this is coastal procedures. Now, if you folks weren't here, if I wasn't, weren't talking to you, um, I would be in my manual right now. I'd be looking at our EFOM and just thumbing through it like, okay, matter of fact, how long do we have? Because we've got everything set up. I, shoot, I need to do landing data. So let's do the landing data really quick. You can see the clouds increasing. It's good to see. Again, we're using active sky, so I like to see the clouds increasing. That's good. It's a good sign. All right, let's go landing dispatch. We're going to go landing and route. Three, five, negative. We're going to go two, two. We're going to pull in that aircraft out in there. Flap 40. This is an 800. We've got to be pretty aggressive. Packs are on. Anti-ice is off. Maybe. Okay, so it's 48 degrees. I'm going to say engines only, okay? So we're going to keep the engines on. We might, we might get lucky and pop out and not need that. Auto brake, let's plan two. We're probably going to need three. This is an 800. Uh, import the weather there. And then let's click calculate. What are we looking at? So this is just going to spit out some preliminary. 58, 43, 7,001. It doesn't give us anything else. Okay, so great. Now I'm going to use VTP. VTP is going to give us a heck of a lot more than, than that. And we're going to plug in VTP right now. I'm going to show you folks on, on VTP. Captain Shaquille, great to see a familiar name. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, Marco, we got Patrick says weather hold. That's a good threat. Yes. Is upset recovery for the 737 the same as in GA? Are you familiar with in blue power, though? In the brown power down. Uh, it's a little different, um, Shaq. It, it, it's more of the pointer, um, but it's the same kind of principles. It's just a little different in terms of, you know, you're in a dive, you're increasing airspeed. Yeah, you want to you want to kill the power. Um, you know, when you're nose high, like this, uh, you don't want to push power in. Because on a jet like that, there's so much, let me rephrase that, on wing-mounted engines, your CG, your, your moment, is going to go up. So you're going to increase, it's going to be, it's going to worsen the thing. So you actually decelerate, roll the aircraft, and let the nose come down. You don't push it, you just unload. That's the first thing you want to do. Unload neutral. No, nothing. You know, unload it. Get the load off the wings. That's like they teach you. They teach you how to swept back wings. It's just unload first. Everything is unload. Okay. All right. Let's go into this. Um, and then we're going to go into your threats here in just a minute. So we're going to do landing. And I'm going to show you the difference between theirs and this one. This one is, is the, the... This takes the cake. We're going to do runway 2-2. Two, two. We are landing. We are going to be... Ignore the gradient. I don't have to worry about that. Conditions. Go ahead and throw our conditions in there. Flaps are going to be 40. Auto off. Anti-ice is going to be the engines. Brakes all. None NNC. We're going to do auto on there and then idle reverse. Nope. We're going to go full reverse. All right. We're doing landing weight. What did we say? 140... 144 on the landing weight so far. So we're going to do 144. I don't know if you guys, you guys probably, you can't see what I'm doing, but anyway, it's 144. We're going to keep it at five knots. And then I'm going to select calculate and see what it comes out with. And I'll tell you the difference between this one and that one. Patrick, runway shut down for emergency landing comms loss weather hold. Oh, baby. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. I like that. All right, folks, take a look at this. 
What do we got? It says, and what I'd like to do is come over here and I'm going to click add the graphic. Now, what are we looking at? Max manual braking, 4,200 feet. Max auto braking, 4,900 feet. This is to stop. Okay. We are landing en route. Yes, we are. Max manual braking. Max auto, we talked about that. And then auto brake 3, 6720. Okay, so auto brake 3, 6720 with flap 40. We have a ref of 146. Now I know what you're saying. 6720 at max at auto brake 3. Okay, you with me? Okay. I want you to keep that number in your head, that 6720, and say, Jason, this is a 7,000 foot runway. Wrong. It's not a 7,000 foot runway. And then you're going to say, what are you talking about? It's it's not, it, it's the Guardia. It says 7,100 feet right here. Wrong. It's not a 7,000 foot runway. Let's show you why. And if you're a father of this channel, you're going to know already what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull the airport information chart up. And I'm also going to put this one up. And this little guy tells us a lot. And it says runway 22. Ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> Landing beyond threshold. Right here. Your glide slope, 5984. That's how much runway we have at a perfect 3 degree glide slope shooting the ILS. That's why in this airport... We have to do a duck under. The reason why, I'll tell you, we won't have anything. It'll just be water. So we're assured, there's, there, you know, unless there's a boat with a sailboat, um, water. So duck unders, I know what you're saying. Oh, my gosh. Why would you do a duck under? To get more runway. This is LaGuardia, folks. I'm not screwing around. This is an 800. It's LaGuardia. we got to plant the thing down. As close as I can to that thousand foot mark. Okay? I want to land within the first 1500 feet. That is a threat that I'm going to take. The threat in LaGuardia is an overrun. That's one of my threats. I'll give you guys the rest, but that's mine. My threat is LaGuardia. So, how are we going to mitigate this? We're going to mitigate by doing the following. You with me? Let's go. We're looking at 50. I'm going to write this down. 59.84. Now, that is the, the distance I am going to um, say as my landing runway available. Because what happens if we're on a final approach and it goes crap? We got nothing out the window. We hit 1,000 feet. Boom, I see nothing. We got to shoot that approach in. It's going all the way down. And I'll set the DH and all that stuff here in a minute. I know we're getting close to the top of the set. I'm going to go ahead and set this down. I don't want to lose it. So... Give me a sec. Let me just drop this and then we'll, we'll start. That's right. That's why the RDA changes. That's right. All right. So we're looking at, um, what did I say? I'll do 11,000-ish. 7,000 for now. We'll hold that for now. Um, so my track... My, my thought process 5984 you with me that's 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 our that's our drop dead number that's that's me being conservative and saying okay if we can't duck under we're gonna shoot we're, we're gonna we're gonna land this airplane and stop it with that distance so let's go back to our numbers here I know you can't see it dang it I should have done it on this one I don't know what it's showing you I got low power mode I gotta plug in my uh, iPad really quick my other one here. Okay, bear with me. All right, that's at auto break three. Now, can we even do auto break three? The answer is no. Auto break three, folks. Can you see that? You can't see it. But auto break three says 6,700 feet. We don't have it. We have 5,900 feet. That's all I got. So that out. <laughs> then we're going to do max auto. 49.42. Max manual, 42.13. So let's do max auto brake, 49.42. So I'm going to come up here 
And I'm going to say, all right, max auto break it is. So we're going to go ahead and set that right now. Max auto break, done. Okay. Flap 40, max auto break. It gives us, and I'm verifying it is an 800. So I'm looking at it is an 800. And um, auto break is going to be max. We already set that. Landing distance required with max auto braking is 49.42. So about 1,000 feet to play with. Okay? Oh, sorry. 49.42. With a VRF of 146. But wait, you're not done. <laughs> what do you say? What do you mean, Jason? You're not done. And I'll tell you why you're not done. We have a heating issue now. Well, what do you mean? Okay, so this is what's really cool about VTP. This here does not give you what I was talking about. This doesn't give you anything. You don't know jack squat about your brakes. Well, this one does. All right? I am looking at auto brake max auto on factor distance, which I, I want factored, which means flare. Factor distance, I want flare, arrest, land. 49.42. You ready for this? 33 minutes. Thirty-three minutes. Oh my crap. This is why we do proving flights. So I can't turn this airplane in thirty-three minutes. I gotta make it maybe a forty minute turn to cool the dang brakes. Okay? And then not to mention when we take off, I've gotta cool the brakes another six minutes with the gear down. Six minutes airtime. No, I'm sorry. Um, if we had the air, it would be six minutes. So, 33 minutes just to cool the brakes down. BTMS gives us a 3.8, which is a, a like a measurement scale. <laughs> Yikes! Cool stuff, right, guys? 33 minutes. So, I have wrote that down on my numbers in red to tell me... We got a 32, 33 minute ground hold, you know, for turn. So I'm probably gonna have to make the, the, the schedule a little, a big pad in LaGuardia. And that's what you don't get in a 700, right? You don't have to really worry about that. You do in the eights. All right, seatbelts coming on. Let's talk about threat error management, fasten seatbelts. One, one more thing I wanna talk about is where we're gonna touch down at. So let's talk about a plan on where we're actually going to land. Uh, it's one thing to, you know, discuss all this, but let's talk about actually the touchdown point and where we want to land at to give us the best stopping capabilities. How's that? Okay, something really cool. There's scale on here. You see the scale? Now you could do it here. I'm going to do it on my iPad here. But you see the scale right here? You take your thumb and your tip to your knuckle. And you can measure that until you get about, from here to here, about 1,000 feet or 500, whatever scale you want to use. Now that is going to be two knuckle widths. So that's going to be this to here, to the mid knuckle, is what I'm looking at on my screen. So if I did that, I could go two, two. We need to be on the ground, uniform, no more past this. If we're past runway one three we're going around does everybody understand that so if we are not on the ground by one three it is out of there we're out of dodge we good is everybody good with that plan good let's go back into runway two two and let's get this programmed and ready to go all right one one zero decimal five let's go and plug that in there you following me here? One one zero decimal five. Now we could we could choose to do an HGS approach, which I'm gonna do. It's just good practice. One one zero point five. I haven't done one in probably about two three weeks. One one zero point five. They are both set up. So you would set them on both. Nav one and Nav two. We've got that set up there. We're gonna come over to here and say runway elevation. In this particular runway, we're looking at an elevation of 12 feet. 
So I'm going to plug that in there, right? 12 feet elevation, click enter. Then we're hit it again. Length, 7,100. You put your just runway length in there. Now you can put your factor in there, but that doesn't help you. Is it three degree glide slope? Yes, we're good. That is now set. One thing we have to do is set our course. So course is on both sides, 224 on this side. Seatbelts are on, yeah. 224, set. Same with this side, FO side, 224. You can't see it, but I'll tell you. Set, okay. So now we're set on both sides, left and right. Good? All right. The aircraft is set up. The airplane set up. We have a good plan in place. Let's plug LaGuardia in, 113.1 in the hole. So in case we need to go around or something like that, we've got it on the back up. We can see what's going on. Jack Center, Mi Minneapolis, and Montreal are on. New York is not. I'm going to get a drink of water. Let's talk about threats. So we got one threat, right? My threat was short runway. We've got to make sure we plan it on the ground. There is no style points for this, folks. I don't care how how hard I land. As long as I don't blow the struts out of the wing, I don't care. 300, 400 feet, fine. As long as we stay under 600, I'm good. All right. Another mitigation tool is the HUD. I'm going to use the HUD. Your threats. Shaquille says, weather. It is. Congested airspace. It is. Big hotspot. Multiple taxiway mistakes can be made. I love it. I love it. So, let's talk about weather. Well, how do we mitigate with the weather? We discussed our missed approach, right? We discussed that we're, we're going to use... We're actually going to go full out on this and use the full ILS. We also talked about we're going to use the HUD. All mitigated threats, good. I'm going to throw terrain on as well on our ND, just in case we run into any issues. And I'm also going to plug in into the uh, fix page. If I could go to page two, I'm just going to do this. And then I'm going to go slash 25. Because that 25 nautical mile ring is going to give me, let me know our MSA. Okay, that 2,900 versus whatever. Looking out the window, folks, it doesn't look too bad outside right now. Um, we are on the arrival. We're in Jersey, so things might be a little more hairy as we get close to uh, New York. But I don't, I don't see the issue. The smart pilot. Risk runway incursion. Yes. So another really really interesting one is the runway curve. So we got the weather sorted from Shaq. Congested airspace, we'll talk about that, kind of deals with you, the smart pirate, as well. And crossing runway operations, same kind of thing, right? We got um, runway incursions and crossing runway, we do. So this this airport has got 2-2 two, two, and 3-1. They're taking off on 3-1, they're landing 2-2. Two, two. So in real world, they take off, they land. They take off, they land. They take off, they're just like that. It's a conveyor belt. Um, welcome to LaGuardia. That's why there's so much backups here. The cool thing about 2-2, another good thing, we are in the Marine Air Terminal in Terminal A, and we'll be parking at Gate 6. On the approach, we are going to turn on our APU. And the reason why we're doing that is because right when we stop this airplane, we're immediately at the gate. So it's it's going to take a longer time to get the dang APU started. Engine cool down might be an issue. So we're going to have to start the timer when we land, okay, to cool those engines down. Good. You mean Jay Z? Joy Z? Joy Z. Joy Z. That's what I mean. Joy Z. Yeah. Um, it's so true. Uh, runway shutdown for emergency. Patrick says runway shutdown for emergencies. Landing. Okay, comms, loss, and weather hold. Okay, weather hold, we've discussed. We'll, we'll hold it proud if we had to. 
and we know our bingo fuel. Okay, how much fuel do we have in the aircraft? We have 14.6 right now. So we have 14,600 pounds of fuel. Perfect. We need, remember I told you why we wrote the bug out? Our bug out fuel is 8.9. So our bug out fuel is 8.9. We have 14. Perfect. All right, we're going to start our descent here shortly. We'll start our descent checklist. We usually wait until after 18,000 and we start the descent flow. Okay. Kepsch Keel says temp and dew point are within five. Expect fog. Okay. Great. That's a really good thing. All about that stuff. Again, mitigating. How are we going to mitigate the fog? We're flying a full HGS approach. One thing I need to do, folks. I got to set my DH. I didn't set that up. So let's go in and do that. Our DH right now is 200 feet. There you go. And that's a Cat 1 approach. I'm not going to do anything else other than that. If it gets down to Cat 2 or 3, or we can't do it uh, 3. We'd have to do a 2SA, which we can do. Okay, but right now we're just going to set it up for 200. A DA. Uh, our DH is 200 feet, and that's radio, and we are going to use the radio altimeter on this. Okay, so flip to the radio. Radio is 50. We're not going to set it to 50. We're going to set it to 200. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, you're flying an HGS approach. Yes, but I'm not doing a, a, an SA Cat 1. It doesn't call for that just yet. If the weather gets crappy from now until then, yeah, then we will. There you go. 200 radio altimeter set. It, it's really 212 or, or that one, but I'm going to set the radio just in case. All right. Um, we're looking at 300... Zero, zero, 3006. There you go. Uh, I'm going to call the flight attendants early and let them uh, and get them get them preparing the cabin. Flight attendants prepare the cabin for landing. Thanks. Um, don't buzz the tower. I won't. <laughs> Did you hear about that? You guys hear about that? Crazy. You had a Southwest flight flying runway four, and by the way. That's an uncoupled approach, which means you can't fly that ILS with the autopilot on. It's uncoupled. You have to fly it manually. But they got a HUD, unless the HUD's in an op, and then they don't. So I don't know if it was the, the captain flying or the first officer flying. Anyway, it was an absolute debacle. All right, overhead panel. Here we go. On, on depressurizing. So I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that. Continuous, continuous. One, two, three. Wing lights are on. Taxi lights, I'm just putting those on for now. And when we hit 10,000, I'll go ahead and throw the uh, lights on. All right, folks, ready? Those folks in the chat right now who are members, shoots on. Let's do this thing. By the way, who's going to... Is anybody going to FS Expo? Thank you for your attention. Anybody watching going? Scott should go. Scott, you should go to the Expo, dang it. I'm not done with my champagne. <laughs> That's funny. All right, belts on. We're going to shoots on here. Let's do this thing. And folks, if you're watching, hopefully you got something out of this. Do me a favor. Just right now, just hit the subscribe button. Say, you know what? I'm going to subscribe to this guy. He's a clown. That'd be perfect. Jax, MSP, Montreal. I don't see any air traffic controllers on. All right. We got our parachutes on. We're ready to go, man. <laughs> Mark, I love it. You're going, Shaquille? Let's do it. You got to see me. Come and visit me. I'll be at the uh, Navigraph booth. So just grab me. Somewhere. We're walking around. It's fun meeting everybody. I love it. It's a good time. Alright, there's 13,000. Looking good. Alright, folks. Any questions and what did I miss? I know I missed something. Does anybody have anything else I missed? Marco, have you seen another close call in DCA? I, I saw briefly. I didn't read about it, so I don't know what happened. 
But, um, yeah. And that's why, by the way, that's why I start at 160 miles from top of the scent because of that. Right? You want to get all the briefing down and you want to, you want to do it. Let's run a checklist. Altimeters and bugs are set and cross-checked. VRAF is... And the target set and noted, I've got, uh, what do we say, 146. I've got 146 on here. I'm just forcing that in there. Okay. Auto brake is maximum. Start switches are on. Recall checked. We are done. Set check list is complete. I'll make sure to do it. Yeah, man. It's always fun. It's going to be in Vegas. Good stuff. All right. So, Active Sky, what do you think, folks, right now? What's your thoughts? Do you guys like it? I mean, it's looking cool. Now, I haven't seen anything vertical yet, so I haven't seen anything in the upper altitudes. Remember, we're looking at 11, 1,100 feet broken, so. Um, J-Foot, what with that DCA event, is it normal for a ground control to clear a plane across an active runway? Um, normally, it depends on the airport, right? Um, usually a tower controller will do that. And they say, once you're crossed, then call. I don't know. I don't know the facts of, of what happened. So I've got to read about it. Does Coastal let the players into the cockpit during the flight for a hockey charter? Yes. Yes. Of course we do. Our Temi Panarin sits on our jump seat every flight in the, in the day. But I own the airline. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's against FAA policy. Yeah, yeah I understand. Um, you kind of wonder what happened. How did how did they find out? Right? All right, folks. Here we go. There's 10,000 feet at Corey. Passengers are getting hungry. Okay. <laughs> so? <laughs> but only after a win. Exactly. Patrick. What does he say? Just want to let you know. Both good luck. We're counting on you. Exactly. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, there we go. There's 10,000. We're on level here. And we are approximately at the depot, which is 10,000 even. We're going to go ahead and start our descent. We're going to go down to 5,000. Here we go. I'm expecting some kind of a weather update here. Did we get a weather update, folks? I don't know. Anybody in LaGuardia? It's exactly right after a win. You don't do that on a loss. Let's take a peek. Airports, LaGuardia, weather. Same thing, 10 miles of overcast to 1,200. 422 is closed. Wait a minute. Everything's closed. <laughs> 422 is closed. Runway 1331 is closed. They're arriving 31. One seven zero at ten. No. No. 
We're not gonna go 3-1 right now. There's no way. Flight attendants are calling me. Hang on. Hello. Hi, Captain. All passengers are seated and secured for landing. Okay, take your seats. No problem. All stations, landing position, please. One seven zero. That gives us a tailwind on three one. I'm not doing that. They just closed the airport, folks. It's one o'clock in the morning, so they didn't close the airport, but they basically closed the airport. They don't have any flights coming in. It's probably curfew. Yeah, one six zero seven. We're definitely not landing three one. That's a tailwind. No. LaGuardia traffic. Let me give him a call. One one eight point seven. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it, buddy. All right. LaGuardia traffic, Riptide 3, we're going to be setting up for runway 2-2. Uh, two, two. Anybody in the pattern? That's probably all JFK traffic right there. If the Rangers win the cup, does Adam Fox get to fly a leg? You're not kidding. I'll let the whole team fly a leg. That's what I'd say. <laughs> That'd be a huge party. Hopefully we do it on home ice. Riptide 3, this is a Delta 8882. We just departed about five, ten minutes ago. I believe everyone's landing on runway 31. Roger. Three, one. That's a problem. That's just a localizer approach. Seven knot tailwind in LaGuardia? Really? That's a tailwind. One three is coming in behind you. We're going to go to Proud, going to go over the, um, I'm going to stick it on 2-2, two, two, folks. I, I'm not taking a 3. There's no way I'm taking a 7-knot tailwind in LaGuardia. Let's see something really quick. Yeah, that's a 5-knot tailwind. No, I'm not doing that. Unable. I'm not even plugging in the numbers. I'm just saying it's unable because <clears throat> it's already tight. We're going to go 2-2. Two, two. <clears throat> hey, you guys know what the base of the clouds were? Uh, around 1,100, I think. <clears throat> um, yeah, we're not doing that. All right, here we go. I'm just thinking I don't want to take a, t a five knot tailwind. That's for sure. A five knot tailwind would push us off the runway, folks. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of freaking traffic. Holy smokes. Look at all that traffic. It's, it's probably JFK. I'm definitely not compromising that.
We're gonna hit proud and vector off. Why am I seeing all this traffic? I don't have fly-by-wire on, do I? Do you guys see all these targets? Yeah, it's, um... You know, if I do this... And I say this and I click runway 31 and then I hit calculate let's see what it does to us guys I don't know if I have FSLT on or not I can't tell this is a lot of traffic <laughs> I had a blast doing the Oilers playoff live flights last year yeah even as a couch pilot yeah, it is fun. Okay, guess what? Our charts say... Nope. 4530... 4500 feet. Max auto is 5312. Yeah, nope, I'm good. We're not going to screw with that. I just don't know if I have fly-by-wire on. Okay, once we hit proud, we're going to break off, and we're going to go over the Hudson. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now. Heading select, please. Going over the Hudson. Here we go. This gets us out of the way from departing traffic. Send down to 5,000. And we're going to go ahead and descend down a little bit more. So you guys can't see it, but we're over the Hudson River. Just, just on the brink of the Hudson. I want to keep descending down. These four flights over in Long Island are going to JFK. I thought so. Okay, thanks, buddy. Appreciate you guys helping me out on that. I can't wait till we get that implemented next. That'll be really fun. Okay, I'm going to go vertical speed, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop down about 450, 550 feet a minute. And we're going to go, we're vectoring ourselves for 2-2. Two, two. So we're going over the Hudson River now, and it'll be a Over nice... Uh, 213, pushing back from gate 1-9, or facing south. I got a Delta aircraft. Okay, um, temperature's plus eight. I'm going to go ahead and start throwing on the um, engine anti-ice is coming on. I'm just going to put it on now. I'm going to have to turn them off in the, uh, when we get there. I'm going to go ahead and set another about five degrees over. It's going to help us kind of get vectored. 4,000 set. Oh, I love this. So Active Sky is just like blanket. <laughs> it's like overcast. It is overcast, I thought, in the free in the in the weather, isn't it? Doing the best I can, folks, trying to vector myself in. Not easy to do. Looks like I take a heading of about maybe right over here. Yeoman, we need to be at um, 3,000, so let's go descend down to three. 3,000 set, heading is coming in 030. Set up 040. That'll probably get a, give us a good vector. Over to Yeoman. And I am going to superimpose my chart right on here. 
So, minus 2 2. Superimpose it. There we are. Beauteous. I'll take the weather off. It's better. Now we're pretty much on a downwind. Yeoman coming in, 4,000. Temperatures plus 10. Temperatures. Uh, Coming off. Wait a minute. Cap. Yeah, we're good. Okay, 1,000 to go. Let's slow it down. Flaps up. Plus 11. So we're good on icing. We don't need any of that. Yeoman only gives us five miles. Do you believe that? Holy smokes. We've got to start slowing down even further. Greco. Let's uh, set up... No, Yeoman and then Greco. Oh, that's right. That's right. I know why. Okay. We're good. <laughs> I'm thinking... Wait a minute. That ain't right. No, I know why. That's because Greco is our, our setup point, not the airport. All right, we're looking good on speed. I love it. This is a nice stable. Nice stabilized approach. <sighs> okay, we'll set up the heading here. All right, looking good. I'd take some water here. Uh. Okay, we're at flap up maneuvering speed, so we're in a good good position. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and identify um, I U R D. You can see that right there. Iard, we have identified the ILS. Seven fourteen, we push and start nose facing uh, to the northwest. All right, we're good right here. And I'll try to get this center the best I can. Laguardia traffic, Riptide three, setting up for downwind runway two two on oh, Laguardia. About 15 out uh, from Yeoman. Coastal needs to do the next season charter for the new Salt Lake City NHL team. We are. <laughs> Friend, we're good to go. All right, we're going to roll the heading in. You ready for flaps five? Let's go. Get her out there. Flaps five coming in. One, two, three. Uh, 3,000 feet. 190 on the speed. Here we go. You were Nate, you'd say, I got ground contact. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was hilarious. What's this Jaboni doing? Okay, 180 on the speed. Set. Armed. Guardia traffic, Riptide 3 on a base from runway 22 at Yeoman. Guardia traffic, Delta 213, taxiing runway 13, Echo, Charlie Charlie Gulf, Papa, Guardia. So he's on 13, he's going to be on the crossing runway. So that's up here. We'll, we'll remember that. I wish I could move my seat up, but these dang seatbelts. Hold me back, man. Okay, I'm dragging it in just a little bit, folks. I've got traffic at 2,000 above me. I don't know what he's doing.
when I'm watching them. You're simulating the Boston Red Sox one? Yeah, that's fun. That is fun, huh? Okay. We've already uh, dealt the 215 cross the two. Already traffic riptide three on final runway two two, 15 out. This guy is descending. Hey, is that traffic there? Is he going to JFK or is he going into LaGuardia, this guy? He's at 1300 now. He's going to Yeoman right now. Approach select. Air R8 3 armed. We're going to go ahead and set this to zero. Set to zero. This guy trying to cut me off. What's he doing? Come on, dude. There's no flight plan. <laughs> of course he doesn't. I'll just run into him. Okay. Now, traditional A3. You ready? Everything's off. Completely off. Okay. Liberty traffic up to 213, lining up and waiting. Runway 13, waiting for the landing traffic on 22, Liberty. Uh, you have plenty of time, but I'm waiting for the convoy behind me. Gotcha. Go ahead, traffic 714. We're going to taxi runway 013 by Golf Golf Papa uh, cross uh, 22. Uh, and uh, we'll keep an eye out for the arriving traffic. Uh, we'll stop this. Uh, it looks like they're getting, they're getting close. I'll call you two miles. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, we're going to lose the um, speed, so coming down. Worried about this dumb traffic in front of me. I don't know what he's doing. Got a traffic number 5 a friend Romeo is a Bonanza BE35, five miles from Broad from. Uh, the R and Abby and Kirami, one three, LaGuardia. One three. And LaGuardia traffic. This is Riptide three, seven thirty seven eight hundred coming in on two two, about five miles at Greco right now. Speed's LaGuardia coming traffic in. November five eight three one Romeo to that uh guy on final. Uh, do you want to land first? Or do you want us to do a couple circles here? I'm at Greco now. I'm some lined up for the ILS here. Okay. Well, I'll maintain PFR, do a couple right orbits, and uh, we'll wait for you for your own Romeo. Roger, thanks. Okay, here we go. Flap 30. Uh, I'm throwing on the uh, APU. APU start. Here we go. Okay, this is all manually flying right now, folks. I'm not. The autopilot is not on. I'm trying to throw an A3. We're going to go flaps 40. 146. I got 150 set. Oh, there we go. He's marginal VFR, isn't he? Speed's coming up. Correcting speed. Pushing down. If we have an approach warn and we don't see the runway, we are going around. I got the runway in sight. Speed's correcting. Okay, landing check. Here we go. Speed brakes. Arm. Green light. Landing gear down. Three green. Pushed around here. Man. La we're getting hit in some turbulence here. A thousand feet. Check. Got the runway in sight. The water traffic riptide a three. Three miles out. Runway two two. Oh, go ahead, traffic jump seven fourteen. We are cleared two two at Papa. Okay, this is good AI this is good A three practice now. So I'm just going to kind of fly the hoop in. Good on speed, looking great on ref. 
crosswind coming in from the left side, so just a little bit of a correction. It's not too bad. What the heck was that? I don't know what's Four, going on there. I'm going to do a little duck under. Just going to help us. I think I can now. It's beautiful visibility down here. Broad traffic from November 5 at and Romeo, entering right base from a 1 3 full correction uh, from a 2 2 full stop, LaGuardia. Got to approach one now, but that's okay. 100. Keep the speed in, looking good. 50, 30, 10. LaGuardia traffic, nice landing riptide. Delta 213 in the go, 1 3 for 10 and 6 departure, LaGuardia. Brakes off the brakes. Off. Traffic rip tide Riptide 3, we're clear through uh, 130 for you. As you can see already, <laughs> we're past you. All right, that was a quick stop. 714, we're going to land point 13. All right, welcome to LaGuardia. APU online. Not bad. Good landing, good plant. I like it. But I got LaGuardia traffic number five through on Romeo's turn final. My one, two, two, full stop, LaGuardia. All right, flaps coming up. You see how we're we're close to the gate. Timer's on. By the way, this is brand new scenery, so. Really cool scenery. Much better than... Guy, I like this weather. <laughs> I don't know why they're saying that Active Sky didn't do it, but uh, let me tell you, this is really nice. Okay, this is off. This is off. That's off. That's off. There's our gate right here. So this is the Marine Air Terminal. So the uh, I, I'll take you through our, a review of LaGuardia here, just a minute. Breaks off. Okay, I want to hold right there. Brakes. Okay, we got to put the park brakes on first. They're hot, so we have to cool these brakes down. So we got to get the uh, chocks on the airplane and cool them down. Another thing we got to do, you could see we've only run them for a minute. Well, we got to sit here for about two to three minutes. And that's the good thing about LaGuardia, right? So let's go outside. Traffic Delta 213 through 5800 on 10 6. Last call, switch to Yukon. LaGuardia, see ya. Wings are off. Let's go upstairs. Make sure we do a shutdown right here. Steady. We've got those on. And the reason why we're doing this, folks, is because we got to cool the engines down. You can't just shut them off. It's not even two minutes yet. They really say a three minute shutdown. So we're just going to sit here for another minute. And then we'll cool those engines down and we'll get this thing cooled down. Does anyone know how he makes his liveries? Yes. I pay somebody a lot of money to do this. These are um, these are special liveries that we have. This is Utah 1. Uh, we've got a few. we got a couple of sharks. Um, we, we just got one from Monterey Bay. It's a 700. Hasn't even gone out of the hangar yet. All right, we're good now. I'm going to go ahead and close the engines. I think we've got a good good cool down. If this was a max, you'd be sitting here five minutes just cooling those engines down. But in an, in an NG, you could do it at three. By the way, we've got APU is on. Seatbelts coming All off. Right, traffic, yeah, and we got to wait till we get a good N2. And then I'll call for the gate. Oh, right there. Give me a second. We get rid of that, and then we're going to come down to here, ground services. Let's get the chocks on the aircraft, 
and then I'm going to request ground power after we uh, we pull in timers off. I don't need that on. We're in at 15.13. i got to write the time in. 15.13, and we're looking at 11.13. So 11.13, we have a 40-minute ground hold because of the brakes. So what I'm going to do is set this, and I'm going to click timer up so it, it's going to time the um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that off so that's yep. off on top then we'll come in with say request the gate so let's get the gate in here request the boarding so here comes the gate okay the gate should be coming in uh, we are Swiss port whatever there we go gates coming in the APU is running we're gonna get the gate hooked up once the gate hooks up hooks up We'll go ahead and dump the um, dump the APU, and uh, here we are. Awesome! What a fun little flight that was. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that. It's a lot of fun, especially when you have time to do it right. You think about it. That first leg was rough. That was a quick one. That was a really quick one. All right, gates up. Good. Doors coming open. Let's get everybody off the airplane, um, and I'm going to request ground power. So I'm going to call them up and say, hey, requesting ground power, please. So additional services, I could request ground power unit. And I'm going to request an air conditioning car. Actually, I don't need an air conditioning car. It's 48 degrees out there. It's beautiful. We'll just shut down the APU once I get the, um, once we get the ground car GPU up on there. There's the ground power on. Nope, not yet. i got to wait. So as we wait for the ground power, we're going to come up on the overhead here. We're going to shut our fuel pumps down, except for one of them. We're going to throw off the electric hydraulic pumps, and the packs will come off. We don't need those on. We're going to shut it down. Again, 48 degrees outside, so it's not even that cold either. That's off, that's off, and that's off. Exception for engine cooldown is shutting them down after parking, from my understanding. Uh, you're talking about the max. It's like a five-minute cooldown or something like that. It's crazy. All right, that's off. Let's go on the overhead and make sure. Dang it, where are they? All right, ground power, requesting it. All right, cockpit doors coming open. Ground crew, yes, go ahead. Loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear. Roger. The key captain, ground power is available. Stand by. Start getting you off loaded in the company. Watch. I need the ground power on the aircraft before I do anything. Okay, ground power is on. Let's go check it out. Blue light. Here we go. Hit it. APU is off. Stop burning my fuel. All my lights are off there. That's good to go. That's good. All right, folks, we're going to go and check this out really quick. Um, we're going to write our times. We've got to get our uh, ACARS program ready to go. Oops. We probably got dinged. We burned 13,000 pounds of fuel. So 13,000 pounds of fuel would cost us at LaGuardia. About 26 grand. That's how much that's how much it cost. Uh, Marco says, are you opening another hub or base or stick with Miami? Well, we will open a crew base. It's going to be one in the Northeast. We're opening one in Utah, but we need more pilots. So we got to get more pilots on board to do so. Um, and there's one thing I want to do, folks. I'm going to save the flight deck status the way it is. We'll get, we'll, And then I'll take you around the airport. And let's go ahead and check out LaGuardia together here. So give me one second. Let's get the airplane ready to go for our flight. Just want to make sure everything's off. That's off. That's good. Steady. 
on the left side. Those are off. That's off. Set there. Coming down. That's good. That is now off. So we're on the chocks. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the brake. And the reason why we do that is because the brakes are hot. So let's let the brakes cool down. We go over and throw this to primary. That's to standby. And I'm going to get the fuel in. we got to write stuff down. That's what I'm saying. Just like real an airline, you're writing stuff all the time. 40, 64, 20, over 64, 80. Lots of gas because of the alternate we have. Then I'm just going to drop down here. And we're going to go to menu, FS actions. Actually, we're going to click state save. And what I like to do is... Um, name this the tail number so this is 805 and this is the second save i have and i go in sequential order click execute pa system please deboard us seatbelts off what the heck passengers should be getting off the airplane that's for sure you are clear to deboard. Get off my airplane. All right. Flight attendants, prepare for arrival. Disarm and cross-check doors. Stand by for all call. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now arrived at our destination, and the cabin crew has opened the doors. As the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign, remember to gather all your personal belongings including items from the seat pockets and the overhead Gotta compartment. Good shots we would here, like to take this opportunity to thank you Let's for see. choosing what Coastal what Airways for your journey today. We get your a shot presence at the on our flight is valued, and we hope you had a comfortable and enjoyable experience. Uh, Whether this is your final destination or you right are there? connecting you to another flight, good we wish shot. you a safe and pleasant onward journey. Thank you for your attention, and once again, um, thank you for flying with Coastal Airways. So we're going to take, I'm going to take you around LaGuardia here. Um, let's let's go through the airport. Is there another leg yeah, um, tonight? No, <laughs> but um, I will probably record the next one. The next leg is back. We go back to Orlando and then down to Miami again, and then we're done for the day. And then the next shift takes over the PM. So I'm gonna try. I, I got to do all these proving flights to make sure timings are right. Um, so that's why I'm doing it all. And I'm trying to finish up the CRJ at the same time. But let's take a look at this. This is a very historic building. If you didn't know, this is the Marine Air Terminal. So this terminal has a lot of history um, because in Pan Am, now we're, we're going we're going way back in the Pan Am days. Um, you, you go back way back in the Pan Am days when they had Boeing had the 314 flying boats. It took off out of here. Marine Air Terminal here. Didn't look like this, obviously, but it was... They took off from this waterway. It's pretty... Pretty cool. <laughs> and they do actually have a dock, which is awesome. And there's a nice little fishing vessel there, which I love. I think it's really, really neat. And let me show you the history of this thing. This is a Pan Am... You know, that's who really started this thing back in the... Gosh, what was it? 30s? long time ago. It was really, really cool. Um, this has a lot of history in this building. And you could see Frontier and Spirit operate out of here for a reason. I don't think it's modeled inside. I, I kind of looked. I didn't think it was modeled. Yeah, it's not. So that's not modeled, but you could see they have done such a good job just with the uh, MK Studios. That is really, really detailed. Look at that. That's super cool, man. Um, oh, I, this is famous. Famous Eagle, really famous on this building. Again, the Marine Air. Um, did anybody buy the scenery? That's not done inside. It might be on the other side. You don't. You wouldn't expect them to do it inside over here, anyway. Um, this is really, you know, Delta cargo and things like that so this is like kind of where the workers are you come in over here you know drive up to the terminal we just came from but let's have a look around cool really cool and the end of the the um, man I got to tell you the um, 
frame rates are beautiful. Like, it's not really killing my system and really, really nice. Okay, so that's... We saw that terminal. There's our aircraft. Then you have the fire over there. I think you saw that coming. Let's check out the air side over here. Lots of de-icing equipment. That's pretty neat. It, yeah, okay. The other terminal has some other interiors. Let's go check it out. Can you alter when you reach V1? I'm asking because watching two A380s take off nose to tail at LAX. That wake turbulence is immense, but I saw one rotate early. Um, yeah, you could. Uh, VR you couldn't, but V1 you could. Remember, V1 is your decision speed. That's your go no go. Okay, so I like a lower V1 than normal, and that's because I want time to react. There's the American Airlines hangar. It's pretty cool. I've, again, lots of history here. I wonder if they kept the old. Yeah, it's really cool. Awesome in here, huh? Nice terminal um, hangar for them. Okay, going over to the new terminal. Now, this is a new tower. The Guardia Tower used to be an iconic looking thing. This has almost got hit with <laughs> with the uh, southwest errant approach, which is crazy. But I can see how it's done, right? I can see how you can miss it. If you're flying visual and, you know, you miss it, that's pretty cool. Really cool view in the tower. I would highly recommend this scenery um, if you got the computer to run it. It's sweet. So far, I'm, I'm really excited. I really, really like it. Oh, yeah, look at this. Now, I have not been in here ever. Like, the last time I was in LaGuardia, folks, was... <laughs> Before 9/11, okay. So I could, you could go in LaGuardia without a ticket, go through security and just hang out in the terminal all day. That's how it was in the old school. <laughs> you could do that stuff. It was, it was good. It was cool where you can get away with that. Couldn't do that today. Obviously, you need a boarding pass and all that garbage. But wow, this is all brand spanking new. This looks great. Jeez, look at this. Interiors are awesome. They did, a, they did a really good job. I'm going to go down the stairs here. What's down here? Okay. We got gates. Alright. Nice lounge here. Let's go down to the gate area. Looks like this is the main terminal. And then they branch you out. Gates down here. Wow, they did a good job. They did a good job with this. Super impressed. With the amount of um, uh, performance that I get with all this, it's pretty pretty good. You know? Sweet tea. I don't know. LaGuardia is over here. I'm going to go down the other side, which is a U.S. Airways terminal. Look, I just dated myself. Who, I, who owns U.S. Airways now? American? <laughs> Yeah, let's go. So this is the walkway we were just in. We just went down through this. We're going to go down this side. I see how it's... What in the world? Oh, no. I got to do it again. Stupid. Let's go zipping over there, folks. Terminal C on the east side. Model 2. Sweet. Let's check it out. PC. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it just... I don't know how... Other systems would be on it, but um, I think isn't there a isn't there an option where you could go not high res? You know, you can go a lower res on. Um, did we go through the gates? I don't remember. Yes, we did. Okay. D d d d d d d d d. And to get to the other side, you got to go up and then around. It's probably the same layout as we just went through that way. How do we get over there? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. Just be relaxed. Okay. Zorro. That sounds good. Whatever that is. I want it. I'm starving. <laughs> We're going to go through this. Folks, while I have you with me, 
It looks like the same kind of layout. Obviously, it's very symmetrical. We as humans like symmetrical stuff. It's really nice. My gosh, they did a good job. Where's that walkway? It's nowhere to be found there. All right, let's go to Terminal C. You can see this is all modeled inside here. Oh, they got parkways, actually. Like, let's go through the terminal. I think you guys want to see that, don't you? All right, now what? How do I get over there? Well, through the walkway again, and this way. It's probably not modeled down over here. All right, let's go this way. This is going to be like U.S. Airways or who owns that now? American or Delta. This is Delta, Delta side. Okay. This is the cool side. This is the happening side right here, folks. The Delta side. They, oh, man, I don't know how much they spent on on this on this uh, on this do I want to deboard crew no on this um, airport it was it had to be a, they knocked they had to knock a ton down just to do this yeah this is really cool oops gates if I go down Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Sunday Super, Sunday Super. Oh, I love that. Look at that Delta sign. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> I like it. Good, good. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, really nice. Nice work. Let's go airside here. Jeez, there's more, guys. Yeah, I know. I'm starving. I am absolutely starving. I didn't have any dinner, so I'm hungry. Look at this in here. Good night. There's two. Is this a lounge? Oh, no way. What's down here? Okay. Oh, this is TSA. <laughs> That's so cool. Dude, they did a good job. Right? You guys got to admit, this is amazing. This is amazing. I can, All right. So, guys, FSX days. Remember those days when I went? Man, we, we hit the pinnacle. We, we hit it. You know, we're there's not you're not getting any better than that. And now look at this. I'm in a terminal. This this is crazy. Like Salt Lake's the same way. I could go in the terminal and, and just like all the shops are there. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Dude, I love these Delta signs. I think they're the bee's knees. <laughs> Good job. Way to go. MK Studios making it happen. Good work. All right, is there another? Oh, there's the water. Okay. Cool. Get through all these. All right, let's go. Good stuff. I am super impressed with the airport. It is amazing. You just kind of walk through all that. Um super cool now nah, I just got off of that sim so if you're wondering what the heck are these airplanes doing here it's just I can't do this on that sim folks but just imagine like I uh, yeah 20 2040 can you imagine that yeah you're not kidding here goes more money out of my bank account gosh right we saw this crazy looking thing didn't we I think this is America is this America is still Delta Delta terminal here. Yeah. Wow, I am just super impressed. A really, really good job. You know, with a developer like that, I'd love to support them. Um, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. That's really neat. I'm stuck. My camera's stuck. All right, let's go. Well, there it is, folks. Um, Good stuff. We got the airplane. It's all buttoned up. It's in uh, getting ready for its return leg over to. We got to go back down to uh, Orlando. See? And, oh, I said, let's see how much money we made. I got an A minus, by the way, on that flight. So that's cool. We'll go ahead and shut that off really quick. And then I'm going to show you really quick how much money we made on this. Because this, 
is going to be the telltale sign of do we have a good route or not so let me check that right now i'm gonna shut stuff off and then i'm gonna go in here and let's check this let's pull our chrome up and we'll find out for sure I have to sign in on the management side so of the house so let me see we go to pyreps and i'll show you what it looks like we've got um mco laguardia and i'm just going to go all the way down okay just to let you know our margin on that so you guys can see what i'm talking about right there can you see that okay so we're looking here all right, we've got 39,000 for fares. For cargo, we did 7,500, which was nice. Our fuel cost was 91 cents out of Orlando, so that was really nice for us. Uh, it cost us 16 grand on the fuel. <laughs> Wait till we get out of the quarter. You want to talk about pricing? Oh my gosh. Total costs or total expenses were 25,000. We made 21 grand on that. That's what a little bit of research does for us, right? Uh, I got paid $627 for that flight. That's pretty good. We'll take it. I'm uh, probably the highest paid pilot in our group. <laughs> so we see, look at all the look at all the expenses. You got facility charges, $440 per person. We have it landing fee expenses at $2,900, $3,000 just to touch down. And then our block time cost for $3,800 plus all the ancillaries and crap. And this fuel cost, by the way, was out of MCO. Wait till we get out of out of LaGuardia. It's going to be, like, insane. So, yes, we made money. That means we're going to keep this route. Good stuff. We'll take it. Oh, they have City Field, too. Yes, they do. And I, uh, I've been flying a whole bunch of approaches over it and through it and around it. What do you mean they have City Field, too? Like, part of the scenery? Or is it something you have to buy uh, Jfoot said completely worth the money even though I already had I did I already had feel there but but I'm with you man it was tough pill to swallow I was like man do I really want to spend 26 bucks on a but I'm like it's LaGuardia right we fly here all the time it's a fun airport to fly into let's just bite the bullet and see if it's good <clears throat> and it's really good and I got to tell you um, so is it's is it part of their scenery or do I have to buy it separately? Because if I have to buy it separately, I will. Oh, it's model with Lagordia. Okay, I got it then. I I saw it. It's really it's really good. Um I did a well, you guys will see it <laughs> on um on the blog. Did I release it yet? No, the blog's coming out here next month and it's LaGuardia three. But I showed you. Wait, no, I didn't have I didn't have the scenery yet. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, Patrick, your Utah one is Etops. Let's go. It is Etops. It's an Etops certified aircraft. Matter of fact, all our 800s are. <laughs> they were um, retrofitted to Etops aircraft. So um, that's just because one 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 airplane get the rest done. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you for all your time. I appreciate you. I think next week we're back on the, the hockey beat. It looks like we're going to be going to from Dulles to uh, Westchester County. I'm going to still do this flight because I've got to complete this day on this because our whole, our whole schedule is jacked up now. So um, at least on 3A. So I've got to get this, um, this flight done. How many destinations are you up to? Oh my gosh. Um, a lot. I don't know, man. I'd have to do the calculations. I don't I don't really know. It's always changing. It's ever changing. Right? Just like a real airline. It's always fluid. It's moving. It's different. It's like, okay, can we maximize profits? Do we change times? You know. Um, I think we're up to, what, 60-something destinations, maybe? Let's see, we got 73 flights numbers. Now we're up to 85 plus, you know, four or five of those are the same flight number. So you could, you figure you probably have 90, close to 90 or 100, 120 flights. So yeah, we have 19 aircraft in our fleet. 
so that's pretty good. We need pilots. Fly. <laughs> All right. Alex says you will definitely continue to chat. If you need anything, please let me know. You bet. Even an FCOM. All right. Let's do it. Hit me up. Let me know. Uh, I don't know where you work, but let me know. Uh, looking forward to the potential hiring. Yeah, let's do it. Good stuff. All right, folks. I will see you next week. We're probably going to do a hockey charter. I don't know when. Sean is looking like Wednesday, maybe. Uh, Thursday we play Friday, and then we'll probably fly it on back. So it'll probably be an MD-80 flight, next flight. And then let me know in the comments below what you want to see. I'm here for you. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure, certainly did. It's always fun to do new legs and new stuff like that on a brand new, you know, on an aircraft that's cool as this. Until next time, keep the blue side up and the brown side down. Folks, have a great weekend. Be kind to each other. We will see you on the flip. Peace.